And good morning, everyone, here from Sarasota, Florida. This is the fifth day of the 13th Club Crew World Dragon Boat Championship. Just down below us at the tower, we have fire truck Phil. He's waving out. And Alan, I think they're about to do a dance together. Phil and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alan, I am not sure why we're watching this. Uh, these two guys bump and grind with each other. But uh, welcome, Alan. Welcome, Phil, to Sarasota, Florida. The two of them come from Vancouver, Canada, and they're here racing with fire truck. I think their team is a little bit embarrassed by what they just did there, but uh, I'm glad to see all of them. And I know Celine is down there. Dominic lies somewhere down there. Uh, Grace, have a great race today. And we're now going to the 500 meter race. Olivia should be down there. They're their stairs person. She's our extraordinary stairs person from Vancouver. And we wish her the best of luck. I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand, and there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benerson Park is. This is a great facility and uh, coming from Boston, we have been to many different races before in other counties or countries, but we think this is absolutely one of a kind. And if we got another chance, we can come back for the world championship. That will be our honor and such a great weather, uh, such a great spirit and a lot of other teams. Uh, so absolutely looking forward to that. We're excited to come back to the world championships at Nathan Benderson. I mean, this is a world-class facility and we're, we're gonna hopefully Take, take a championship when we come back. One of the things that um, we have found to be really enjoyable about being here in Sarasota is the hospitality of the community. It just makes for a perfect setting for teams that are traveling from other locations, makes their stay more enjoyable in the community, and I can't wait for our world teams to experience that next year. It starts with tough and tough. <laughs> Nathan Benison Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. The technology, the racing tower, and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive facilities that I've raced at all over the world. This race venue is a great race venue because it's so purpose built for paddle sports. It's consistent water depth, which makes for fast times. Everybody has an equal footing in every race. This venue is one of the greatest venues for really highly competitive races. I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand. And there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benerson Park. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the fifth day. This is the standard 
and it looks like small bolts as well for 500 meter racing. We today have mixed premier university 18U senior B. In the open and women category, we have senior A, senior C, 24U, BCP, ACP, PD1, and PD2. For the morning, we are now coming on to 7.50 a.m. in Sarasota, Florida. We will be calling the first two heats, race 144 and 145, to the marshalling area. With the U18 small boat and the Senior B standard boat for race 144 and 145 to the marshalling area. Please, a big reminder to all paddlers, please stay safe, get sunscreen on, stay out of the sun, and drink lots and lots of water. If you're feeling a little tired or feeling not well, let our staff know and we will get first aid to assist you. Again, let's have a great race and we look forward to seeing all of you online. And it looks like we have a bunch of friends online already logging in. Uh, we have about 60 people watching, and it looks like Mitch Sun is back online. Good morning, Mitch Sun. Firebase Alpha, Ilya, Pastoral. Dan, go Philly. Hey, Yumi, how are you? Yumi is back online again, and uh, I'm a little confused with you, Yumi. Are you actually here in Sarasota, or are you watching from afar? Nathan Benderson Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. Personally, I've raced here before with my our regional championships and now with our national championship. The technology, the racing tower and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive uh, facilities that I've raced at all over the world. The course is uh, uh, technically fair, uh, which you don't always get in all venues, uh, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Nathan Benderson Park is one of the best locations I've ever raced in the world. It's a great competitive location. The lanes are all the same depth, makes for great racing. Spectators at Nathan Benderson have a great view from the base of the tower. They see the finish very clearly. They always do a great job bringing in food trucks, vendors, grandstands. They really do a good job hosting events here at Nathan Benderson. What are people going to see when they come out? They're going to see a really exciting races. The 200 meter is probably the highest speed race because it's the shortest race. 500 meter is it's not an endurance test, but it's more technique. 500s, they're really good races because the finishes are really strong. You're going to see some people working really hard and really good athletes giving everything they got. And Sunday when we run the 2000, which is an oval course, tight turns, 
lots of teams competing head to head with each other in the middle of those tight turns. In dragon boating, we call that 2000 NASCAR dragon boating because of the turns. And it's a really exciting race to watch. What are people going to see when they come out? They're going to see a really exciting races. The 200 meter is probably the highest speed race because it's the shortest race. 500 meter is not an endurance test, but it's more technique. 500s, they're really good races because the finishes are really strong. You're going to see some people working really hard and really good athletes giving everything they got. And Sunday when we run the 2000, which is an oval course, tight turns, Lots of teams competing head to head with each other in the middle of those tight turns. In dragon boating, we call that 2000 NASCAR dragon boating because of the turns. And it's a really exciting race to watch. This is a absolutely world class venue. I've, I've competed and coached at just about every uh, world class uh, venue all over the world, including in China and Europe. And I have to say, being in our backyard here in stateside, it, this is the premier uh, location to host a world-class event. We're uh, Pennsylvania Dragon Boat Club, and we're from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The venue here at Nathan Benderson Park is incredible. It's clean, it's well organized, the race course is fantastic. Yeah, everything is really, really well done, and we're having a great time. Uh, Sarasota is great. It's beautiful, the weather is amazing, uh, the people are great. We're, we're exploring out the, the different restaurants and food here, but uh, we're, en we're enjoying our, our stay here at Sarasota. Uh, good morning, everyone. Coming from the Race Tower here in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, we've got Mark Kane and Matthew Al, our missing announcer, Bob Mina, is online watching us from the hotel. But uh, we wish him the best of luck, and we hope to see him tomorrow. I understand he probably is going to race as well tomorrow. Over the last couple of days, we did a tabulation of the medal count. But over the last day or so, we lost count, and uh, there were just too many medals handed out. We'll try to get you a medal count over the next day or so, and we'll report it live to everyone. Uh, Mark, I heard you had a nice dinner yesterday. Uh, yes, yesterday evening was the Hall of IDBF Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, it was a very nice event. It was held right here on the second floor of the tower. Very, very nice event. And it was to formally bring in the members of the Hall of Fame that were named last year on the 30th anniversary of the founding of IDBF. Uh, the inductees last night, not all of whom were here, uh, Li, Zhi, Li Zhidong from China, he sent a video thank you. Uh, Mike Haslam from Great Britain was present, Mike Thomas from Great Britain, 
Robert Wilson from Hong Kong was not present. Julie Doyle from Ireland, Bob and Peggy Morrow from the US. Julie was present, Bob and Peggy Morrow were present. Uh, Peter Gerosi from Hungary was present. Don McKenzie was represented at the event. Jonathan Taylor from Australia, his award was posthumous. He, there were remarks made on his behalf. Uh, Comedy Jane from Cam Canada sent in a video thanking the uh, inductees and Kevin McFadden from the USA was present. It was a very, very nice event. Everybody enjoyed it. The inductees were truly honored to be in the inaugural class for the IDBF Hall of Fame. So all in all, a number of really deserving people were honored and inducted. And I have to say in about three hours last night, I learned more about the history of dragon boating and the IDBF than I had ever dreamt possible in that short a period of time. Those uh, recipients you all named there were all, all um, top level um, athletes, coaches, and um, our, uh, what do you call it? founding members? Found it, founders, yes. Founders of the dragon boat in North America and across the world. So thank you very much. Uh, all congratulations to the list of Hall of Famers this year. And we look forward to adding more to that list. It will be, I believe it's going to be annual. The IDBF will put out a call for nominees. The various national federations will s vet and submit names. And then there is a vetting process at the IDBF to, to determine who will be inducted. Thank you. Uh, we're also calling now race number 146 and 147 to the marshalling area. 146 and 147. We have a lot of fans online now, picking up to about 130. Uh, we've got fans from uh, UAE. Diggers, let's fire it up. Something about Kim saying, Yumi deserves her treat. Uh, I'm not sure what treat you're referring to, Kim. Shane, let's go Team Tampa. Patricia Salazar, LACDBC represent. Simone. Looking forward to a fantastic racing today. Let's go. I'm trying to figure out what that emoticon is. It looks like a dragon head. Uh, I'm not sure who Simone is referencing here on this team that she's cheering for, but we'll find out. Scott Murray. Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Day five. Let's go, everybody. Some incredible performance happening at this championship. Yeah, Scott, I totally agree with you. There's just been amazing uh, racing over the last uh, four days. Um, now we're really gearing up for the traditional 500-meter race. Not quick sprints, but not long endurance like the 2000. We're going down to 500 only. So a bit of a sprint right off the line, and then a 500-meter down the race course. Manon, good morning, Sarasota. Hope your day will be exciting as our... Remy, let's go Philly. Lucy's back online. Go PDBC. Mark, let's go Digger. So we have some fans waking up across the world now, tuning in to day number five. We've got race 144 and 145 coming your way momentarily. This is the U18 small boat, followed by the Senior B standard boat. Again, online, if you guys want to have a shout out to any of your friends, family. Please put them online. We'll read them as we go forward. Handsome Joe, the gorgeous dragon, say hello to me. Thank you very much, Handsome Joe. I uh, look forward to seeing you in Victoria. Their race for the gorgeous dragons is August the 13th in the inner harbor of Victoria. Burn water, dedicated to making some of the best carbon paddles and performance gear.
that paddlers love. Go check out Burnwater. They have a raffle each day. They'll send us the winner. We'll announce it, announce it out loud to the racers. Check out the Burnwater booth to see the latest premium carbon paddles designed. Made in the USA, engineered for pure performance. The paddlers giveaway is on Sunday, 2 p.m. We're raffling a bunch of swag every day, free to enter, and don't need to be present to win. So congratulations to those who have won, and also congratulations to those upcoming winners. Dragon Saddles are here in the vendor area. Seat cushions based on the science of paddling technique. Dragon Sales, Dragon Saddle Sales benefits the rebuilding of the Dragon Boat Sport in Ukraine with the profits towards the purchase of boats for the club to practice and recover from the war. Dragon Saddles help Ukraine clubs. Again, we welcome the Ukraine team here to Sarasota, Florida. And if you can support, please drop by the vendor's booth and purchase your Dragon Saddle, benefiting the rebuilding of Dragon Boating in Ukraine. Good morning, everyone. Our first race, the boats are on the water, making their way through the attenuator. And it's interesting uh, setup today. The 500 meter start is right adjacent to the break in the attenuator where the boats come in and out of from marshalling. We actually have an official with a stop and go sign on the attenuator so that boats entering the course do not interfere with the 500 meter start. Our first race this morning is a U18 small boat mixed race. In lane one, we will have 22 Dragons A. In lane two, we will have Pickering Dragon Boat Club. In lane three, we will have LA County DBC Team DPW. And in lane four, we will have 22 Dragons B. It's always nice for a team to have enough athletes to have two boats to practice against each other. It just makes for more competitive practices and you can never put two dragon boats side by side without a race breaking out. It makes practice very, very competitive. Keeps everybody sharp building up to a race such as this. The boats are making the turn as they come through the attenuator headed towards the boots. Four boat race, we've got four boats on the water. Twenty two Dragons is from Montreal. They were founded in 2003. Uh, it's inclusive and has teams from junior to senior C, as well as a BCP team and a Paradragon team. They've been very successful in different uh, club crew nationals over time. And in 2018, they won a number of gold medals in Zeged. LA County is headed by Nathan Salazar as their head coach. That's probably one of the strongest youth programs in the country right now. And Nathan is the Team USA under 18 coach. So he's uh, building his own foundation with his team in LA. We really appreciate Nathan's efforts. Boats are inching towards the boots now. Not quite to the 50 meter buoy. Water is virtually flat calm this morning, very little breeze. What little bit of breeze there is is out of the east. 
What's the weather look like today? Uh, the weather forecast I saw was about a 40% chance of rain. I did not check the timing, but if typical summertime Florida, it'll probably be after 3 o'clock. We sure got lucky yesterday, hey? We did. About 4.30, we had one heck of a thunderstorm hit this area. That would have really delayed us yesterday if we were still around. It would have. Fortunately, we got the racing in on time, and we were able to have the medals awarded, and everybody safely off the site by the time that storm got here. Well, hopefully we can hold them off uh, today, and we'll get all the racing done. Uh, to the fire truck here warming up uh, in front of the award ceremony to Carolyn and Anthony for being the head coach of Team Fire Truck from Vancouver. We thank you for being here. And the boats continue to inch into the boots. These are small boats. The 500 meter start obviously is about 300 meters further away from us in the tower than it was the 200 yesterday. So we're having to rely on the drone footage to call the bus, what we're seeing. So it's a little bit trickier to call things today just due to distances. So we're going to be relying on technology to give us the best possible view. We have an amazing uh, production team here to our left. Uh, it's a father and daughter running the cameras with her wonderful team. They're giving you the best yeah. footage of the races. Race 144 is underway. It, from this, the drone shot, it looks like Pickering has the early lead with LA County Dragon Boat Club right alongside of him, maybe slightly ahead based on the drone view. But right now, it's Pickering in L.A. County in the lead, followed by 22 Dragons A and 22 Dragons B in the outside lane. L.A. County has picked up a lead over Pickering here. Actually, they've got several seats on them early. They've got to hold on for a lot longer than they did yesterday. So this is a race where you have to get off to a fast start, settle, Get into your rhythm, get your stroke going, bring your stroke rate down, and just settle in and paddle as hard as you can until you put your finish sprint on. This is a, it's not as much energy management as the 2K, but this, there's also, also an energy management component in the middle of this race. You really pop it on the start, you go anaerobic for maybe 20, 30 seconds, settle down, get your heart rate down, settle in, manage your energy, and paddle for a long, it feels like a long time. L.A. County definitely has a lead now. They've almost got open water at about the 200 meter mark. And it is L.A. County with a good lead over Pickering, followed by... 22 Dragons A and 22 Dragons B. This looks like it's going to be the cumulative total for three rounds. This is round one, LA County with open water over Pickering. They're into their finish with about 30 meters to go. Pickering's bringing it up for their finish sprint. LA County sprinting at the finish. All four boats are sprinting towards the finish and it's going to be LA County followed by Pickering, followed by 22 Dragons A and 22 Dragons B. Yesterday, we had teams rushing to the finish line in groups of three, four, or even five boats at one time. It was hard for us to call this, but so far today at U18, there's a lot of spread between these boats. And we have white flags, so it is a clean race. So 147 and 148, that is race 147 and 148 to the marshalling area now. Coming your way from the uh, start of the race, uh, before I do that, I'll let you guys uh, report the results. Okay, in first place, unofficial, L.A. County in a time of 218.7, Pickering in 224.3, 22 Dragons A in 228.7, and 22 Dragons B in 236. Those are rounded numbers, but 
Those are the unofficial results for race 144. We have a special guest coming up uh, this afternoon. Uh, Mary Beth from the Philippines will be coming up and speaking Tagala, uh, calling a race, and we'll have an interview with her. So those friends who are online watching uh, from afar, waiting for Mary Beth to come online, she's going to come on at 1.30 Sarasota time. For Bob Mina, good morning. Feeling a bit better today, watching from the hotel, and we hope to be back on site tomorrow. Bob, get well. We miss you up here for sure. I know your team misses you a lot as well. So, Thank you. this is race number 145, Senior B Mixed. In the Senior B Mixed, in lane number one, it is from Australia, Gold Coast Dragons. That is a great shot of the race course. You're looking from the south to the north, and you can see the two official boats are just heading back from the finish of race 144. They're coming back to the start line. On the bottom of your screen, you see Gold Coast here in the lane number one. Lane number two, you will see from the USA, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association. Lane number three from Ontario, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. And lane number four from Germany, Nekla Dragon. And then lane number five, Ottawa. So the blue boat that you see there is Gold Coast from Australia in lane number two, coming up, Philadelphia, three, Pickering, four, Germany, Necro Dragon, and on the outside lane to your left of your screen, that's the Ottawa Dragon Boat Club. This is race number 145, Senior, Bix, Senior B Mixed Standard Boat. Chris, Gold, Gold, Gold Coast, and also Nick. Thank you for your wonderful comments. We have a question. How does the technology work to achieve precise timing? There on the third floor of the tower, there is a system called Finish Links. It is a video computer link system, and it is lined up extremely accurately on the finish line. And uh, through the video and the computer technology, they are able to get extremely accurate times. And it links directly to the output so that you can get your results online very, very quickly. In actual fact, take that one step further, it is actually connected to the starter box. So when the starter pushes the gun, they will pick up the start on their system, and the system actually has a backup system with human uh, timekeepers. So we actually have two systems in place, the links and also human timers who've got stopwatches and each person it got has one lane. So if this link system for some reason fails, we have human intervention with stopwatches and those are run by the IDBF officials. As we look at race number 145, Senior B Mix, they're on the line. Again, we can't hear the calls from this position, but we can see live like you are at home. I will try to get you calls of the starts. Looks like boat four, the drummer had her had their hand up. And there's the call for the start of the race from the top angle. 145 and off the line, it is going to be Philadelphia off the line first. In second, Pickering. In third, Necker Dragon. Followed by Ottawa and Gold Coast. Coming down the first 100 meters, it is still going to be a good fight between Necker Dragon, Pickering, and Philadelphia. Philadelphia in boat number two on the right of your screen. In the middle will be Pickering. And on the left, in lane number four is Germany Necker Dragon. This is going to be a very tight race with three, four, and uh, sorry, two, three, and four fighting it out. Gold Coast and Ottawa is still holding with the pack. And it looks like Philadelphia has made their move off the 150 mark. It is going to be Philadelphia in first. Second in Pickering, and the third is going to be Germany Necker Dragons. This is an amazing race between two, three, and four. Philadelphia is still holding a very good control of their rate. They're extending for length, and they're catching on every single blade. 
Look at the pressure on boat number two. They're putting the pressure on Pickering and Necker Dragons to hold with them. Necker Dragons starting to fall off a little bit. It is still Philadelphia in the lead, but Pickering is giving them a ride for their money. It is two and three fighting out for first. For third, it's going to be either Gold Coast or Necker Dragon. And on the outside, Ottawa is still with the pack. With over a half a boat length, it is still Philadelphia in the lead. Coming to the finish, it is the last 100 meters of the race in the green boat. It is Philadelphia in the lead. In second, it is Pickering in lane number three. In third, it is Necker Dragon from Germany. And look at this, boat number five, Ottawa has made their move on the finish. It's Ottawa fighting with Gold Coast Australia coming to the 50 meter mark. It is going to be Philadelphia with a very controlled rate to the finish line. Boat number two. In second, it is going to be Pickering. And in third, it will be Necker Dragon lane number four unofficially. What did you think of that race, Mark? That was closer at the finish than I thought when we were at the 200 meter mark. Pickering really put a surge on over the, that last 200 meters and closed it up and made a very competitive race. Now this will be a normal progression for these boats. This is not accumulated time. This will be a full-blown, there's enough senior B mixed standard boats to go to the, through the full progression. And the results are for race 145, uh, Philadelphia Dragon Boat in 205.2, Pickering in 205.9, Neckar Dragons in 208 even, Gold Coast in 2085, and Ottawa in 208 high five. Uh, race number 149 and 150 to Marshling, 149 and 150 to Marshling. Also from race 148, we need Pesh. Pesh, please go to Marshling ASAP. Race 148, Pesh to Marshling ASAP. 149 and 150 to the marshalling now. Hey, Bob, what did you think of that race, my friend? Your fillies, it looks like they're Philly pound. Our next race is race 146, Senior B Mixed. This is the second heat in the Senior B Mixed Standard Boats. Lane 2, CSDC Liquid Assets. Lane 3, H2O Montreal. Lane 4, Raysbury Dragons. And in lane 5, 22 Dragons. How does your uh, lips stay uh, moist during these five days? <laughs> uh, lots of chapstick. I'm, I'm getting tongue-tied myself, but we only have two more days. We're having a fun time up here, really bringing the uh, exciting races from uh, Sarasota, Florida to the world online. These, these teams are the best club teams in the world, so that's why the competition is so fierce and so close as we move through all days and all distances. Different teams specialize in different distances. Uh, some teams are good across the board. Uh, I know Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association, if you talk to their head coach, he will say that they are best in the 2K and stro very strong in the 500, but those are their two best distances because that's how they train. They're also, they were highly competitive in the 200s yesterday, but different teams will, will on occasion specialize in certain distances. Looks like the boats are in the boots for race 146.
And race 146 is underway. Looks like H2O Montreal is out to a, a lead, still in their start sequence with a high stroke rate. They will bring that rate down and settle into the body of the race. The boats have settled in. They're about 70 meters in, and now they're into the stroke rate for the body of the race. I know my team, which is a senior C team, we try and keep our stroke rate in the body 62 to 64 strokes per minute. Now we have the overhead view and we can see that it's CSDC liquid assets in lane one with a lead. H2O Montreal is about two seats back and in the outside lane, it's going to be 22 dragons moving up. At about the 200 meter mark, it is still CSDC liquid assets. H2O Montreal Canada is still hanging in there. CSDC has a couple of seats on them now. And 22 Dragons in the outside lane is still a couple seats back from H2O Montreal. As we come to a about the 100 meter mark, it's still CSDC with a lead, followed by H2O Montreal, but in the outside lane, 22 Dragons has actually closed the gap and is moving up. Still maintaining that same steady stroke rate. They've got multiple races to go through with the progression. So in lane two, it's gonna be CSDC. By a boat. Boat length there. And lane three with H2O Montreal, followed by 22 Dragons, followed by Raysbury. From Great Britain. Great race. We see two white flags for the race official boats. That was a nice clean race for everyone. That was heat number two of the mixed senior B. And here are the results in lane number one. Uh, first place, unofficially, CSDC Liquid Assets with a time of 2.04.9. In second, from Canada, H2O Montreal, Canada, with a time of 208.10. And in third, 22 Dragons, with a time of 2.092 minutes, or two, two minutes, nine seconds, 0.38. And from Great Britain, two minutes, 14 seconds, 0.18. Yesterday, we were doing sub one minutes. Now we're doing uh, just about the two minute range for 500 meter races. Still very fast but very good racing. This is a call for pads from the Philippines, race 149, race 149. Pads, would you please go to marshalling now? Bob is online. He states that he misses being there. That was my crew. I should have been in seat five, but they did great. No surprise. Deep bench, strong subs. Can't wait to get back in the boat. 
Thanks, Bob. I think your team is missing you, and we're missing you up here in the announcing booth. Kim, how many countries are being represented? Uh, looks like we've got uh, 11 countries being representative here with a total of 65 teams. Okay, the next race is race num one, number 147, Small Boat Senior B Mixed. And in this race, we have Great, Ra Great Lake Paddlers, Gorging Dragons, Heat, and NBP Paddling. Looks like we have two Canadian teams with Great Lake Paddlers and Gorging Dragons, and two, two US teams with Heat and NBP Paddling. Lanes four and five, for all intents and purposes, are local teams. NBP is truly local, this is their home course. And Heat is primarily from the villages and some surrounding areas up there, and they are about, that is about two hours north of here. Uh, heat, I'll be shamelessly plug them, is my own team. I paddle on the senior C boats. So heat in the senior B mixed small boat. Race number 151, two marshalling please. Race 151, two marshalling now. What is the villages I keep hearing about? I heard a little story about the square miles down here of this area. The villages is a retirement community. It's an over 55 retirement community. Uh, there's a, about 135,000 people who live there. And it's one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the country. Uh, it's across three counties, Marion, Lake, and Sumter County. P most of it is in Sumter County. And again, it's about two hours north of here. And uh, there is an organization within the villages, the Grandmaster Dragon Boat Club, that has eight teams in it. And they are all village residents to be participate with the Grandmaster Dragon Boat Club. Heat, because we have non-village residents, we are an independent team. But just a lot of us live in the villages, but not all of us. I heard there's pickleball courts in the villages. There are hundreds of pickleball courts, and there's over 700 holes of golf in the villages. That's amazing. Now, is this all free to local residents, or do you have to pay a fee? Uh, there are two types of golf courses. There are the uh, executive golf courses, which are essentially par threes, and those are free to residents. You pay for it through a month, your monthly fees. Enter, uh, it's called an amenity fee, which includes all the recreation facilities in the villages, and then there are the championship courses, which are your traditional golf courses, and those you do pay for separately. Excellent. And do you play golf? Uh, yes, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, we're called a uh, scratch golfer, we'll call it. Yeah, I, I should be scratched from golfing on certain occasions. How about pickleball? I am not a pickleball player. I've not, never gotten into that. The dragon boating and everything we do for dragon boating keeps me really physically active, so then I've never gotten into pickleball. For those online, um, I, I play pickleball. I actually coach pickleball in Canada. Oh, really? So I teach it to 55 plus in uh, Richmond, which is just uh, south of Vancouver, and it's a growing sport in Canada. Did you know the sport actually originated in uh, Washington State, just below us? Um, in 19, I believe it was 1964 or 67, if I recall. Um, yeah, the sport has just really grown through the U.S. and in Canada. So those who have never played pickleball, give it a try. It's a great sport. It, it's different. I, the first time I, I have tried to play pickleball, the first time I stepped on the court mentally, I was thinking tennis, and the ball behaves nothing like a tennis ball. <laughs> But let's go to a real sport now. This is Dragon Boating here in Sarasota, Florida. This is race number 147 coming from Sarasota, Florida. Senior B Mixed. On your screen, you'll see lane number one to the right of your screen from Canada, Great Lake Paddlers. And lane number two from Vancouver Island, Gorging Dragons. The little missing lane was supposed to be Germany Necker Dragon. They have scratched. In lane number four from the Villages, uh, as Mark had just mentioned, Local team, that is the Heat. In lane number five to your left of your screen, that is Nathan Benderson Park paddling. This is the local team from the local park itself. Let's see what happens with this race.
the static coming from uh, the starter radio is very staticky, so I'm not going to let you hear it, but I've got the calls in my ear. I can hear the starter giving the last commands, and there they go. The race number 147 is on the way, and look at that start from the Gorging Dragons, Victoria. Gorging Dragons coming out of the chute the fastest, but look at Heat. Heat is staying with them. This is going to be a fight between Gorging Dragons and lane number two, and in lane number four, the Heat. Gorging Dragons taking command off the 100 meter mark. It is still going to be Victoria. Gorging Dragons followed by the Heat, and on the outside from Ontario, Great Lakes. Still in that mix is NB Paddling. NB Paddling showing really well over the 200 meter race, but today we have switched to the 500 meter race. You can have a good start, but you need to command the middle of that race and the finish. Now, coming off the 200 meter mark, it is still Gorging Dragons, followed by the Heat and Ottawa, but NBP has now taken over the Heat. It is now Gorging Dragons in lane number two, followed by the NB pedaling in lane number five. It is two, five, three, and one. But Ottawa's not giving up a fight on this one. Sorry, I said Great Lake Paddlers in Ontario. Coming to the last 250 meters, it is still Gorging Dragons in first. In second is NB Paddling. In third, it looks from this angle, the Heat, followed by the Great Lake Paddlers. And look at this, Mark. This is going to be another good race. Gorging Dragons got a good control of the rate, really extending the rotation on every single catch. And from this shot, you can see the rate is really controlled with the Gorging Dragons from Vancouver Island, followed by boat number five. That is the NB paddling from the Nathan Benderson Park. And in third, it will be boat number one, Great Lake Paddlers, and in fourth, unofficially at this point, it's the Heat. The Heat has about 100 meters to make up some room here. Let's see what happens on the finish line. Coming to the finish line, it is still Gorging Dragons from Vancouver Island in boat number two. In second, it's NBP. NBP is now challenging for first. NBP and Gorging coming to the finish line. And look at this. NBP catches Gorging on the line. It's NBP in first. Gorging second. Heat third. And finally, we have the Great Lake Paddlers. What an amazing race. That it looked like NBP was out of that race. That, that was shows how you, when you control the body of the race, you can make up distance because NBP was not the fastest boat off the start, and they made that up in the body of the race, and then their finished sprint, they took it. Oh, that was great race. We're just going to wait for the results for 147. Gorging Dragons had that race up to the last 200 meters. NBP coming out of nowhere, tracking down the heat, passing the heat, and then catching the Gorging Dragons for the finish. With a time in first, NB paddling, time of 221.67. Gorging Dragons second unofficially at 222.1. And in third, USA Heat, time of 224.79. And Great Lakes with a time of 225.24. Great race by all three teams. Highly competitive. As we said a moment ago, we did not see NB paddling at the start. And they, as I said, in the body of the race, they controlled their boat in the body of the race to pick up that distance on the fleet and took the race with a strong finishing surge. The next race is race 148, it's University Mixed Standard Boat. Lane one, Cal Dragon Boat. Lane two, PTE Pesh. And in lane three, CSDC Liquid Assets. We have US, Hungary, and Canada in this race. Boats are making their way to the start. Cal Dragon Boats was founded in 1998, uh, competitive student-run dragon boat team at UC Berkeley, and they regularly participate in regional, national, and international races. They're a d diverse group of hard-working students studying various concentrations ranging from medicine and engineering to rhetoric and architecture. The 
boats are still inching their way into the boots and finishing up on Cal Dragon Boat. Uh, they strive to make Dragon Boat more accessible to the students of UC Berkeley and re recruit student athletes twice a year. This is their first time at the CCWC. Welcome, Cal. They just finished a race in Vancouver um, just a couple of weeks ago and did really well up in Canada. Uh, we do see them through the West Coast in Arizona, San Francisco, and in Long Beach. So up and coming team, Cal Dragon Boat. Uh, we look forward to great things from them. And race 148 is underway. At the start, it looks like PTE Pesh got off to the quickest start. Cal Dragon is right with them, as is CSDC Liquid Assets. Pesh has a slight lead over C CSDC, but Cal is right there with Pesh. At about the 100 meter mark, it's still PTE Pesh, but now it's basically all three boats at this point were almost neck and neck. You see how the teams are staying to the center of the line? That is what the officials are looking for when they are calling infractions. If teams don't stay to the center of their lane between the two yellow buoys that you see marked down the race course, the officials will raise a red flag. If one boat gets too far to the side, there is they could potentially pick up a benefit from riding the wake of the boat alongside of them, and that's why they're required to stay in the center of the lane so they don't get a wash riding advantage. Correct. In other races that you see around the world, they, they actually have officials behind their boat calling them off left or right. But you can see boat number two just pulled to the left of their lane. That would be considered a serious infraction in the sense that they are not trying to stay in the center. They're maybe trying to gain an advantage. And w at about the 150 meter mark, it is still PTE Pesh. And followed by Cal Dragon, looks like CSDC Liquid Assets is making a move. Liquid Assets is definitely making a move with about 70 meters to go. It looks like Liquid Assets is in the lead with about 50 meters to go. It's close, followed by PTE Pesh and Cal Dragons coming to the finish line. PTE Pesh is putting on a surge. This is very, very close, and I'm going to let the officials call this one. That was tight. PTE Passion Liquid Assets, were, that was very tight. We're going to have to let the photo fin decide that one. I'm going to just venture to guess on that one, that number three, CSDC, may have just kept that whisker in front. And? It is PTE Passion first in 204.01, CSDC Liquid Assets in 204.08, seven hundredths of a second separating those two boats followed by Cal Dragons in 206.8. I guess I'm wrong. My whisker is off. That's a very fine whisker. <laughs> that was a great race. That's a university mixed team. We are now going to go to race number 149. On race 149 there is the Premier Mixed Small Boat. We are at the time of 8.43 a.m. here in Florida. Um, that race that just finished as was race 148 was run at 840 so we're about eight minutes behind schedule but pretty much on time we basically have five boats coming into the race grid here in lane number one from uh, Germany we have the beast boat Magdeburg in lane number two from Canada three are dragon Trois Rivières. in lane number three from Germany Necro Dragon in lane number four, from the USA, Tampa River Dragon Boat. And finally, in lane number five, for those online watching the races, from the Philippines, Pads Dragon Boat Racing Team, Cebu City. This is where we'll be bringing up Mary Beth uh, later on this afternoon at 1.30. She was scheduled for this morning, but because her team is racing right now, we had to delay her interview. But we'll bring it to you shortly from Florida. One of the most interesting things is the pads also races in the Paradragon division. And they're out here racing in the small boat premier mix. They are a very, very versatile group. Race 152 and 153 to Marshling, please. Race 152 and 153 to Marshling. 
Pads is the first ever cross disability adapted dragon boat racing. At the 2019 DBF Worlds, they participated there and they bagged four golds and four world records in the 200 and 500 meter PD1 division and the 200 and 500 PD2 divisions. And this is their first time at a club crew world championship. Welcome, Pads. Lane number one again is Beast Bolts from Germany. In the blue there is 3R Dragon. Lane number three in the middle of your screen is Nettle Dragon from Germany. Lane four in the teal or bluish uh, part of your screen on your left side is the Tampa River. And on the outside, on the left side of your screen is the Pads team from Cebu City. The starter has the call. And it looks like they're giving just a small adjustment on the start line to make sure that their nose are in the boot. And there they go. This is a clean start. And Necro Dragons with 3R Dragons are off the line first, followed by Tampa River. But like we said earlier, this is 500 meter race. You can come off the line very strong, but you have to command the middle of that race and the finish. Necro Dragon still in the lead with a very high rate, followed by 3R Dragons and the Tampa River Dragon Boat Club. At the 100 meter mark, it is still Necro Dragon in first. In second, it will be Tampa River, and in third, 3R Dragon. But look at boat number one, Beast Boat Germany is trying to catch their country mates. It is going to be Necro Dragon in first, but the Beast Boat are with them now. In S lane number four, it is still Tampa River, and in second, it is 3R Dragon in lane number two. Coming to the halfway mark, 250, Necro Dragon is still in first. But look at this, we now still have the Beast Boat in lane number one, staying with the 3R Dragon and the Tampa River Dragon Boat. And just tailing in the back is the Pads Dragon Boat Racing Team, but like we saw earlier, don't count out lane number five. Coming to the last 150 odd meters, we are still looking at the Necro Dragon Germany in lane number three in first. In second, it is going to be a fight between lane number one, Beast Boat, and lane number four, Tampa River, but 3R Dragon is holding with them. With about a boat length ahead of all the pack, it is still Necro Dragon in first. In second, look at this, it's going to be their fellow country mate, Beast Boat. Coming to the finish line, we've got Beast Boat and Tampa still fighting it out for second. It's going to be Necro Dragon, Necro Dragon still in first. In second, it is going to be Beast Boat also from Germany. And in third, it is Tampa River coming to the last 50 meters. Necro Dragon with a nice commanding lead with a good rate, good catch, good control. Necro Dragon is in going to be first in this race. And in second, unofficially, will be Beast Boat. And in third, Tampa River Dragon Boat Club. In fourth, it will be lane number two, three R Dragon, and followed by the team from the Philippines, Pads Dragon Boat Team. We have white flags from both official boats, so we have a clean race. This is the first heat of the Premier Mix small boat. This will be a normal progression and not accumulated time for these boats. First boat goes straight to the final, second fastest boat goes to the straight to the final. And the unofficial revote uh, results are Necker Dragon 215.7, Beast Boat 218.2, Tampa River Dragon Boat 219.6, 3R Dragon 220.1, and Pads Dragon Boat Racing 223.9. Those are unofficial results. This uh, comment online, Wanda uh, from the uh, internet says, Go Philippines! Uh, they did their best. They did really well against some of these top teams from Germany and Canada and even the U.S. Keep it going, Tampa, from Than. Uh, great comments coming in here. Uli, Beast Boat. Yeah, Beast Boat he didn't come off the line very aggressively like the other pack did. And Beast Boat made up the ground in the middle of the race course with some exciting racing. And uh, they were trying to catch their fellow Necker Dragon. Who's our next race coming up here, Mark? Our next race is the second heat for the Premier Mixed Small Boat. In lane two, it will be Dubai Paddle Club. 
Lane three, Dragon Club Bruno, Gorging Dragons, and Chicago Blades in lane five. So we have Dubai, Czech, uh, excuse me, Hungary, I believe it is, Canada, and the U.S. Uh, were you referring to lane number two, Dragon Club Bruno? Yeah, are they Czech? Yes, they're okay. Czech. Okay. <laughs> Wrong country. <laughs> sorry. Don't be sorry, Mark. Uh, this isn't very easy when we're flipping around between the race grids, team names, and countries. So we do our best to catch on to all the little details, and I think that's our goal for the next six days is to give you as much information about each of these individual teams just to give you some scope of where they're from. And I'll get Mark to bring one up right now. Let's go with Dragon Club Bruno since I put them in the wrong country and they are uh, as he's looking around he's got a bunch of notes in front of him uh, Dragon uh, sorry I even said it wrong this is going to be Dragon Club Bruno yeah uh, they were established in 2008 they are indeed the Czech Republic uh, during the 2021 Czech Cup Series, they took home many medals. And the Czech, uh, the Czech Cup races are multiple non-IDBF race di distances. They include a 3K and a 5K race. And in the uh, 2018 Club Crew uh, World Championships in Zeged, Hungary, in the 2,000 meter final, they were six in the premier mixed division. They're also known for their ice hockey players, Yarmar Yaga from Czech Republic. Uh, I believe he's still playing actually in hockey. He's uh, one of the elder statesmen still playing in the NHL. Great player though. Uh, we're calling uh, race 151, uh, Necklace Dragon to Marshling ASAP. Necklace Dragon, race 151 to the Marshling. Also race 152 and 153 to the marshalling as well. Race 152 and 153 to marshalling. Good morning, Beefcake. Don't woke up late. Great job, LACDBC. Wowzers. Beefcake, did you stay up all night and uh, have a party and didn't invite us? Jill, go, Chicago Blades, go. Is Chicago Blades here? Yes. Where? They are in this race. Oh, this one coming up? Yes, they are in lane five. Am I calling this race? You may if you wish. All right. Uh, let's go, Seklau. From Carolyn, thank you for being online and watching this. We're now up to 548 viewers. Bombay Jack Bruno. I think that is probably in Czech, and I'm reading it in English. My apologies, Hannah, but uh, great to see you online. We've got four boats in this heat, and it uh, looks like when we look at the water, we do have the four boats coming your way. The time here is 8.53 a.m., in Florida, which means it's somewhere time for coffee around the world. <laughs> so at 8.54 on the West Coast, it will be 5.54 in the morning. So we've got a bunch of West Coast people probably waking up to race number 150. This is the Premier Mixed Heat number two. On the right side, we've got uh, Dubai Paddle Club from the UAE. In red, we have from the Czech Republic, Dragon Club Bruno. In lane number four from Vancouver Island, Gorging Dragons. And this is the team that you were just mentioning, Mark? Yes. In lane number five, the Chicago Blades. 
looks like we're picking up a little bit of breeze out of the east, so you will see the teams probably doing draw strokes to the right to keep their boats centered in the boots once they get into the boots. This time of day, that breeze out of the east is pretty much standard in Florida. It's coming across that water. You can see the ripples. Yep. I can see what you were saying about the attenuator is actually stopping any of the waves from coming into the race course. That's correct. It's really good. Yeah, you can see in, looks like Gorgon Dragons doing some right draw strokes, as is Chicago, to get centered up in those boots with that uh, breeze from the right and race 150 is underway. Look at the power off the start line from Dragon Boat Club Bruno. And you can see the power on that white part of the water. The right side was just turning up so much power off the start, whereas the left side didn't seem to have as much power. Yeah, you want to try it equal power on both sides of the boat. It really keeps the boat flat. If the boat gets rocking on the start due to side-to-side -to -side power and differences, you can actually lose time, even though everybody's giving it at their every bit of effort. And what happens there is the steer person has to compensate if a boat goes right or left because of power issues, the steer actually has to correct it or the helm has to correct it, thus slowing the boat down. At this point, it looks like Gorgon Dragons has forged a very slight lead over Club Dragon Club Bruno. And they're in the body of the race. You can see that the rates have come down. And there, this is where you have to control your breathing, the stroke rate. This is, you went anaerobic at the start for maybe the first 30 seconds. Now you're recovering, maintaining your effort. And it looks like, again, Gorging Dragons is building a little bit of a lead over Dragon Club Bruno, followed by Chicago Blades, and then Dubai Paddle Club. That brutal team is pulling the left a lot, and that's because the power on the right side seems to be much greater than the left side. That steers person or helm is trying to stay on the center of course here. And we're down to about 150 meters, and it is still gorging dragons out front, followed by Dragon Club Bruno. Good. Dragon Club Bruno's picked their rate up early. They went into their finish sprint early, trying to make up that difference. You can see Gorgian Dragon still with that same steady rate, but Dragon Club Bruno has really picked that rate up, trying to sprint to the finish and catch Gorgian Dragons. As you voted for the heat, I'm going to vote for Gorgian on this race. Go Canada! <laughs> At the finish, it's go unofficially Gorgian Dragons, Dragon Club Bruno, and that's going to be the Chicago Blades, followed by Dragon Dubai Paddle Club. And to Noreen uh, online, already awakened Victoria and cheering on all our GDs, Gorging Dragons, and congratulations, Noreen. Unofficially, it is Gorging Dragons in first. With a time of 2 minutes, 16.65, Gorging Dragons. In second from Czech Republic, Dragon Club Bruno, with a time of 217.54. And in third, USA Chicago Blades, time of 224.82. And in fourth, UAE Dubai Paddle Club with a time of 227.90 unofficially. If you have any questions about these races that you're seeing online and you want our professional opinion, I don't know how a professional we are, but if you want our professional opinion, just type them out and we'll try to answer all the questions that show up online. Rooting for Seklau in race 151, watching from England at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Good luck, everyone. Go smash it. Thanks, Beth. Uh, Beatcake, amazing job production team. Uh, they can hear me to my right, and we also applaud the production team for an amazing job. They control all the camera and the drones out there, but we thank you very much. They are saying that these are nice race views. Tony the Tiger, great. <laughs> Beth, come on, Seclo. Seclo's got quite a number of fans online right now at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. So that is good to see the support for Seclo. This next race, race 151, it is Premier Mix Standard Boat. In lane one, we're going to have Catch-22 from New York. And here is what all the Seclo fans are 
cheering for lane two is the Seclo 100. Lane three is 22 Dragons. Lane four is South Breeze. Lane five is CYPN Storm. Lane six is Neckar Dragon. This is a call for race 153 and 154 to Marshling. 153 and 154. And just to the left of our eye in the announcing booth, we have Steven Rodriguez back up to just see how things are going from up here. Yesterday, we interviewed Steven. He is the director of the Nathan Benderson Park, and he basically takes care of this conservancy, and we thank him for having us here. Um, how's it going today, uh, Steven? Just give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. He's got a thumbs up. It's a good sign. Uh, he's been doing a great job with his staff. They've been helping us, the USDBF and the IDBF, host the 13th Club Crew World Championships from Sarasota, Florida. If you ever get a chance to come on down to Sarasota, Florida, check the park out. There's many events down here that they host from rowing to kids camps. Um, there's, what else is up here? Kayaking? Tri triathlons. 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 I believe they do archery. Uh, they have a huge island that they can run multiple, multiple sports on. Great area. Last calls are being made to the team. This is race number 151, Premier Standard Boat. Time here is 9.01 a.m. in Florida. This race was going to run at 8.56, so we're about five minutes just behind schedule, but looking very good today. In lane number one on the left of the screen is Catch-22, New York City, steered or helmed by Matthew Au. He is one of our other commentators. You'll see him, the white hat to the right, raising your hands right now. From Great Britain, Seclo Hundreds. And lane number three from Canada, 22 Dragons. Lane number four from Long Beach, South Breeze. Steered either by Keith or Mary, but in the premier, it is most likely going to be Keith. In lane number five from Boston, CYPN Storm. And in lane number six from Germany, it is the Necro Dragon. Lane number one, Cash 22, Matthew pulls out of the gates. He's not comfortable with something, hence why he raised his hand. He's reset his team, and the officials have given him the opportunity to. In lane number three, the 22 Dragons do not like their lineup. The basically back right side is just pulling to get the boat realigned, and now they're settled. One of the things teams don't like to do is to draw or pry during the start of the race sequence. It causes a lot of stress to the mental uh, side of the game. Uh, teams like to come into the gates calm and ready to go. And you can see boat one is just jostling with that boot. They have backed out once again. That, that that's Matthew. That's Matthew. That yeah. east to west breeze. That's why you're seeing all the draw strokes or pry strokes. Trying to get those boats centered. And you can see lane two is now at an angle. If you look carefully at the water, you can see the split in the attenuator. That's where the water's coming through, or the wind's coming through and pushing team one off a little bit. And their drummer is just waving their hand that they missed it again. So this is a huge disadvantage to team one in the sense of a mental uh, readiness as the team is asked to back it down, reset. It's hard as a teammate to sit there, focus on your game plan, but yet have to pull the boat back and reset each and every time. Other boats are sitting there just going, let's go, let's go. Bob, I can hear you online here, Bob. You're like, let's get this race going. Yeah, Twenty or Catch-22 has really backed it up. They're going to give themselves lots of room to drift it in. He should come in way to the right of that boot and let the wind bring him into that boot, drift that, him in. That's easy for us to say in the tower. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, I'll be out there later fighting that same <laughs> battle, not as a steersperson, but as a paddler. Let's see how Matthew does. He looks like he's got it now. And he's in the gates, but his head's come up a little bit. Starter has the call. And it's a clean start. And there goes the Premier Mix Standard Boat. And it looks like lay number three, 22 Dragons from Montreal, has got a great start. But look at boat number one, Catch-22, is staying with them. Follow in third place, South Breeze. In fourth and fifth, it looks like we've got boat number two, Sacklow Hundreds, with the CYPN Storm. 
I apologize, Necker Dragon is not in this race. This is a five boat race. So this is only lanes one, two, three, four, and five. Five on your left of your screen, CYPN. In first, unofficially, it's going to be a fight between South Breeze and 22 Dragons. But look at Cash 22, they're still in this race. We were talking earlier about center line, and it looks like CYPN Storm is not on the center line of their lane. They're hugging the right side. So from a racist advantage, you can see that bow weight coming off of boat number four, South Breeze. If CYPN pulls a little bit more to the right, he will catch that wave, and that's what we call wave riding or wash riding. And you get an advantage because your boat gets a surge off that wave from boat number four. But we'll see if the officials make that call. As we go down to the race course, this is going to be a fight between South Breeze in lane number four and a fight between lane number uh, four and three. three. South Breeze and 22 Dragons coming to the finish line. It is South Breeze still in the lead, followed by 22 Dragons in three. But look at boat number one, Cash 22 is still with them. Coming to the finish line, will it be South Breeze or 22? South Breeze in four, 22 in three. Coming to the finish line, it looks like it's going to be South Breeze with about a half a boat length difference. And it is South Breeze, followed by 22 Dragons. Coming to the line, CYPN and 22 from New York. It's going to be Catch 22 in third, followed by CYPN in five, and in sec low hundreds with pride. Give it up for boat number two from Great Britain. And we have white flags from both boats. Apparently they felt that he was, CYPN was close enough to the center line that it was not an issue. As a head official in Canada, it's hard to see that angle sometimes and you don't see the team creeping over. We have an advantage of the uh, overhead shot. And the unofficial results are South Breeze in first at 157.96, Catch 22 at 159.1. I said, catch, I mixed that. 22 Dragons at 159.1. Catch 22 at 205.1. CYPN Storm at 205.57. And uh, Seclo at 205.59. 208.59. 208, I'm sorry. That's okay. The screen disappeared on us, and uh, Mark had to remember what he had seen earlier. Yeah, they flipped on our screen to the next race very quickly. Uh, no, that was the interesting race. Uh, we should put a ban on the number 22. Yeah. <laughs> There's just 22 everywhere. All right, we're coming on to our next race. Bob Mina, good job, Catch-22, Nightly Dunn, Matthew, and crew. Our next race, 152, Premier Mixed. This is the second heat. The Premier Mixed standard boats will be going through the full progression. Race 153 needs Pickering, 22 Dragons urgently. 153, Pickering, 22 Dragons urgently. Second call for race 154. And 155. Again, 153, Pickering and 22 to the marshalling immediately. Second call for race 154. 154 to marshalling now. Race 155 as well. Okay, we are looking in the Premier Mixed Heat 2, Lane 1, New Dragons Racing Club, Lane 2, Dragon Zone Paddling Club. Lane three, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association. Lane four, Rising Tide. And lane five, True North Paddling Club. The boats are, we've got three, four boats out out of five. Looks like the fifth boat is right at the attenuator. Dragon Zone Paddling Club. They are out of False Creek, Vancouver. They are also called Fire Truck. Uh, they raced in the 2018 Club Cruise in Zagat, Hungary, but they did not medal. They're out of Vancouver, which is a beautiful city. I have departed Vancouver on cruises, and I have raced in Vancouver. It is truly a gorgeous city. And we have... Still only four boats out there. 
This is a call for 154 Raysbury from Great Britain. 154 Raysbury from Great Britain ASAP to Marshling. We're waiting for the fifth boat to sh come out for this premier mixed heat two. In these normal progressions, the first place team goes straight to the final. Then the fastest loser goes straight through to the final and the rest go to the repassage. I thought we talked about that yesterday. We weren't going to use the word loser. Well, that's the term on the sheet. <laughs> that's the IDBF official term for the second place, but fastest second place boat. Okay, what other word can we use? Or words? What do you think? Uh, next fastest? I like that one better. We don't try to use the word next fastest versus the word loser. <laughs> okay, we are. Okay, our fifth boat is just coming out now. As you've seen from some, you can see from this overhead shot, off to the right, there's right white tents and docks. That's where the marshalling area is. So the boats have to paddle a couple hundred meters to get from the docks at the marshalling through the attenuator, loop behind the rest of the boats, and then line up for the start. In marshalling, it can be, a, it's not chaotic, but there's a lot going on in marshalling, lots of teams lining up. You have pre-marshalling and then marshalling. So there's a lot of activity going on in the marshalling area and the officials down there are kept very busy keeping all of these teams straight. We've got somebody in Venezuela speaking. Can you speak uh, Spanish? I do not. Can you try this one from Maria? She's basically, I believe, wishing as well. Benedicciones, felicidades is basically wishing as well as, as best I can make out. The closest I could read is Feliz Navidad, but I think <laughs> that's a different season. It is. <laughs> All right. Oh, Ada Wong's come up and said, Thir third fastest boat is a way to say loser. <laughs> <laughs> Earn a monkey, go Dragon Zone from Canada. Got a thumbs up with a four-leaf clover. Beefcake is jumping teams again. Beefcake can't seem to pick a team that he likes, but he's now choosing Go Rising Tide. It's either between LA County or Rising Tide he cho chooses. The boats are approaching the boot. Eileen, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> That's a tougher crowd than the IDBF. <laughs> It looks like all the boats are in the boots. Lehman, second place is first loser. <laughs> that doesn't sound as positive either. Okay, I think we can explain Beefcake. Rising Tide is out of LA, so he's maintaining an LA loyalty. Oh, oh is that what it is? That's what it is. Ah, uh, Beefcake, I tell ya. You have to choose some of the Canadian teams once in a while. Okay, we can see the boats are in the boots. And race 152 is underway. Looks like lane three, Philadelphia got a good jump, but lane two, Dragon Zone Paddling Cup Club has come on very strong, as has lane one, New Dragon, New Dragons Racing Club. On the outside, it is True North Paddling getting out very, very quickly. As we've said, this is your first 30 seconds or so is anaerobic, and now they're settling in to the body of the race. Get your breathing back under control while you work very, very hard through the body of this race. At about 100 meters into the race, it looks like True North Paddling Club, followed by New Dragon Racing Club. It's lanes one and five in the lead. Philadelphia is moving up as well. This is going to be a very tight race. This is going to be come down to the finish sprints for these boats. At about the 200 meter mark, we are still lanes one and five. New Dragons Racing Club and True North Paddling Club in the lead. New Dragon is lane one, True North is lane five. Philadelphia is surging. 
in the middle, middle lane. We're down to about 100 meters. It still looks like it's a True North Paddling Club and New Dragons Racing Club in the lead. True North is building a lead here as we come into the final 50 meters. Philadelphia is surging for third, but it's gonna be tight. At the finish, it looks like it's True North Paddling Club, followed by New Dragons, followed by Philadelphia. Looks like Dragon Zone was fourth with Rising Tide what, in fifth. What did I miss there? I just uh, came back to the booth. You, you missed part of a race. <laughs> I did. I missed our local team, vote number two. And we're waiting for the unofficial results. And there they are, True North Paddling Club in a time of 155.97. New Dragons Racing Club, 157.62. Small correction, uh, we are gonna call N New Dragons NDRC all weekend now. Okay, F uh, Philadelphia Dragon Boat, 158.99. Dragon Zone Paddling Club, 159.69. And Rising Tide, two minutes, 0.26. Sorry, Beatcake, uh, your boat rising tide did not crack the two-minute mark. They came close, but Beatcake, let's see what happens in the next round. Coming to you from Sarasota, Florida, the time here locally it is 9.16 in the morning. Uh, next race is 9 oh, uh, sorry, 1.53 at 9.12. So we're catching up some time here. Uh, next race will be round two of the U18 small boat. In the U18 small boat, we have Pickering Dragon Boat Club, followed by LA County DBC, and then two 22 Dragon teams in lane number three, 22 Dragons B, and in lane number four, 22 Dragons A. Uh, we're looking online, we're now up to 600 people. Uh, we are seeing a lot of great support for your local teams. Again, if you want to promote your race or promote your local club, please put them online. Give us a quick bio and we'll read them out on air and to all the teams. If you want to wish a happy birthday or congratulatory to anyone in the races, let us know who they are, what team they're with, and what the message is. Please remind that the messages must be PG related. Nothing bad, nothing um, sinister, just clean, good, fun messages. Uh, good effort, Rising Tide, Beefcake. Um, yeah, they did have a good effort for sure, but again, they do have another chance at this. All right, PDBC Juniors, Hammerheads really did it this year. Julian, uh, you, I guess you're referring to True North. Jadson, uh, good work, everyone. Good job, NDRC. Thank you for those wonderful comments for coming in from Canada. Nico, TNPC, hammerhead, 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 TNPC, hammerhead, hammerhead, hammerhead. Great race all. Hey, those online, um, I'm not sure if you heard about the dr modern day Dragon Boat Racing book or uh, yeah, it's actually a great book celebrating 30 years of the IDBF. It is a great book that has the Chinese cultural traditions of dragon boat sport, the beginnings of the IDBF, the development of the sport, and the international identity. If you get a chance, look it up. We have it for sale here at Race and Men. This is race number one, five, three, coming your way. Off the start line, it is boat number two, LA County in the lead, followed by Pickering Dragon Boat in lane number one, and in lane three, 22 Dragons B, and on the left side, 22 Dragons A. That was a clean start for the LA County Dragon Boat Club, and about two to three benches behind them is the Pickering Dragon Boat Club. Coming to the 250 meter mark, it is still LA County in first, followed by Pickering Dragon Boat Club. And looks like the steers in lane number three is struggling to keep it online. 
And they've come off the center, and they're going to try to get back into the center of the lane. That is 22 Dragons. 22 Dragons A in lane number four, still comfortably in their lean lane and trying to reel in bolts one and two. Coming to the last 75 meters in the green boat, that is LA County, followed by Pickering Dragon Boat Club in lane number one. And in third, unofficially still, is the 22 Dragons A in lane number four. And in fourth, unofficially, it is 22 Dragons B. Coming to the last 20-odd meters, L.A. County with a comfortable boat length lead on lane number one. That is L.A. County DBC. Followed by a boat behind them is the Pickering Dragon Boat Club. And finishing off this race is boats four and three, the 22 Dragons B and the 22 Dragons A. As we look at the race officials, they both waved the red white flag, meaning that there was no infractions. Boat number three, Helm, is looking over at our officials, and they're a little bit confused. She's pointing, but there seems to be some confusion on what happened with lane number three when the boat got a little away from them. Final results, unofficially, LA County with a time of 219.49, Pickering, 223.20, 22 Dragons, 229.45, and fourth unofficially is 22 Dragons with a time of 232.71. That was the U18 round number two, race 153 from Sarasota, Florida. We are now going to the next race, 154. Before we go there, we'll have to call for races 156, second call to marshalling, and race 157. With 156 and 157, please go to marshalling now. In race 155, NBP paddling and heat to the marshalling now. Race 155, NBP paddling and the heat to the marshalling now. We are now also calling race 156 and 157. Please go to marshalling now. If I'm calling 156 and 157, that means 158, get yourself ready. This is a message from Eric. Message to H2O Senior A Mix. It's up to you to keep the honor of the 2018 500 meter world championships from your partner, Eric Gervais. Thank you very much, Eric, for your comment and your message out to H2O. To Katie, dang, when I was 16, I was hanging out under the bleacher skipping class. And these kids are out here slaying. Truly amazing. Are we going to see the award ceremony this weekend? We're going to try to get a camera on them. Um, no promises. Uh, the award ceremony is below our tower. And it's on a very steep angle. And we spoke with the cameraman this morning. And we will try our best to at least show some award ceremonies if we can. Dragon Lady 420 LACDBC slaying it. 
All right, as we look at the race course, this is race 154, Senior B Mix. This is going to be six boats. We currently have five boats. Do you see a six boat there, Mark? I see one, two, three, four, five. I don't see any movement off the docks. And yet they're bringing them in, so. You know who we're missing is lane number six, Raysbury, because they're in the white shirt. That's right. So it looks like we're just missing one team. And as I look over to the docks, I can see the standard boat docks, and I don't see the team coming out. And in the camera, you can see it. It's the first dock to your upper right corner of that screen where people are leaving. Yeah, it looks... Looks like there is a, and we're a long ways off, and it looks like we've got a team loading out there, and they look like they're in white jerseys. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, they might be calling this race, actually. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're, they're in the boots. Yep, they yep, are. They're going to call it. Race 154 is underway. Before we call this race, 155, we need MB paddling and heat to the marshalling now. 155, MB paddling and heat to marshalling now. Back to the race. It looks like lane one, 22 Dragons, has a s very slight lead, followed by Gold Coast. Actually, the first four lanes all appear to be neck and neck with this drone shot. And in the outside, Ottawa is they're losing a little bit of ground, but it's still all four boats in the first four lanes. If I could tell from this, Gold Coast has a very slight lead. Necro Dragons just fighting that lane. They're on the left side trying to pull back to the center lane. You know, Kerry, we've been talking about the center lane. I'm wondering if we've got a slight... Oh, we have a red flag behind lane two. And that is lane two pulling over to the right side, and it looks like the official has caught something very weird there on that race. It still looks like... Now it looks like lane four, which is H2O Montreal, has built a very slight lead coming to the two... just past the 250-meter mark. We're, we we have been talking about the center line. I'm wondering if we're getting a very slight angle off the drone that's doing that for us, Carrie. Let's see what happens. We're coming down to the last 150 meters. Mark, what do you see? I am seeing, still looks like lane four, which is, odd, uh, excuse me, H2O Montreal with a slight lead. Lane three, which is Neckar Dragons, is right there with him, and lane two, Lane one and two are very close together, slightly behind lane three. It looks like lane four has got it. Lane one is coming on strong at the finish. Will they have enough room, Mark? It's going to be. They've got 30 meters. I don't think, I believe it's going to be lane four. You're right. No. Uh, yep, you're right. Followed by lane three, and one is going to get third in this race by my angle. So that was H2O followed by Necro Dragons and then 22 Dragons out of nowhere on lane number one sneaks in for the third position. Now what's interesting, the officials at the end of the race had white flags across the board with a red flag partway through the race. So the unofficial results are H2O Montreal in 206.1, Neckar Dragons in 207.1, 22 Dragons in 207.9, Gold Coast from Australia 208.29, and Ottawa DBC in 208.81. Those are unofficial results. Raysbury did not start. Our next race will be Senior B Mixed Small Boat, round two. That race we just ran was the first repassage for the standard boat mixed.
So we have a surprise guest up here from the Great Lake Paddle Club. Uh, this is Cheryl Sa Shannon. And Cheryl was the lady who was wearing the blue, white pants in as the helm for the Great Lake Paddle. Bob Mina, you'll be jealous right now. Because I think Bob called you out and he said, what, what about your pants, Cheryl? So I'm wearing the pants because it's my sunscreen. Rather than putting on all those chemicals and stuff, I'm staying cool and loose. I can jump in the lake and go swimming, which I've done a few times. I guess it's actually an ocean. But it's to stay cool and prevent sunburn. And what did Bob call your pants online? Uh, online, I heard from friends that he called Miss Fancy Pants. Miss Fancy Pants. So <laughs> we love it. <laughs> now tell us about what club you're from. So I'm from the Great Lake Paddlers Club. And Great Lake actually is called that because we have people coming from uh, quite a large range of area, for those of you who know Ontario, from Welland all the way to Belleville. So I personally come from the Belleville area, but we do have paddlers coming and having to go hours to get to practice. How are you guys doing here at the 13th World Club Crew Championships? Well, I think we're doing very well. We've accumulated five, five medals, three silvers, two bronzes so far. Cheryl has a fan next to her helping her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Bonnie Taylor. Hi, Bonnie. How are you doing? She's the official photographer for this team. Um, what has been the most amazing thing here in Sarasota, Florida for your team? Uh, I think for me, pr I just joined the team um, this past year. So for me, it's making new friends, meeting new athletes, um, and just getting to know people. So that's, and I've also moved to the area that I'm in. So for me, during COVID, meeting new people was really helpful. So that's been fantastic. Coming down here, an opportunity to get to know them better. Now, you said one year. How did you learn how to paddle in or steer in one year? Well, I've been with this club for one year. Oh, what club did you come from? So I did come from Outer Harbor, now True North. Um, so, And I was with them for quite a number of years. I worked with uh, Jim Farintosh for a couple of years and with Chris Edwards for about 12 or 14 years. Oh, we sure miss, uh, miss Jim Farintosh for sure. Yeah. I actually think he plays basketball, but not dragon boating. But <laughs> he's a great, great coach from yeah. the East Coast. Now, you're wearing a Toronto Blue Jays hat. Did you see what happened yesterday against Boston? I did not. I went home and rested for today. <laughs> um, the score was something like 23 or 28 to 5. They creamed the Boston wow. Red Sox. So uh, for those who are baseball fans, uh, that was a great baseball game. But we're actually talking about dragon boating. How's the weather beat for your team? Uh, honestly, coming from Ontario, it's a wee bit on the warm side. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mark is laughing because Mark is local. And, and actually, Cheryl, you were at the uh, Pan Am camp in April yes, I was. with 15 boats worth of paddlers in Tampa in April. And it, it was warmish, but not like this. Not like this. Uh, and funny enough, back in Ontario, for uh, in Toronto area, Belleville area, it was quite hot for a few days for that area. I think it got up to, with the Humidex, about 34, 35. So mm -hmm. pretty warm there. Uh, Simon, Simone Hill says, Go Cheryl, wish you well from Cyprus. Ah, Simo. Uh, Simone, there it, he is. Yeah. You can say hi. Hi, Simo. And then Ken also said hi to you as well. Hey, Ken. There you go. Hello, you got how you doing, Ken? You got some fans up there. Yeah. Now, last question. Um, for those who can't see her, she's got her fancy pants we've been mentioning, and Bob loves them. On your left foot, you have something like a tattoo. Can you tell me a bit about that tattoo and the meaning behind it? So the tattoo is a compass rose, and I put at the north sign uh, maple leaf for Canada, and I tilted it slightly on my foot because I wanted my brain to remember to think with my heart. So it's tilted slightly for that reason. That is a wonderful story. Can you stay here? I'm going to have you, Mark, and Cheryl call this next race. Uh, we'll walk you through this. So Mark, Cheryl, race 155 is yours. Cheryl, what race is this? This is the Senior B Mixed. And the boats in this race are NBP Paddling, Heat, Great Lake Paddlers. Yay! I was about to say yeah. no bias here, Cheryl, because Heat is my team. Okay. And Gorging Dragons. Uh, we do have a question online from Johnny Wallflower. When are the award ceremony? The first award ceremony for the day is scheduled for 1040. We have a call for race 157, 157, and 158 to Marshalling. 157 and 158. In addition, if I've called 158, 159, 
also to marshalling as soon as possible. Back to the two announcers. Okay, we have two boats on the water, so we're still waiting for the rest of the fleet. Uh, we've got 50% of the fleet out there, so we're still waiting for two boats to come out. And I, I, I'm going to add that as a steer, sometimes waiting for boats, which I understand they need to wait because things are happening in the loading dock. It takes a lot of patience. It does. It really does. And from a paddler, you're so focused, you want to get this race going. Absolutely, because you're jacked to go, and it's really hard to hold back. So wh how are you finding these champion boats? These are the champion performance small boats. How are you finding them to steer? Uh, it took a little bit of getting used to just a small boat versus a standard. Uh, but once we got the groove and the team got a hold of how much wobble was in the boat, not a problem. Yeah, th these performance boats, a lot of people who have paddled small boats, they're in festival boats, which are very, very stable. Mm -hmm. uh, they're rather barge-like at times. <laughs> but these performance boats, once you get them moving, they move very, very nicely. Yes, they're very, very sleek. Move through the water very nicely. And I see a boat approaching the attenuator, so that's three boats. Uh, we've got all four boats. The other boat is just to the right of the official boat out there. So we've got all four boats for this race approaching the start line. They're looping behind, getting a little bit of warm up in because the 500 meter start is so close to when the boats come through the attenuator. And I do want to give credit to the starters. I think the starters have been doing a fantastic job of making sure everybody's been getting to the gate on time and uh, making for as fair a race as possible. Good. Now we notice it as the breeze comes up, uh, we saw it yesterday, there was a boat that was not in the boat boot, but the head was right on the line. So the starters are letting them go, even if they're not in the boot, but properly lined up. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're seeing? Uh, part of that too, but we've ourselves have had challenges because we had one boat where the seat was broken, we came in late to the start, and they just kept everybody who was already waiting nice and calm and kept us informed that, you know, we're just waiting, we're waiting, it's all good. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So the boats are getting sorted out. Lane one, NBP paddling. Lane two, heat. Lane three, Great Lake paddlers. Lane four, gorging dragons. And it is Vancouver Island. They are from Victoria on Vancouver Island, not Victoria Island as I called it yesterday. Yes, Vancouver Island. <laughs> And believe it or not, I worked in Canada for a couple oh. of years over on the other coast in oh. the Maritimes in Halifax. Yes, and where the beasts are from. That's correct. Although they, they make it very clear they are Dartmouth, not Halifax. Rightfully so. Yes, paddling on Lake Banuk, I believe. Banuk, Lake Banuk, yes. And the boats are inching past the 50 meter buoy. Coming into the line. Okay. Cheryl, do you speak French? Uh, un petit peu. Un petit peu. What part of uh, Ontario do you live in? Well, right now I live in Prince Edward County, which is about a two and a half hour drive east of Toronto. Okay, I'm reading, I love the pants and the hat. You look like you are headed out to trim ah your begonias. Some days. Okay, the boats are in inching into the boots. You can see lane three has lined up to the right of the boat to allow for that right to left breeze to drift him in. Race 155 is underway. Cheryl, you have the call. Wow, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like a good start. Yeah. So lane one is NDP, NDP paddling. Lane two is the heat. Lane three, Great Lake paddlers. And lane four is gorging dragons. 
It looks like lane four has got, got off to a great start. Followed by, I'm going to say lane one, two and three are pretty close together right now. How's your, your, how's your boat doing? Heat is in yeah. lane two. They're uh, lagging just a little. Look at boat number four, three. They're three. just kind of fishing around a little bit with the boat moving around. As we said earlier, these small boats are very nimble in the water. And they get hit by any wake. They kind of shift. So we see boat number two here with uh, heat, and they're kind of coming close to that left side, but she's doing a great job trying to keep it online. What is it like steering these boats? It, it's um, a lot of fun, actually. The boats do, as I'm watching lane four now, kind of doing it in and out. But it's they're very sensitive for sure. So you can quickly oversteer, so it's just learning how to manage the boat. All right, as we turn our head over to the course, we're at 250 meters. Mark, take it away. It looks like boat one, has, which is NBP paddling, has built a lead. And Gorging Dragons is right there with them. And looks like Great Lake Paddlers is currently three, followed by Heat. This is a cumulative time. This is the, uh, f of three races. This is the second round. So it's tough to tell. It's one tough or to tell. four. Yeah. One or four. It's tight. Very close. Cheryl, last 50 meters. Cheryl, this is your call. Wow. Who's okay, in first? Uh, I'm saying right now lane four is in first, followed by one, then three, then two. What are the team but, names? Uh, so we have NDP. No. Gorging Dragons in first, followed by NDP Paddling, followed by Great Lake Paddlers, followed up by The Heat. And coming to the line, oh, there could right have been a change. It looks the, like MVP the, may have taken may the Gorging have. Dragons off the, the line. At the last second. Let's find out, Cheryl, if you turn your head to the screen, you're going to call the official, <laughs> unofficial results to the The to unofficial the results coming up shortly. And unofficially, it is NDP Paddling with a... 2 minutes, 21 seconds, 0.213. In second place, Gorging Dragons with a 221.42. Wow, that was close. And in third place, Great Lake Paddlers with a 224.527. And in fourth place, The Heat, 2 minutes, 25 seconds, 0.346. Congratulations to all teams. Cheryl, your team beat The Heat. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Mark. <laughs> sorry, Mark. <laughs> that happens. That will happen. Hey, thank you very much, Cheryl, for coming up to show us your fancy pants, the story behind your tattoo, and we wish your team the best of luck. We hope to have some party on Sunday. Yes, and can I just add one thing? I just want to say um, thank you to my mother, Joan Sweeney. I hope she's listening right now because she's the one who taught me how to sew so I could make these fancy pants. You actually made them. I did make these fancy pants. Bob Minna wants a pair himself. He actually sent that to us. So, Bob... He's uh, in our hotel right now. He's just getting a little bit better. Uh, but he was the first who noticed the pants, and he said he wanted a pair All for right, himself. All right. I can find uh, Facebook friend Bob and figure some things out. Thank okay. you again. Thank you, gentlemen. This has been Thank a pleasure. You. Okay. Next race, race 156. University Mix Standard Boats, round two, again, cumulative time. Race 158, 159, and 162 marshalling. 158, 159, and 162 marshalling. Would 161 get ready and 162 as well? But 158, 159, and 162 marshalling now. In this race, first uh, lane one, PTE Pesh. Lane two, CSDC Liquid Assets. Lane three, Cal Dragon Boat. Boats are maneuvering in the boots. Looks like CSDC Liquid Assets is having some trouble with the boot. You'll note on the lane assignments in these three boat races going for cumulative time. Race number 160, this is the second call for race 162 marshalling now. 161 and 162, please go to marshalling now. Uh, in these rounds where the boats are doing cumulative time, you will find that the boats rotate through each of the lanes. So every there's, if there is a lane advantage anywhere out there, which with this course, I don't believe there are any lane advantages, every boat gets to race every in a three-boat field 
they rotate. And the race is underway. This is race 156. University Mix Standard Boat, round two. From this angle, it looks like lane one, which is PTE Pesh, may have a slight lead. Followed by CSDC Liquid Assets. They finish their start. They're about 100 meters. They're settling into the body of the rate. You race. You can see that CSDC Liquid Assets has brought their rate down, as has Cal, but Pesh is still keeping a fairly high stroke rate for a 500 meter race. When they bring their rate down, doesn't it slow their boat down? Well, your, your highest speed in the race is right when you transition from the start into the body of the race. What you're trying to do is keep the, that boat speed as close to constant as possible. You don't want a big letdown when you transition into the body of the, uh, your stroke rate for the body of the race. Now that we've got a different view, it is lane three, Cal Dragon Boat out front with liquid assets and Pesh neck and neck. And uh, look at Pesh, they're missing two paddlers and yet still in first unofficially here from this view. And in a small boat, small boat, that's tough to go down that many paddlers. Uh, this is uh, a standard. standard boat. I'm sorry, I'm, look <laughs> you're, I'm, I'm saying small boat and I'm going, there's too many people there and I'm looking at the wrong sheet of paper. I apologize. All right, coming to the finish line, Mark. It, with about 50 meters to go, it is Liquid Assets followed by Pesh, followed by Cal Dragon Boat, but Pesh is making a move. Will they run out of, they ran out of real estate. It was CDC Liquid Assets, PTE Pesh, followed by Cal Dragon Boat by my call. Drummer on boat number two is just cheering the team on and look at them congratulate each other on that race. That was race number 156, University Mix, round number two. Unofficial results, CSDC Liquid Assets, 204.155, PTE Pesh, 204.471, and Cal Dragon Boat, 206.137. We have so many pieces of paper, it is easy to look at the wrong one. Oh, is that the excuse you're using today? That's, I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> All right, sounds good, Mark. So we're seeing the top teams pulling a sub two. The university group seems to be pulling around the two, two minute mark. So it gives you a good idea when we talk about the top premier teams versus the university teams. We are now going to be calling race number 156. Uh, but before I do that, 159, 159, CYP and Storm and Dragon Zone. Please go to Marshalling now. CYPN and Dragon Zone Paddling Club. Your race 159, want it at Marshalling. We are calling now race number 157 in 157. They're on the line. This is a six vote heat. In lane number one, just coming into your shot, is Chicago Blades. In lane number two, 3R Dragon. In lane number three, from Nova Scotia, Beast Boat. In lane number four, Tampa River. In lane number five, from the Philippines, Pads Dragon Boat. Look forward to that discussion with Mary Beth. Coming your way at 1.30 here locally. And in lane number six, Dubai Paddle Club. From this great shot, you can see the Chicago Blades coming into the boot. This is the small boat, Premier Mix, Repisage 1. Uh, Carrie, I believe that is the German beast boat, not the uh, beasts from uh, Canada. Thanks for the correction. Uh, we've got two beast boats. One is Nova Scotia from Dartmouth. The other one is from Germany. I made the wrong call. That is the beast boat from Germany. And there they go, off the start line. It looks like a clean race. And off the start line, looks like boat number two is in the lead with three R Dragons, but this is a 500 meter race. Beast boat number three, and in number four, it is Tampa River. This is a 4-3-2 off the line, and let's see what happens. 
four, three, two, but four is starting to pull away from the pack. Both two is starting to trail a little bit. That is three R Dragon. Great start with three R, but four and three are now trying to take the lead. That is Beast Boat and Tampa River. Tampa River in three, Beast Boat in, oh, Beast Boat in three, Tampa River in four. Coming to the first 150 meter mark, it is going to be three and four fighting out for first, fight, fighting for second or fighting for third, that is. We got three R Dragon and pads. In the outside lanes, we've got lane number one, Chicago Blades, and on the outside, on the top of your screen, is Dubai Paddle Club. We're now hitting the 250 meter mark. It is still boat three and four fighting it out. Boat three is Beast Boat in first. In second, it is Tampa River. It is three, four, two, followed by boat number one and four, five. And in last position, it is Dubai Paddle Club. Don't count them out. They've got speed on the finish. Let's see what happens. Can they catch it? Last 200 meters, we are still with boat number three in the lead. That is Beast Boat from Germany, followed by boat number four, Tampa River. After that, we have a fight for third position, boat number four, Pads, fighting with the three R Dragon, Trois River. Coming to the last 100 meters, it's between three and four for sure. It is Beast Boat, Tampa River. Tampa River holding their own, but look at this. Their rate is slightly climbing, and they're trying to catch the Beast Boat in boat number three. It is Beast Boat and Tampa, but look at boat number two. They just woke it up, three R Dragons. Three R just walking it up back. Do they have enough room? It is 4-3-2 coming to the finish line. It's going to be a tight race between 3 and 4. It is still the Beast Boat coming out, but look at all Tampa. Uh, that was a very, very tight finish. I'm, I'm going to wait for the unofficial results. It was a 4-3-2-1-5-6 in that order, but let's see, we ha let's see what happens between Beast Boat and Tampa on the finish line, followed by 2-5-2-1-6. I would agree with that call, but I'm not going to bet. <laughs> oh, oh, we see hands up. Okay, it was Beast Boat, 219.336, Tampa River, 219.42. That's nine hundredths of a second difference. 3R Dragons, 220.596. Chicago Blades, 223.226. Pads, 224.263. And Dubai Paddle Club, 227.978. Very, very tight. Nine hundredths of a second between first and second. Race number 160 needs 22 Dragons and Pickering, LA County. Race 160, 22 Dragons A, Pickering, and LA County to the marshalling now. ASAP. Race 160. With 161, 162, and 163, please go to marshalling now. Are you ready to have fun in the 941? Take advantage of all the local deals that Sarasota County is offering. There is so much to do that you and the family can enjoy. Whether it's feeding flamingos, admiring art, becoming a foodie at one of your favorite restaurants, or having a happy hour downtown with friends, you can never run out of things to do and at a fantastic price. Now it's your turn to have fun in the 941. Go to funinthe941.com to see all offers. Welcome to the Bradenton area, where the easy pace of island life comes naturally in this coastal playground with endless white sand beaches, stunning natural preserves, relaxing vibes all around, and it's a seafood lover's paradise. Stay a while to explore downtown Bradenton with top-rated attractions and a friendly community set along the Bradenton Riverwalk. Come lose yourself in the sun-drenched Gulf Coast of Florida and change your reality in the Bradenton area. Learn more at BradentonGulfIslands.com.
And a good morning to everyone online. The time is now 9.56 a.m. here in Sarasota, Florida. We're still seeing a big turnout of viewers online, and we thank you for being here. Heidi Ma, great to hear from you again. It looks like you're up. Is it 158 a small boat race? Did the schedule change? 158 is a premier mixed standard boat race. So just to confirm, it has not changed. 158 is premier mixed standard boat. Let's go catch 22, our neighbors, Flushing Marina. We're rooting for you. Tight race, awesome job, Tampa. That's from Kim. Event 157, boat two, go, go, go. Three R Dragons, we're proud of you from Canada. Etois, 500 meter, beautiful race. We'll see you in Ban Van Oils of European Championship. I uh, got some European fans online now. That's great to see that. Tammy Lin Wong, rising tide, stay calm, paddle as one. So yes, keep up these comments. We love to read about them. Uh, we know we have beef cake out here from LA cheering on all the California teams. Uh, Mei Chen, thank you very much. Amanda, go catch 22 in New York City. I, miss, I bet you are voting for Matthew. We will have some additional uh, guests coming up to the announcing booth to say hi to the fans out there and those who are here at Sarasota, Florida. My name is Kerry. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I want to say thank you to the USDBF and the IDBF for inviting me up here, or in this case, down here, to assist with the races. I'm having a fabulous time meeting old friends and also meeting a lot of new friends. Our friend Bob Minna, who was up here for the last couple of days, has kind of checked out. He's not feeling as well, so he's staying in the room just for precautions. And our understanding is he'll come back hopefully tomorrow. To Lisa, another day of spectacular athleticism. Good luck to all the teams, especially my hubby, Dragon Beast of Nova Scotia. Go Bruce! So thank you, Lisa. We will make sure that uh, Bruce is having a good time and uh, we will make sure he's not drinking. Heidi Ma again. Mm, looks like the on-race schedule is wrong. I am not sure what online schedule you're looking at, but if you look at the idbfchamps.org forward slash 2022SAR, that should be the race uh, results that or race schedule that you should be looking at. I'll just double check, Heidi, if we're seeing the same thing. So I'm just going to refresh my screen and uh, see if we're seeing the same thing. Ferry is saying, uh, good, go Saklau, paddle like you stole it. Um, we don't steal dragon boats here. It is illegal in the United States, but if that's the mental image you want, sure, S paddle like you stole it. Uh, Edward, you can find the schedule on idbfchamps.org. That's idbfchamps.org forward slash two zero two two s a r okay we are race number 158 premier mix standard boat in this race we have catch 22 in lane 2 pdba in lane 3 and rising tide in lane 4 boats are in the boots Rising Tide doing a few draw strokes to get centered. And now Catch-22 is getting centered. And the boots are down. Race 158 is underway. This is the Premier Mix Standard Boat Repishaz 1. And it looks like on the start it is Rising Tide in lane 4 with a very slight lead. But these boats are flying. This is an amazing race. If you look at the 
bow wave off of those boats. So the, that bow wave is generated by the downward pressure on the stroke. Every stroke on that downward pressure causes that surge in that bow wave. They, these are very, very powerful boats. We're at about 100 meters into the race. Looks like PDBA is out in front. When Rising Tide is right there with them. PDBA might have a dragon head at this point at about the 250 meter point. Let's uh, confuse Bob online here because he's watching this race really intensely. How's it going, Bob? You want to type some messages and uh, we'll distract you with this race? We're at the 200 meter point. Still looks like PDBA in the lead. But Rising Tide is giving them a fight. This is fierce competition. Oh, Philadelphia is here to make a statement for sure. And you can see Bob here just screaming from the TV. Bob, don't throw anything at the TV <laughs> screen. <laughs> oh, Bob, you got to see this. This race, they're at, making a statement. At about 75 meters, it is still neck and neck. We've got two East Coast, one West Coast. And coming to the finish line, Mark, what does it look like? To me, it looks like it's going to be, it's going to be tight. I believe PDBA got it, but that's close. That uh, is really close. I'm going to have to call Rising Tide with beat cake on this one. On that finish line, Rising Tide took the last stroke and it looked like they crossed with a whisker, followed by Philadelphia and then the third catch 22. But let's see the results. Ah. Philadelphia in a time of 159.38, rising tide in 159.467, and catch 22 in 204.27. That's why I owe you dinner. <laughs> I was standing a little bit further to the right and a little bit better angle on the finish line. All right, here's the deal. When you come to Vancouver, Canada, dinner's on me with your wife, okay? I'll take you up on that. Deal. So Philadelphia, Bob, is your team. They take it with a time of 159.3. But literally, oh, I can't even tell you how close that was. USA Rising Tide in second and New York with our Matthew Al helming that boat. So very close race indeed. And thank you very much. I now owe dinner to someone. <laughs> so Andy, uh, big shout out to the, his two clubs, B1 and 22D. B1 is a premier team in the Boston area led by Lily Ting. Now that name sounds familiar. She's been all over our YouTube channel and making comments the last couple of days. So Lily Ting, this is shout out from Andy. I think he wants seat one in the next race with your team. It was started in 2013 with 22D DNA. B1 will definitely join you guys in Ravina 2024. So, Andy, we look forward to seeing you. We'll have a drink in Ravina. They've got great wine. From Tina, go Sacklaw Hundreds. Faye, go CYP and Storm from Boston. Uh, Edward, where do I find a schedule? Uh, I think you, I did mention it earlier, but if you haven't found it, again, the schedule is on H. TTPS colon forward slash forward slash IDBFchamps.org forward slash 2022SAR. Okay, this next race is Repassage number two, Premier Mixed Standard Boats. This is a call for marshalling, race 161. Second call for Necla Dragon, Pickering, CSDC. H2O Montreal and 22 Dragons. Second call, race 161 to Marshalling. In race 162 and 163, please go to Marshalling now. And obviously 164 and 165, get yourself ready. We will be calling you to Marshalling as soon as possible. Remember, we're trying to get ahead of the races so that we can avoid the next little storm coming our way in Sarasota, Florida. We're doing a good job on schedule. The next race, 159, is supposed to be underway at 10. It is now 10.06. So having run the number of races that we have had already today, we've run 
not quite 20 races yet. We're about 18 races into the day to be within six minutes. They're doing a good job of keeping things moving down there. They are, but they're really putting a strain on the team up here because <laughs> uh, our head is on a swivel looking around, getting calls for marshalling. But I have to admit, the IDBF officials with the USDBF have done an amazing job here. We've got a good morning from sunny Vancouver, B.C., rooting for a team back east, the Pickering in race number 163, M Hart. Thank you very much for supporting the fellow local teams in Canada. Uh, Jay, uh, big shout out to Lily. Lily, you got a huge fan base that's online. Mitch San, uh, great races, PAD and uh, DPC. Finish line buoy moved. Uh, Beefcake, the finish line is your excuse. <laughs> finish line is just a marker. Our finish line is a camera and it looks across the water and you will see the word finish. That does not move. So the buoys do move, but they're not the official finish line itself. But I know, Mitch, uh, sorry, Beefcake, you're trying every excuse to let Rising Tide win that race. Uh, we have Nath, uh, go 22 Dragons. Uh, Avid Paddler, Fear the Whisker. Yeah, these races are coming down to whiskers now, and it's it's quite uh, interesting to see what happens. Yang Yu Yi, go Storm. Let us know where you're from online. I'd like to see who the furthest person is online in relation to Sarasota, Florida. Uh, be interesting to see where you guys are all from. Come on, Seklau. How do you say this word there, Mark? I can't pronounce that. It is. Come on, Seklau. Is that Loughborough? L I'd pronounce it Lowborough. Lowborough? Yeah, that's how I'd pronounce it, Lowborough. My apologies. Is watching and cheering you on. Bring the fight, you guys. Pedal like you mean it, or in another word, pedal like you stole it. Okay, we are, we are race 159, Premier Mixed, Standard Boat. Wow, Beth is giving a shout out to the whole team on Seklau. Shout out to Addie, Saska, Susie, Ella, and Todd from Seklau. Yeah, the 159 Premier Mixed, Repassage 2, Lane 2, we've got CYPN Storm, Lane 3, 22 Dragons, Lane 4, Dragon Zone, Lane 5, Seklau. Storm is Boston Teamsters. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but. I read it, <laughs> Seclo Hundreds from Great Britain. It's pronounced Luffbra. We got somebody from Calgary. Welcome, Calgary. Those who don't know where Calgary is, that is uh, Canada. Uh, they're in the prairies, well, close to the prairies. They're just off the Rocky Mountains. Uh, they get some crazy weather there. I used to live there. <laughs> I used to wear four pieces of clothing Rain wear, summer wear, <laughs> it was a crazy time of my life. Just looked up Sarasota's antipod, other side of the world, and it's in the Indian Ocean close to Australia. Hello, Rain. Welcome to the online session. Good morning. Welcome to live streaming. This is Nathan's Benderson's Park. Uh, they're also monitoring this chat and giving you guys an update. We'll have our Nathan Benderson's Park give us a weather update as well. Um, if we can find out what the temperature is in Fahrenheit and Celsius, that will be great to see that. Storm from Boston. We got somebody here, Heidi Ma from Kitchener, Ontario. Your favorite town, Milton Keynes. That is our friend Bob Minna who loves saying the name, Milton Keynes. Hi, watching from Abu Dhabi, supporting Dragon Club Bruno. That is Radam Lakomi, if I pronounce that correctly. We need race number 161, H20, to the marshalling now. That is race 161, H20, ASAP. Okay, the weather report from Nathan Benderson. It's 85 degrees Fahrenheit right now on the way to 92 Fahrenheit. Feels like right now is 94, humidity is 92%, uh, 10 miles of visibility, and the wind is 9 miles an hour from the east, which is what's 
creating a few issues getting the boats lined up in the boots. And if you don't know what 92 degrees humidity feels like, come on down. I actually walked out and I feel sticky already. Okay, the boats are easing into the boots for race 159, Premier Mixed, Repassage 2. Ah, I got M. Hart from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Greatest place to live. Great weather. We got great mountains. We got Grouse Mountain, Whistler, Seymour, Cypress. If you ever come to Vancouver and want to check us out, come on down. I'd love to host you. And race 159 is underway. Looked like 22 Dagons got a heck of a jump on that start. They are off very quickly. But oh, look at Dragon that. Zone is right there with them. It's right now, it's lanes three and four battling it out. And 22 is just maybe got a dragon head on Dragon Zone. That water is just flying off both boats. They're really gunning for each other. They're about not quite 100 meters in. They should be settling into the body of the race. You can see 22 Dragons settle now. Uh, Dragon Zone's keeping the rate up a little bit. 22 Dragons has brought it down, settled into a slightly slower rate for the body of the race. And you can see that CYPN has done the same, but uh, Dragon Zone is still keeping that rate up. Dragon Zone was struggling yesterday in the 200 meter mark and they didn't podium at all on that one. So today they're coming out with a statement, we are strong, we are tough, we're going to try to take everyone down as we can. But obviously 22 Dragons not going to let them do this. We're at about the 200 meter mark, it is still 22 Dragons with uh, Dragon Zone trying to make up that gap. And then we have uh, CYPN and Seclo. So Dragon Zone here out of Vancouver wearing the, some of them are wearing a blue cap. And if you look carefully, you'll see the word G2G. That is go to Greg, one of our race um, suppliers in Vancouver. And they're being sponsored partially by that company, G2G. With about 30 meters to go, it is still 22 Dragons followed by Dragon Zone. And it CYPN and it is 22 Dragons and Dragon Zone, CYPN coming across in third, followed by Seclo. <laughs> Look at Wendy here in boat number three, 22 Dragons. Beat that drum and really command good control of that race for the team. We have a red flag from the official in boat seven, officials boat seven, and a white flag from the official in officials boat one. We'll have to see what this is all about. Again, remember, like we spoke yesterday, the officials on the water will raise a red flag if there's any issues. And if there's any issues, it is then brought to the committee for review. Okay, the unofficial results, uh, 22 Dragons, 158.139. Dragon Zone, 159.807. CYPN Storm in 205.354. Seclo 100, 208.677. This is a repassage with the winner going straight, uh, going to the grand final, plus the second fastest boat going to the grand final. We have some breaking news here from Sarasota, Florida. The breaking news is Bob Mina is coming back to the tower. He is being cleared by Bob McNamara, and he will be here, and he will be safe. So, Bob, great to hear this. Uh, I know you're feeling better. You ate some breakfast outside. His first food in 48 hours and sleeping 18 hours yesterday. And he'll be back tomorrow. And it sounds like he'll be racing for Senior B Open and Premier Open. He can't wait. And uh, this being out of the game has been torture for him. Bob, we welcome you back. And uh, big hearts out to you and your team. And I know you guys will do really well. Calling race 162, Heat, NBP, Paddling, Great Lakes to the Marshalling ASAP. This is race 162, Heat, NBP, Paddling, and Great Lakes to the Marshalling area now. If we can call 163 and 164, 163, 164 to Marshalling.
This is race 160, U18 small boat. In lane number one, LA County DBC. Lane number two, 22 Dragons. Lane number three, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. Lane four, 22 Dragons. This is a four boat, round three, U18 small boat. Starter has given their calls. And there they go. From this viewpoint, it is LA County off, followed by Pickering. And in third is 22 Dragons A, and fourth, 22 Dragons B. This is a clean start, and we are looking at LA County DBC in lane number one. Off the first 50 meters is LA DBC first, in second it is Pickering. In third, 22 Dragons B and followed by 22 Dragons A. As you can see from this shot, lane number one there in the white with the black shoulders, that is LA County. Off to a clean start with at least a three bench head start. In second place, it is Pickering Dragon Boat Club, and they seem to be tracking a little bit left of their lane, but still open water. In third place, in lane number four, it is 22 Dragons B. And in fourth place, unofficially at this point, is 22 Dragons A. Coming to the 200 meter mark, it's still a LA County with a comfortable lead, and it looks like they're just focusing on their race plan. A nice rotation, and they're catching on every single stroke with good timing. As you can see, boat number three is having a little difficult time tracking their center of lane. They've gone to the left of their lane, Officials will be looking for any infractions that may be caused by that, but it looks like boat number three is having a tough time tracking down the center of their lane. Going to the 250 meter mark, we're coming to the end of this race. This is the U18 small boat race. What a great shot from this front view. It is LA County still in first. In second, it is boat number three. That is Pickering Dragon Boat Club followed by the 222 Dragon teams in two and four. Coming to the last 75 meters, LA County still looking very controlled. They don't seem to be in any panic. Drummers really got a slow rate and they know that they're in the lead and they're just making sure that they don't lose control and they come to the finish in control and in style. And the rate comes up finally. Last 50 meters, it is going to be LA County coming in first. In second, it will be Pickering in lane number three. The drummer is laying back in his seat, feeling very comfortable. Followed by lane number two, 22 Dragons A. And in fourth position, lane number four, 22 Dragons B. Official, unofficial results for U18, US LA County with a time of 2.21. In second, unofficially, Pickering Dragon Boat, 227. And three, 22 Dragons, a time of 232. And in fourth, 22 Dragons B with a time of 233.84. That was the U18 small boat round number three, race number 160. We are now going to race 161, Senior B, Standard Boat, in a little bit here. Race 163, one, we need CSDC, Cal Dragons, and Pesh now. Again, we need 163, CSDC, Cal Dragons, and Pesh now. With race 164 and 165, please go to marshalling now. 164 and 165. The IDBF book, winners and com comment, uh, wi winners, I'm trying to read these words off this uh, cheat sheet of mine, I apologize. Winners and commendations are photogra photographic competition from 2022. The IDF book is an amazing book to give as a gift and also a great gift to talk about the history of dragon boating. It's 30 years of wonderful, exciting history about the races, 
about the championships, about clubs, and there's also interviews with some amazing IDBF officials from Angelina Ong to Weiwei, Comedy Jan, Jane, uh, Jason Chen, Robert Bob McNamara, Ute. Please take a look at the book. You can find one here and race administration. Show your friends and what on earth is Dragon Boat about. It captures the excitement, the joy, and love of our sport. Written by Mike Thomas, our president, Julie Doyle, vice president, Belinda Chung, chair of the IDBF Marketing and Media, which all of them have decades of paddling experience and are dedicated to the sport. Please go take a look at a copy of the book in Race Admin. Take one home to your club and share the excitement of Dragon Boat Racing. And I know we're only at 30 years, but we have more years to come. And the more we grow the sport as a family, and to our friends, our community, we will get stronger. Race 164, 165 to marshalling now. 164 to 165 to marshalling. Those online who are interested in buying this book, the modern day Dragon Boat Racing is celebrating 30 years. Please let us know who you are. We'll send you an email and a link to where you can purchase the book online. Um, Beefcake, please adjust the volume up. Are you asking me to turn up my volume on my speaker? Because it sounds like I'm pretty loud on my side, but I don't know what it sounds like on your side. So if it's yes, let me know, and I'll ask our production team to turn up our volume. From Barrie, Ontario, watching our niece Emily. CYPN Storm, Boston Race. Thanks for broadcasting, folks. You're very welcome. Again, this year we're trying to connect the uh, internet, uh, YouTube, to the paddlers here in Sarasota, Florida. We're trying to make uh, in this connection between the outside and to the racers here in Sarasota, Florida, connecting comments, putting shout outs, uh, celebrating different clubs from around the world, whatever uh, you guys feel, let us know. We'd love to share. To Rob Magnus in Vancouver, he's disappointed the Dragon Zone did not make the 500 mixed final. I think a few of us uh, have been watching from the Vancouver side. Yeah, we're disappointed, but I think they've done themselves very proud to making it here. Uh, the teams here are very good and our hats off to those teams that have made the 500 mixed final for sure. Um, Fanny says the volume is okay here on live stream, so that means that Beefcake, it's you and your computer. I think it's time to upgrade to a MacBook. Com Kami, let's go Rising Tide. Let's go. You can do it. Go Philly, go. Avo, production audio is set lower than yesterday. Uh, I'll talk to production and see if there's been some changes on the production side. Uh, but Avo, you might need to buy a new computer like Beefcake. Watching all the way from the Philippines, go pads. Uh, Bay, just rem reminder, at 1.30, we'll be bringing up Mary Beth, and she'll be talking in Tagala to the community and let you go. Bob, I thought you're feeling sick, Bob. You're still cheering on Philly. I don't think you're that sick if you're still cheering them on from your hotel room. Philly U2s, Utes, it's a Philly thing. To my daughter, Kim and team, go H2O. You can do this. Thanks, Helen. Scott Murray, president of the Dragon Boat Canada. Excellent SBM 500 final race coming up here. Avil, I do need a new computer. You know what, Avil, Beefcake, you should introduce yourself to each other and buy each other a new computer for Christmas. That will be the best gift for each other. Nicole, go, go, pads. Avil, like every three months. Uh, Avil, you have expensive taste. Bob is feeling better, and he's uh, up and cheering on the teams. Here comes race number 161. 161, Senior B, 
Mixed Grand Final. In lane number one to the right of your screen is Nickel Dragon. Lane number two, Pickering. Lane number three from Canada, CSDC. Lane number four, Bob's team, Philadelphia. In lane number five, H2O. And on the outside lane in lane six, 22 Dragons. This is going to be a tough race for the Senior B Mix Grand Final. And there they go. Look at this shot. This is a beautiful view of a start. And I can't even tell who's in first, but it looks like from this angle, Pickering is off the line first in boat number two. And they are fighting for this final. There's only going to be three winners, first, second, and third. Everyone else, they're going to have a tough pill to swallow. And boat number one, Next Dragons, pulls to the left of the lane. They must find their center of the lane as soon as they can. It is still going to be boat number two in the lead, followed by Philadelphia and boat number four. Boat four is still making their move. It's going to be four and two, Pickering and Philadelphia. This is going to be a four to even a five boat finish. Let's see what happens. Coming to the 200 meter mark, it is Philadelphia now making their move. For Philadelphia is now in the lead, followed by boat number three, CSDC, and then Pickering. The shift has happened. It is Philadelphia in first, followed by CSDC, and then Pickering. It is four, three, two, but look at boat number one. They are off their line. They are in the left of their lane in number one. They are getting called here. It's going to be an interesting call for the race officials for sure. But boat number four still in the lead is Philadelphia, followed by CSDC and then Pickering. Pickering and Necro Dragon in lane number one. One and two are fighting it out, but look at number four, Philadelphia. Bob, you must be happy. Coming to the last 100 meter mark, it is still going to be Philadelphia in the lead. In second, it will be boat number three, Pickering, followed by a fight between one, which is Neca Dragon. Neca Dragon in third at this time unofficially. Coming to the finish line, it will be boat number four, Philadelphia, followed by boat number three, Pickering. And in the finish, it will be boat number one, Neca Dragon. That was a four, three, one. What an exciting race. Bob, are you happy to see that result? Now, Bob is just typing his message, and I'll read it to you shortly. Oh, that was exciting. Look at both three. They're just raising their hand. And in unofficial results, it is going to be USA Philadelphia with a time of 2.03. Canada, CSDC, 2.04.59. And on the outside, German Neckendragen, 2.05.30. In fourth, H2O, 2.06.01. Pickering, Canada, time of 206.17 and 622 Dragons. I do apologize. I'm calling Pickering and I made the wrong call. It was actually CSDC in second on that race. So I apologize. Uh, it was Philadelphia, CSD, and Necla Dragon. And there's Bob online. Yay! Way to go, PDBA. So stoked for his crew. Miss son, he is for sure. So, Jennifer, congratulations to CSDC with the unofficial results coming in second. That was a great, great race. And that was the Senior B Mixed Grand Final. Uh, Pickering was not third. Uh, Pickering had come in fifth. I was calling the wrong name, so my apologies. Seven caffeine. Yeah, Pickering was actually in. I think from the race results, in the fifth position. All right, we are now going to our next set of races. We need a one six four. Tampa River and three R Dragons race one six four Tampa River and three Dragons to Marshalling. We're also calling one six five and one six six to Marshalling now. 
165166 to marshalling now. We are now looking at 162 on the race course. Range 162 is Senior B Mix Small Boat. This is round number three, Senior B Mix Small Boat. In lane number one, making their final adjustments into the gates, this is a four boat heat. Lane number one, heat. Lane number two, Gorging Dragons. Lane number three, NBP Paddling. And five, Great Lake Paddlers from Ontario. Again, this is Senior B Mix, small boat, race number 162, coming your way from Sarasota, Florida. Philadelphia Rocks, I agree. They were a strong team, and it was hard for any team to catch them and beat them off that line. Lou, come on, PDBA, kill it. Glad to hear you'll be back, Bob. Uh, Bob, you now have five fans who love you. Hello from the South Breeze Tent. Thanks, Taylor. I hope you guys are watching this online and enjoying the races for sure. We have four boats on the water, and they're all getting into position at this time. As you can hear, there's only one announcer now. All my announcers have gone down to paddle, or they're hiding in a hotel. So good luck to Mark Kane, US, US, USDBF president. And also, um, a good luck to Matthew Al with the Catch-22. One six two. Teams are being asked to come into their lanes. Lane 1 to the right of your screen is Heat. Lane 2 from Canada, Gorging Dragons. Lane number 3, NP Paddling. There'll be a split there in lane four. That was Necro Dragon from Germany, but they are scratched from this race. And lane number five, just on their own, on the outside, will be the Great Lake Paddlers. We have Barbara. Let's go NBP Paddling. Johnny, good luck in the finals, Gorging Dragon. So you have some fans in Vancouver and on the island watching this race. Teams are asked to come into the grid here. Final adjustments. The wind is still kind of up right now, heading from east to west. It's blowing across from lanes one through five. You can see the ripples in the water. All teams have come into the gate except for boat one. Boat one is being pushed from right to left, as you can see. And they're just trying to get that nose into the basket. The helm is just trying to feather light it. And the head is in. On a slight angle, it looks good. Starter ha oh, boat number five has raised their hand. The helm is not in the boot and um, Helm has raised their hands to get reset. Great. Boat 5 is readjusted and in the boot now. Starter has the call sequence. Paddles are on the water. And there they go. This is 162, Senior B mixed off the line. This is the round three of the Senior B small boat. And off the line, it is NB paddling with the Gorging Dragons. This is going to be a fight between two and three by the looks of it. Gorging in first with NB paddling. NB paddling now taking a small little lead there. It is NB paddling in the blue shirts, followed by the Gorging Dragons from Canada. And on the outsides, we have in third place, unofficially, the Heat. And in fourth, the Great Lake Paddlers. Coming off the first 150 meters, it is still NBP Pally holding off the Gorging Dragons. Gorging Dragons trying to make their move. And now Gorging Dragon looks like they've just snuck ahead a little bit. It is Gorging Dragons over NB Paddling. The Heat in third, unofficially. Heat is not out of it. They're only about a boat, 
a bench and a half away. It is going to be NP Paddling, followed by Gorge, and then the Heat. And in fourth, unofficially, it's Great Lake Paddlers. Coming to the 200 meter off the line, it is still going to be a fight between Gorging and NP Paddling. NP Paddling has made their move. They are now surged ahead of Gorging Dragons. It is MVP, followed by Gorging and the Heat. And on the outside, it's still the Great Lakes. Coming to the halfway mark, it is still NBP followed by Gorging and the Heat. Uh, and Great Lake Paddlers are still in this by about a half a boat length. It looks like they're coming down to the finish line. This is a 200 meter race now. This will be NB Paddling fighting off Gorging Dragons from Canada. In third, the Heat, but the Heat is not out of it. Heat has upped their rate a little bit. It is now Heat involved with Gorging Dragons. Everybody wants to fight with Gorging for some reason. Coming to the finish line, 100 meters. It is going to be NPP with Gorging and the Heat coming for a fight for first. In fourth position unofficially, it is Great Lake Paddlers. Coming to the finish line, last 50 meters, Gorging, NBP, Heat, Heat in one, Gorging in two, NBP in three, and they're coming to the finish line. Who has it? Who has the last ounce of power? NBP in first, Gorging in second, Heat in third, and it's going to be NBP paddling in first, in second, Gorging, in third, the Heat, and finally, the Great Lakes unofficially that is senior b mixed 162 in the small boat great race everyone next race we're calling is 163 we need race 165 166 and 167 to marshalling 165 166 and 167 the final results unofficially in lane number Lane number three, finishing first, NB paddling with a time of 221.81. In second, unofficially, Canada Gorging Dragons with a time of 221.36. In third, USA Heat, 223.7. In fourth, Great Lake Paddlers with a time of 224.66. Congratulations on Senior B Mixed Round 3. We are now going to race number 163, University Mixed Standard Boat. We're still seeing a lot of online chats here. Uh, Mike, congratulations. The Great Lake Paddlers did really well. Barbara, let's go NP Paddling. Senior B Mixed. Way to go, Gorging Dragons for LC. Go Heat. Amarin, thank you very much for your comments again. Again, if you want us to promote your club, promote your races, put them online. I'll, I'll pass a message out to everyone. If you have links to your race as well, put them on the chat room. I think people would love to know where they can race next for sure. Race 165, 22 Dragons in True North. Please be going to marshalling. Please call one uh, race 167. 168. So we're calling race 166, 167, and 168 to marshalling, please. 166, 167, and one race 168 to marshalling. We're now looking on the water. This is race 163, University Mixed. Standard boat. And there they off is lane number one, CSD liquid assets, lane number two, Cal, and three, Pesh. This is a three boat drag race. And off the line, they're both, or actually all three of them, are just gunning for each other. And from this angle, it looks like all the boats have their tail pushing to the left and their nose pointing to the right. Uh, very awkward view. But trust me, they are going in a straight line. As they come down the race course, they start to fan out. It is CSDC, CSDC in first. In second, it is Pesh from Hungary. And in third, it's Cal. 
Cal is just being sandwiched by these two teams on the outside, and they're getting a lot of wash coming in from both boats. So being in the middle of a pack of three it is no fun unless you can pull away and get away from the uh, V formation that you're seeing on your screen. So in first, it's still Canada, CSDC. In second, it is Pesh. And in third, it's Cal. This is race 163, University Mix. As they pa pass the 250 meter mark, CSD starts to pull away from Cal with a boat length. It is CSDC taking command lead in this race, followed by Pesh and then Cal. Pesh has got basically four to five benches to make up and they're running out of real estate. It is coming down to the wire now. This is the last 100 meters. And CSDC has laid a statement down. We are in control. This is our race. Let's go to the finish line. CSD's coming to the finish with control. And look at Pesh. They realize they just need to make a move. And CSD is going to take this, followed by Pesh with only 18 paddlers. And lane number three, followed by a boat length behind. It is boat number three, Cal. And at the end, CSDC is just happy they made it to the finish line in first. And you can see their helm just giving a fist pump. And they know they did this. And they're so exuberant. These kids have come out here to race in Sarasota, Florida. Hands high fives. And they're now punching the back of each paddler. And both two, they just know they didn't have the race here today, but they uh, did really well. And Pesh on lane number three, they did an awesome job. With a time in first place, 202.821. CSDC in second from Hungary with a time of 204.18. Pesh. And in third, Cal Dragon Boat with a time of 208.28. That was race 163. We are now going to 164. The time here in Sarasota, Florida is 1042. We are running the next race, which is race 164, was scheduled at 1040, and we are only about three minutes behind schedule. So great job to all the officials. Uh, we're doing a great job turning over these races really quickly for you to watch online. We'd like to call race 166, 167, 168, 169, and 172 marshalling now. 166, 167, 168, 169, and 169 to the marshalling area. CSDC Liquid Assets are the uni team I coached. That was Connie. And we miss you, Connie, at World Club Cruise. Uh, she wanted to send the love out to the CSDC team. Thank you, Connie. We hope to see you again soon. This is race number 164, a grand final. This is the premier mix small boat. In lane number one, Tampa River. Lane number two from the Czech, Dragon Boat Bruno. Lane number three from Germany, Necra Dragon. Lane number four from Canada, Gorging Dragons. Lane number five from Germany, Beast Boat. And also from lane number six from Canada, 3R Dragons. One, two, three, Classic, Czech Republic, Brutal, we want the medal. I think that's a statement from your fans watching online. Let's go Tampa River. 
All teams are coming into the start gates. This is race number 164, Premier Mixed Grand Final Small Boat. Lane number one, Tampa River in the blue. Lane number two from Czech, Dragon Boat Bruno. Lane number three from Germany, Nekla Dragon. Lane number four from Canada, Gorging Dragons. Lane number five from Germany, Beast Boats. And on the outside, on the left of the screen, that is 3R Dragons, and they are off. This is the Grand Final Premier Mix. This is a small boat with the power of a standard boat, and they are flying. You can see the official boat trying to keep up with maximum power to these teams. And off the line, it is boat number three, Necker the Dragon, in the lead. In first, it's Necker the Dragon, followed by Gorging Dragons in second. But look at the Dragon Boat Bruno. They are staying with them. It is Necker the Dragon, followed by Gorging. Gorging in second, and Czech is in third. In fourth is Tampa River. But just next to four, it looks like Beast Boat is playing with them as well. This is going to be a tight race coming to the finish line. It is Necla Dragon in first, still with Gorgie Dragons in second. Czech is in third at this time, and in fourth is a fight right now between Tampa and Beast Boats. Coming off to the 200 meter mark, it is still Necla Dragon in first, followed by Gorgie Dragons. Gorgie Dragons need to stay on the pedal to the metal. They are going to start to surge with the Necla Dragons power. It is Necla Dragon in first, followed by Gorging Dragons, and the field starts to spread apart a little bit. It is Necker Dragon still in commanding lead. Gorging Dragons staying with them by a half a boat length, followed by the Czech Dragon, Cla Dragon Boat Bruno coming to the last 100 and 50 meters. It is still Necker Dragon in boat number three in the lead, followed by Gorging Dragons in second. But look at the Czech team. The Czech team is upping the rate in boat number two. They know they got to make their move now or they're going to lose the medal. It is still Necker Dragon in first, followed by, look at the Czech team. They're going to try to fight with the Gorging Dragons. It is still, it is still Necker Dragon in boat number three coming to the finish line. It's going to be a boat two or four. Gorging or Czech? I don't know who's going to take this. Gorging is trying to hold off the Czech team. Coming to the finish line. It is Necker Dragon with the commanding lead. And Gorging Dragons from Canada in second. Followed by the Czech team. What an amazing race. The fans are just holding their heads down here. And they just can't believe it. The Germans are shut out except for first place. The Germans take First, followed by the Canadians, Gorging Dragons, and the Czech in third. And we'll wait for the results, and here they are. Race 164, Premier Mixed, Necker Dragons with a time of 213.68. In second, Gorging Dragons, 215.56. In third from the Czech Republic, Dragon Club Bruno with a time of 216.91. In fourth, uh, the other German team, Beast Boat, with a time of 217.09. In fifth, Tampa River, 218.311. And in sixth, unofficially, Canada, 3R Dragons, with a time of 219.64. What an amazing race of the premier grand final small boat. That was 164 race. We're now bringing you 165. Bob Mina, Bruno just making the podium. What a race. Woo, that was fun. It's hard calling these races because my excitement level goes up very quickly watching these races come through. And I love when races are that tight because it's anybody's race. And the ones who win are the teams that are most committed to their race plan. It's not about power. It's the most commitment to your blade and the technique your coaches have taught you. And the team that wins is the team that best commits to the race plan. So, no, this is great to see this. We're now going to race number 165. This is going to be another grand final, Premier Mixed Standard Boat. There are six teams in this race, and it's going to be another exciting race for sure coming to you from Sarasota, Florida. 
there's going to be three USA teams against three Canadian teams. In lane number one, race 165, Philadelphia. Lane number two, South Breeze. Lane number three, TNPC. Lane number four, NDRC. Lane five, 22 Dragons. Lane six, Rising Tide. Like I did yesterday, if you want to go online, tell me who the first three teams are in first, second, and third. If you write down three, four, two, for example, and you win that at the end, if you email me at Carrie Chow, C H O W, at dragonboatbc.ca, I will send you a prize. So go ahead, start making your calls on who will win this race. Again, I'll read out the lane numbers for each boat. Philadelphia in one, South Breeze in two, TNPC in three, NDRC in four, 22 Dragons on five, Rising Tide on six. So go ahead, give me your predictions. First three teams in order, first, second, and third. If you say 4-4-4, four, 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 you will not win. Email me with your name and uh, I will send you a gift when I get home. Uh, let's see what happens here. So I got Michaela, 432. She's saying NDRC, TNPC, and South Breeze. Do we have any more guesses here? Some people are just saying TNPC or Hammerheads. Um, oh, small correction, Michaela, 435. She's saying NDRC. TNPC, and then 22. We got a 543. 5 is 22, NDRC, and then TNPC. 213. Uh, South Breeze, Philadelphia, followed by TNPC. All right, you guys got a few minutes to make your guesses. Once the race starts, you cannot change your answers. Owen at Ken has it as 342. TNPC, NDRC, and South Breeze. Johnny, go, Gorging Dragons, go. Beatrix, 342. That's TNPC, NDRC, and South Breeze. We're just a few minutes away. Start putting in your guesses. Again, email me at carriechow at dragonboatbc.ca, and I will promise when I get home, I will be sending you guys a gift. Oh, we got a 135. That's a very different uh, prediction. Uh, 135 is Philadelphia first, TNP second, and then 22 Dragons. Hey, Dima, uh, 342, TNPC, NDRC, and then South Breeze. This is the Premier Mixed Standard Boat Grand Final. Race 167. Gorging Dragons and Dragon Heart Vermont. 167, Gorging Dragons and Dragon Heart Vermont. To the marshalling now. All six boats are on the line. 613, Mirtha. 613 is Rising Tide, Philadelphia, and then TNPC. That's a very different uh, prediction for sure. 345, that's TNPC, NDRC, and 22 Dragons. I can tell the Canadians when they're online because they only pick the Canadian teams to win. All right, here we go. Keep your eyes on this race, everyone. This is going to be an exciting race as well. Grand Final, Premier Mix, Standard Boat. No one's going to give space to each other. Everyone's going to gun for that finish line together. Whoever comes off that start, again, gets the lead, commands the middle of the race course, and finishes with explosion. We'll take this rate. Whoever has the best commitment to their race plan is going to take this race for sure. I'm excited here in Sarasota, Florida, and here we go. Starter has given her last calls. All heads in the basket.
Philadelphia on your right, South Breeze in two, TMPC in three, NDRC in four, 22 Dragons in five, and six on the left side is Rising Tide, and there they go. As predicted, this is going to be a dogfight. And look at number three go off at TNPC. NDRC also fighting as hard as number three. It is 4-3 right now. It is TNPC and NDRC going at it. And South Breeze is still in there, but they're starting to lose ground off the start line. It is NDRC, TNPC, followed by 22. Two dragons. It is going to be three, four, five. Three, four, five as they settle off the start line. This is where they start to really accelerate their rotation, their catch. And it's still going to be three, four, five with NDRC, TMPC, and 22 dragons. TMPC still in the lead in boat number three. And South Breeze now creeping into position three. It is TNPC followed by NDRC and South Breeze. It is three, four, two, three, four, two. It looks like 22 Dragons falling off, off the start. It looks like 22 Dragons losing some ground to South Breeze. It is now TNPC followed by NDRC and South Breeze. Coming to the last 200 meters, it is still going to be TNPC in the lead, followed by NDRC and South Breeze. It is 3-4-2 coming to the finish line. Last 75 meters, let's see what happens here. It is still boat number three, TNPC, followed by boat number four, but South Breeze has made their move. It is now South Breeze in second by the looks of it from here. TNPC, followed by South Breeze and NDRC coming to the finish line. It looks like it's going to be three, four, two. Let's see what happens. It's going to be... TNPC in boat number three, followed by NDRC in four, and South Breeze in number two. The crowd is just like, oh my, what happened there? 22 Dragons off the start line, looked like they were in third, but South Breeze in lane number two pulls off from the right side, and they capture third place unofficially. In race 165, Premier Mix, Unofficially right now, it's True North Paddling Club with a time of 154.76. NDRC with a time of 155.996. And from the USA, South Breeze with a time of 156.266. Philadelphia actually overlaps 22 Dragons on the finish with a time of 157.773. 22 Dragons, 158.176. And Rising Tide with a time of 159.873. Another exciting race here. Who won that race online here? Who got it? Those who got it right, again, send me an email. I'll send you a gift. See? Uh, see, told you at Ken called it. That was Owen. Who else called it right? Everyone under two minutes, that's smoking great show. You got that right, Bob. You're missing all the action here live. Get back here as soon as you can. TNPC, let's go. Thank you for your comments, everyone. So close. Yeah, McKaylee, it's a close race for sure. Everyone here under two minutes. <laughs> 154 is extremely fast here on this course. Yes, way to go, TNPC. Likewise for NDRC and South Breeze. 3 4 2. Julius. Yes, that was a great race. We're now going to race number 166, Senior C Women's Small Boat, round number one. This is our first call for a medal award ceremony. As promised to the people online, we will do our best to get you footage of the award ceremony uh, throughout the day. So in race 160, U18 small boat with the following three teams come to the podium. Pickering, 22 Dragons, and LA County. That's LA County, Pickering, and 22. 
in a race 161 medal award ceremony grand final senior b mixed with the following teams please go to the medal award ceremony now necro dragon csdc and philadelphia yes bob i said philadelphia come on down for the award ceremony for race 161 grand final senior b mixed We are calling race 169 and 172 marshalling now. 169 and 172 marshalling now. Burnwater. Paddles are individually handcrafted in our shop in California using multiple layers of aerospace grade carbon fiber with ultra lightweight high density core. Available as a fixed length or adjustable. Drop by our tent and try one out and see for yourself how our paddles deliver clean entries with superior control. Burnwater. Gear Paddlers Love. Made in the US of A. Don't forget, going to Burnwater, enter into today's raffle. You can win some swag. Again, feel free to put my name on the sheet. I don't mind. This is Burnwater. Go check them out. To the USDBF, thank you very much for... Uh, organizing this 13th Club Crew World Championship. Without all you committee members that are here, thank you very much for doing what you guys have done. Uh, the racers have all had a great time, and this has been a great sight. And thank you again for Nathan, Nathan Benderson Park. This is race number 166, Senior C Women, small boat. In lane number one, just to the left of your screen with the green caps, blue shirt, that is Wham from Seattle. Lane number two, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia in black with yellow shoulders and with red on the side. In lane number three, from the local region, that is the, the heat. And lane number four, Great Lake Paddlers from Ontario. That's Cheryl steering that boat, I believe. Pat Bradley, I know you're online watching the races from the hotel. Uh, we wish you a speedy recovery. We do miss you here for sure. Good luck to your team. This is Senior C Women, small boat, race number 166. 
Teams are getting the last calls to get into the race grid. Wham has just missed their gate, and they're going to reset. Again, we still have a wind that's coming across the lake from east to west. And it seems to be picking up a little bit on the windy side here. So teams in lanes 1-2, when they come into the boot, are just having a tough time getting the head set before they get pushed around. As you can see, Great Lake Paddlers, Cheryl, she's also trying to get herself reset to come into the boot. Their drummer is raising their hand, telling them they are not ready and they're struggling to get in. Two and three look like they're good. Team is helping their helm by drawing. As you can see, the boat number two from Nova Scotia with a black shirt, yellow and red. This is the team that our other announcer was getting confused with the German team because they're also called uh, the Beast Boat, whereas the Nova Scotia team is Dragon Beast, but they're wearing German colors. All right, it looks like Wham is in the gates cleanly. Cheryl has got her team, and it looks like she just glances the boot on the left side, and they missed it. It's important that their drummer kind of gives them a guidance to the helm, how far they are. Are they to the left or to the right of the boot? Four is just trying to move the boat as much as they can to get into the boot. Three, Nova Scotia still in the boot cleanly. Wham is doing the final adjustment as well. One, two, three are looking good. And four has disappeared from my camera here. Oh, there they are. Thank you, uh, production, for helping me with that. Cheryl's going to back the boat out. They're going to come back in now. You can see the wind going from the left to the right across the lake. This is race 166, scheduled for 10.56. Here locally, the time in Sarasota is 11.07. It looks like we're just behind by about nine minutes. If we get this race off, we we'll, should get back onto time. Cheryl's now taking the right side of the boot, which would be the correct move as the wind pulls from right to left. You load up high to the right. As you come forward, the boat will naturally drift into the boot, and all teams are set. One, two, three, and she just gets that boat into the boot cleanly. Does she, she's in, she's in. This is good. We have a clean start here by the looks of it. And the starter just calls the race immediately as she comes into the boot and it is a clean start. This is Senior C Women round number one small boat. And off the line, it is boat number three, the Heat, followed by Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. But the Great Lake Pallers are in this mix, and Wham is still trailing all three boats. Wham is going to wake up and make their move soon because they're running out of real estate. They've got about 400 meters to make their move, but let's see what happens. It is still the Heat in the lead, followed by Great Lakes, and then the Dragon Beast Nova Scotia in third, and fourth, it's Wham. As they come down the race course, the Heat has got nice stroke here. Nice rotation with a catch up front. And they're pulling away from the pack now. It is the Heat in first, followed by the Great Lakes Paddlers. And in third, it is Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, followed by the Wham team from Seattle. Coming to the 200 meter mark off of the start line, the Heat are pulling away now. This is a race that they like. It's a longer distance. It's not a fast start like you see in the 200. And the Heat have got a good, comfortable lead, reaching out to approximately half the boat length from the Great Lake Palace from Ontario. Coming to the halfway mark, it is the Heat, followed by Great Lakes in lane number four. And in third, it is Dragon Beach, Nova Scotia. Wham is still in the game. They're about a boat length behind boat number two, the Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. 
and a full boat length from the heat in lane number three. Coming down to the last 150 meters, it looks like the Heat have got a comfortable, comfortable, sizable lead here. As long as they maintain that rate, they don't need to up it. They come to the finish line in control. In second, it is going to be boat number four, Great Lake Palace from Ontario, and they have closed the gap. Coming to the finish line, it is going to be the Heat followed by the Great Lake Paddlers. And in third, and it will be Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. And coming then to the final position is Wham. And on the finish line, it is the Heat. Congratulations, Pat Bradley. Followed by the Great Lake Paddlers, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, and Wham. In the unofficial results, as they pop up the screen, this is Senior C Women, event number 166. The USA Heat with a time of 229.026. Great Lake Paddlers with a time of 229.951. In third, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia with a time of 232.906. And Wham, 235.834. That was race 166. We are now going to race 167. 167. This is Senior C Women, Standard Boat, round number one. This week, we have 3,000 athletes and supporters that have descended upon the world-class waters of Nathan Benderson Park after three years of no competition and finally together to host this championship. And it's all the best dragon boat clubs from throughout the world that have qualified at their respective national championships to earn a berth to this week's competition. As you requested, we have a camera on the award ceremony. If you look at your your video, you're actually looking at race number 160. This is the U18 Mixed Small Boat Award Ceremony. In the middle there is LA County accepting their medals. To the right of uh, the LA County, you are looking at, and I'll just make sure I have the right team here. looks like 22 dragons that is 22 dragons and then to the left is pickering in the white with a red canadian flag on their hips that is pickering la and 22 dragons congratulations to the u18 mixed small boat so what we have done with protocol and just making sure everyone's safe we've presented the medals to the representative on each team at which point they go up to their own paddlers and put the award around their own paddlers. And we do not want to get anyone sick, so that's what you're seeing here. So we have some wonderful volunteers from NPP who walk up with the tray to the representative of each team, at which point they put the awards on their own paddlers. So these are the kids that are up and coming teams that will represent either their club in future or their country. And there's Nathan Salazar in red there. He's not 18 or under. He pretends to be, <laughs> but he is the coach of the U18 team. There's the 22 Dragons uh, from Canada and uh, very proud of what they did today. And if you look at the white jerseys, you'll see Pickering uh, very happy to win the awards. And LADBC doing the bounce and very happy with how they uh, performed this week. And Nathan is trying to be one of those kids too, and he's hopping up and down. So congratulations to Nathan Salazar. This is a call for race 169, Philadelphia, Dragon Boat, and Silverbacks to the Marshalling area. 
Race 169, Philadelphia, Dragon Boat, and Silverbacks. Race 171, 172, 173, two marshalling. 171, 172, and 173, two marshalling. We have a comment online uh, from Peter Jolie. Lots of traveling crews have brought cheap champ camping chairs. Can we organize to leave them behind the finish tower tomorrow as a donation to local clubs and charities? We'll put that out, Peter, and see if anybody who's willing to leave any camping chairs behind the finish tower and we'll donate them to the local clubs or charities. Thank you, Peter, for that suggestion. Um, uh, we look forward to any teams who are willing to donate. Uh, we'll collect them for you, and uh, if we can send them to local charities uh, or clubs, that would be greatly appreciated. This is the 167 race on the water in Sarasota, Florida. This is Senior C Women Standard Boat round number one. In lane number one, with this clouds coming over, we don't have as much of a bright sun anymore. On the right side, that is the team from Canada, Gorging Dragons. In lane number two, just to the right of the official boat from Ontario, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. In lane number three, with a bright yellow, a team from Ottawa, by Town DBC. In lane number four is the Ottawa DBC team. And from lane number six on the outside with the middle lane missing, that is the PFP Golden Warriors. The PFP is also known as the Philadelphia Flying Phoenix. So thank you very much, uh, Bob, for filling me in on who that team is. The Philadelphia Flying Phoenix in lane number six. Lane number five is open because Dragonheart Vermont has scratched from this race. This is Senior C Women, race number 167, coming your way momentarily. Looks like PFP is uh, pulling out of the gates. They didn't get set. The Phoenix Flying, uh, sorry, the Philadelphia Flying Phoenix is just resetting their boat. All teams are in the gates cleanly. Boat number one is just making sure they realign themselves. You can see the right side drawing. This is one of the hardest things to do for most helms, which when they get the head in the boot, is to keep their boat aligned into their lane. That's a great photo of boat number six, PFP. Beautiful red jerseys. Helm is just turning that oar around, getting the boat realigned into the gates. Again, Everybody when looking at this, Georgia. looking at the gates here, you can see the wind still coming across from east, from uh, east to west. 
The wind is not as strong as earlier, but it's enough to push the teams off the boot for sure. They're coming in very hard on this nose here. They don't hold their boat, and they're going to get pushed out again. Oh, she's in. The start is going to call this race really quickly because the longer they're held on that line, they get pushed around. It is Gorging in first, in second, Pickering. In third in the middle is Bytown. Four in Ottawa and the break, and then it's boat number six, PFP Golding Warriors. And off the line, it is Bytown off the start. Followed by Bytown, it's going to be Ottawa. Followed by Pickering. It is three, four, two. 3-4-2 off the line, but look at two. Pickering is making their move. It is now 3-2-4 off the line. It is Bytown, followed by Pickering, and then Ottawa. And in fourth place, unofficially, it is going to be Gorging Dragons. And in fifth, it is PFP Golding Warriors. They're going to be trying to track down number one, Bytown. And off the first 200 meters, it is still Bytown in first. In second, it is still going to be Pickering, followed by Ottawa, but look at Gorging Dragons from Vancouver, or in Victoria that is. Victoria is coming strong onto second position now. It is Bytown in first, followed by Pickering and Gorging, and in fourth, Ottawa is falling off the lead there. It is now coming to the halfway mark. Bytown with a boat length lead. Bytown in first. In second is a fight between Pickering and Gorging in lane two and one. Oh, this is going to be a close race for second. Bytown in the lead, followed by Pickering and Gorging. In fourth is Ottawa. In fifth, PFP, the Philadelphia Flying Phoenix. Coming down the race course, it is Bytown. They've only got 200 meters more to go. It's going to be a fight between one and two now. Bytown in first. In second, it's Pickering and Gorging having a duo. This is mono a mono. It's Bytown in first. And then we're going to see a fight between one and two. That is where the excitement is going to happen. And look at Gorging. Gorging has made their move. Tom Arnold, you'll be proud to see this. It is going to be both three by town from Ottawa, followed by Gorging Dragons in second, in third, Pickering, in fourth, Ottawa, in fifth, PFP coming to the finish with over a boat length difference. It's going to be by town, followed by. Gorging Dragons with only 18 paddlers, followed by Pickering. And in the fourth, it is going to be Ottawa, followed by the PFP team. And there's the unofficial results. Bytown with a time of 2.12.07. Gorging. 2 minutes, 18 seconds, 0 0.01. Pickering in third, very close by 0.7 of a sec, a seven of a second, 218.778. Ottawa, 221.80. PFP, 232.923. Congratulations on race 167, Senior C, round one. Bob, you're right. Strong ladies in these boats. Great show. By town, simply crushing the field. Nothing like knowing you've got the win with 300 to go. By town, looking like secretariat, and I guess he's referring to horse racing. And our friend Claudio is back, and Mr. Haslam. Great to see you. I'm gonna bring you guys on mic, and we're gonna have a little chat with the two of you. So we have our friend Claudio from Italy. Uh, he will be joining us. I know a lot of the ladies online were liking to know what he looks like. They're putting a name to a face, but uh, well, let's just have a little chat with Claudio and Mr. Haslam, who are now inducted into the Hall of Fame with the IDBF. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Ciao. Ciao. Claudio, Ciao. how are you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, 
after um, the, the, comment, uh, the comment to the race yesterday, it was uh, so fun. Uh, Mr. Haslam, tell me who you are and what are you doing <laughs> here? Well, <laughs> it's a long story. Uh, my name's Mike. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, I, I sort of uh, got the IDBF up and running many years ago, 30 years ago, before, before that, the EDBF, and before that, the British Association, which was the first Dragon Boat Federation to be formed. And um, for my sins, I ended up being the president of the IDBF for the 25 years up until Mike Thomas took over from me in uh, 2016. So it's been a, a, a long journey uh, and, a, and a wonderful one to see, you know, come here today, see all this going on, wonderful course. Everyone should have one like this, shouldn't they? Um, and all these competitors enjoying themselves. And to me, that's what Dragon Boat's about, enjoying yourself, socializing, and having a good, serious, but fun competition at the same time. I met you about 20 odd years ago when I was a youngster. I wouldn't say too young, but <laughs> I was a 20 odd years ago. But uh, you've been very instrumental in my upbringing into dragon boating and my enthusiasm with the IDBF. Uh, Claudio as well, uh, you're so passionate and we'd love to have you here. If you'd like to help us call race number 168. And this is 168, I'm just gonna pass to you. All right. Mike, so and this is lane number one. One, okay, small boat. It's the Paradragons. Class 2 open in uh, lane 1, Paz Dragon Boat Racing Team. Lane 2, DC Dragon Boat Club. Lane 3, Adaptive Fusion. Lane 4, Para United. Lane 5, Para Fusion. And lane 6, Para Alliance. So they're on the start line now for Para Dragons 2 open 500 meters small boat. What is the Para Dragons that you've heard about? What is this group all about? This is the uh, uh, pa Para Dragons are, are um, well it's the first World Championships with the various Para, para Dragon categories. It's uh, exciting for everybody. It's a project that we've been working on for some years. And thanks mainly to Nigel Bedford this last few years, it's, it's come to the fore. So, um, so th th these particular three clubs have a, a unique place in IDBF, in the IDBF story. IDBF wants to develop the new Para Dragon category by encouraging participation from clubs that do not fit the strict rules applicable to other clubs. So uh, uh, you call it a relaxation of the rules, if you like. We, we call it adaptive rules um, to help them to compete so that everybody can take part in this wonderful sport of us. Excellent. Now, you've probably noticed that the Para Dragons are 10 paddlers in a standard boat. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, well, we say we're keen to develop this category, but over time, it will take time. We'll see the, the crew, crews grow, I'm sure, from the 10 paddlers to 12 and then 14 and so on until, you know, the sport is, so the Power Dragon side is developed sufficiently to be racing full crews in the standard boat. Wonderful. In lane number one, this is the uh, PADS team, I guess, that you were just calling yeah. out from yeah. Philippines. It was funny for the whole week, they would actually load up the boat high to the backside mm. and they would launch off and you'll see it right in the camera right now. They put a lot of their paddlers to the backside yep. and the boat lifts off and the drummer is just hanging yep. on for dear life. Well, that's, that's uh, very typical of the Philippines, you know. I mean, their, their, their crews over the years have been some of the best in the world and they had that record in... Um, uh, for many years from um, Czech Republic when we were there with their, with their standard boat crew. And, and the pads have been very to the fore in um, Para Dragon racing. Um, and I'm sure they'll show their, uh, their, their quality here. What do you think of the race course here in Sarasota, Florida? Well, what can you say? It's, it's superb, isn't it? It's uh, mind bending as well as opening. I mean, it, it's, it's you couldn't wish for a better setup. I mean, the, the amount of money that's been spent here. Claudio was here in 2014. There was absolutely nothing, you know. Uh, and look at it now. I mean, you know, what a control tower, you know. <laughs> you, you couldn't want for a, a better facility than this. Um, and um, everyone's been looking forward to coming here. And I'm sure we'll be back many more times in the future. Wonderful. I want to say congratulations. I heard you got nominated into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's a very, <laughs> it's a very North American uh, concept, which is is, is wonderful, uh, I guess. But to me, um, I like to share my my uh, my award with uh, with my good wife, who 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 um, 
In fact, her last event was was in Tampa in 2011, and she died in tw 2012, so it's 10 years. Um, and um, to me, you know, we're all a team. It doesn't matter whether we're in a crew or a club or national or international. We're all one big family. And so, to me, my award is not for me personally in that sense. It's for everybody that was around me, uh, my wife in particular, who was one of the founding members of Dragon Boating in the UK and then internationally. And, of course, our... IDBF treasurer before Alan, Dave Cogswell, the gray, the gray owl, as Claudia remembers well. These are the sort of people that, that deserve to be recognized and remembered. And so to me, the Hall of Fame is, is not just about the individual. It's about the people, the team that's with them, people behind them. I, that, I that must agree. I must yeah. agree, Mike. I, I remember meeting your late wife, and she was a very lovely lady. Mm -hmm. Claudio, how are you doing over here? It's fantastic. Uh, it is a great experience to be here. It is a great experience to be here, to follow all the crews, to share the emotions uh, at the prize giving ceremony. Um, everything uh, uh, is going very well. Also, the weather is helping us. Uh, and um, that is a great championship. As Mike said, we are all here because um, in the 90s, uh, the great passion for this sport uh, comes from this team, uh, comes from Mike, uh, Mike Thomas, uh, and uh, uh, Phil, and uh, David Coswell. All these people that prepare the, the sport as it is today. That is uh, fantastic uh, and is a great opportunity for uh, the new generations uh, to come to our sport uh, to, um, to share this experience all together. So let's move forward with this championship and uh, I hope next year with the World National Championship uh, it will be another great event uh, with the flags, the national anthems and uh, thanks to Sarasota to open this uh, new uh, era of the sport because we have to say that uh, after the break for the pandemic, uh, it was very tough to start and it was very courageous from Sarasota to take this challenge. So I really uh, want to thank uh, Sarasota and all the volunteers uh, and all the people that make this dream possible. Thank you. In, s in Europe, who was the top, uh, sorry, when was the race in Europe for the European Cup? The European uh, Championship, European National Championship, the next European uh, National Championship will be in Bagnoles. In, um, Bagnoles is near Barcelona and is uh, the lake uh, where uh, there was the Olympic venue for uh, uh, the rowing uh, in 1992. So it's a fantastic venue and um, uh, the event uh, is well prepared. It was scheduled uh, in Kiev, but unfortunately, at the very last minute, uh, uh, you know what happened, and uh, we had to change the, the location. And uh, um, the championship will be the first week in September, and uh, we have a large number of entries, uh, and also the Kiev Cup. The Kiev Cup uh, for this... Uh, so now the race is going to start. Uh, start uh, the race, Mike. Yeah, uh, it's for you. On, they're on their way. Lane 1, Pads Dragon Boat Team. Lane 2, DC Dragon Boat Club. 3, Adaptive Fusion. 4, Para United. 5, Parafusion and six on the far side, Paralliance, and they're on the way down the course now, and it's a good start. And um, as we're looking at it, this is uh, lane, one. lane one. As uh, as we were dis discussing earlier, uh, the Pads Dragon Boat Racing Team from from the Philippines, uh, one of the well-established uh, Para Dragon crews, taking the lead now as they come down towards the 200 and 250 mark. Uh, Pads Dragon clear on. Lane one, lane six, Para Alliance also showing. And in the middle there, we've got uh, Para United, I think, in lane four. Um, and they're making their way now very smoothly. Pads Dragon still in, in the lead, going slightly off course, but correcting it now, picking up the speed as they come down the course towards the finish line. That was a nice hard and steady. That was a hard start for the teams. Uh, the teams were struggling to get into the gates there. The wind is really picking up from east to west, as you can see. But as they get down the race course, they're finding their center of the lane. Coming to the 250 meter mark, Mike, how does it look from here? Well, it looks like a, a good race. I think <coughs> uh, the uh, 
lane one still well in the lead, lead but um, out in the middle there and on the far side, the other crews are giving a good go. I don't know whether they'll, they'll be able to catch uh, the pads team at this point, but uh, it's an interesting race for second and third place. Uh, quite close there between, uh, between the other crews, but pads uh, on this side, clearly in the lead in lane one. You haven't lost a beat here, Mike. You <laughs> you actually coming up here talking and announcing like you have done this <laughs> for many years. <laughs> and that <laughs> is true. This is true <laughs> because uh, well the first time I heard Mike uh, make the competitor was in 1981 in Nottingham, World Championship of the Canoe Kayak. That's right. And Mike was the commentator. Coming yeah. to the finish line, Mike, who's this? Well, uh, as, as we said before, it's, it's the Pats team from the Philippines going nicely across the finish line. Now, followed by lane three, which is our friends from Adaptive Fusion coming in nicely, nice steady paddling, crossing the lane line now. And in lane five, we have the, p sorry, Parafusion. Uh, lane three was Adaptive Fusion, so a lot of fusion going on out there. And in lane four now comes uh, Para United crossing the line, and a very nice Dragon Boat Club DC coming down towards the finish line now, still paddling nice and smoothly, crossing the line now in that lane two. And that was the out-of-sight team from DC, so they like to be known as the out-of-sight team, and those are visually impaired paddlers. So, amazing race, Mike. I'm so glad to have heard that you were announced into the Hall of Fame for the IDBF. And uh, we look forward to also having you still with the IDBF for many years to come. Well, I hope so. <laughs> 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 Maybe for the 80th anniversary will be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, for sure. Now, you guys have this book that was written about the IDBF. Uh, have you seen this book? Yes, yes. Uh, we've got a copy. It's very been very well pre presented and done, I think, by, by, by Sylvia um, and uh, assisted by Julie. It's, it's well worth the read. Yeah. I've had a good look through it. Um, it's full of uh, good factual information, p beautiful pictures. It's a very good story of, of the IDBF over the last 30 years with all the, uh, the, the different championships and different people involved. It's, uh, it's a great read. I saw some so pictures of you from past. <laughs> <laughs> they were younger picture. I don't know who that was actually. <laughs> so if you guys could find Mike Haslam on the race course this week, he's got two more days here. If you get a copy of this book, Go find him and get him autographed because <laughs> this will be worth that much more money in the future. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> this sure is true. That. And uh, <laughs> every paddler should have this book into uh, at home. Yes. Mikey, if you could just stay here with us, we're going to have Claudio ta uh, announce Ooh, this next right. race. <laughs> Claudio in a format that we did yesterday, Mike. This uh, <laughs> is a very <laughs> interesting format. It's Italian style, I'm sure. I, you, know, you, you should have seen this, Mike, yesterday. <laughs> Claudio was talking in Italian. I would translate in English in some capacity or another. And we had ladies online going, who is Claudio? How do we get hold of him? <laughs> <laughs> so, Claudio, how can... Uh, your fans get hold of you. Uh, just coming to see the crews at the prize giving ceremony, and I'm always happy to uh, to meet with everybody. Unfortunately, we can't uh, uh, shake hands and give kisses to everybody, but uh, we are together. That is important. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, we are ready to go. This is Senior race number. Senior C Open. Um. Race 169, and in lane number one. Molto bene. Allora devo farlo in italiano anche questa volta. We, I have to do in Italian also this time. Aqua 1 Ottawa, DBC. Aqua 2 uh, Raspberry Dragons. Aqua 3 Philadelphia Dragon Association. And uh, Aqua 5 uh, Great Like uh, Paddlers. In race 169, this is Senior C Open Small Boat. Lane number one from Canada, it is Ottawa. Lane number two, Raysbury Dragons from Great Britain. Lane number three, Philadelphia. And lane number four from Germany, Silverbacks. And from Canada, lane number five, Great Lake Panthers. Abbiamo visto una grande partenza all'acqua centrale alla numero 3 della barca di Philadelphia e all'esterno i canadesi dei Great Lake Paddlers. Una grande partenza e dopo circa 100 metri la gara è ancora tutta aperta. And here they come down the race course in first place unofficially. It is going to be lane number 3, Philadelphia Dragon Boat. Association in second. It looks like it's Great Lake, and in third, Raysbury. Let's see what's happening. 
Loro sono dei senior sì, ma loro sembrano dei juniors, sono very strong, sono molto forti e stanno pagagliando molto bene al centro del campo di gara. Al centro del campo di gara hanno il turbo, gli equipaggi del Philadelphia Dragon. I'm not sure what he said in Italian, but from my vantage point, it's Philadelphia still in first. In second, it now looks like boat number one, Ottawa. In third, from Great Britain, Raysbury. In fourth, it is Great Lake Paddlers. Sì, ma ancora il numero 5 sta venendo sotto, è molto pericoloso. Il numero 5 e il numero 3, lane 5, lane 3, and uh, this is the race. But uh, lane 3, il numero 3 sta in front, sta davanti, il numero 3 dei Philadelphia. Vanno fortissimo. I heard English in that. <laughs> sì, tutte e due, all together, all together. <laughs> All right, coming. Three and five, three and cinque. Three, okay, coming down to the last hundred yes, meters. Yes, this is... Uh, look at the... Guarda, guarda, guarda il Philadelphia. Si guardano a sinistra, si guardano a destra. Sono avanti. L'equipaggio di Philadelphia controlla gli ultimi metri. E sono dieci colpi. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. E va a vincere il Philadelphia davanti all'equipaggio all'acqua cinque. It is three, five, two, one, and four on the finish line. And Bob Mina, <laughs> our Italian expert, is loving this online. This is a new sport in Italian. And we have a comment from BDF429. Why no kisses and hugs? Ah, uh, from Fortunately, we have to recommend every t everybody to be safe because uh, we have to win gold medals also against uh, COVID. And this is the result. USA Philadelphia Dragon Boat, unofficial result, uh, unofficial. USA Philadelphia Dragon Boat, 2, 17, 625, 2, 17, 625. Uh, dopo, second, secondi, Canada Great Lake Padres, 2, 19, 814. 219814 e abbiamo il GBR eh, Wasbury Dragons 221 279 221 279 e alla fine Ottawa 221 673 and uh, from Germany the Silverback 224904 great result R oh, how you say this, Raysbury? No, Raysbury, Raysbury. I try, I try again. Raysbury. Raysbury In Italian, Raysbury. In, uh, <laughs> in English, it's Raysbury. It's Raysbury. It's Raysbury. Raysbury. Not to be confused with, with Raysbury. Okay. Raysbury. Raysbury Dragons, one of the first clubs to come into the sport in the UK in... Um, 1987. So is the one that they have the shirt uh, green uh, yes, and blue? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The two brothers, brothers. Uh, That's right, yeah. The, uh, uh, yes. What's the name yeah. of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, they started the, their life because they saw an advert that uh, one of our adverts to start uh, to try dragon boating um, at one of our events, or one of the first events actually that we had in London on the Serpentine Lake. And they saw this notice in a pub. And okay. um, they weren't there for dragon boating, obviously. They were there just to have some fun and enjoy themselves. And so they saw this notice that had been put there by the, the local rowing club, as it happened. And they thought, oh, we'll, we'll have a go at this. So they um, had a few more beers and they decided to enter. So they entered the first race um, in London. And um, they've been here ever since. Claudio and uh, Mike Haslam, we thank you very much for coming up and calling the My races. Pleasure. And if you're free tomorrow, come back up again. We'd love yeah, to sure. see you again. Yeah. I'll advertise my book then. Sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> All right. Award ceremony 163, 164, and 165 to the award ceremony. We're also calling 172, 173, and 174 to the marshalling area now. 172, 173, and 174. With the following teams, please come to the award ceremony now. Award ceremony, Cal Dragon Boat, Pesh, and CSD Liquid Asset University Mix. To the award ceremony now. 164, Grand Final, Premier Mix. 
Dragon Club Bruno, Gorging Dragons Victoria, and NECA Dragons. In race 165, Grand Final Premier Mix, with the following three teams come to the award ceremony, South Breeze, NDRC, and TNPC. Again, this is the award ceremony for race 163, 164, and 165. 172, 173, and 174 to marshalling. Please also 175 and 176. This is race 170. Back to myself. I miss my friend Claudio and Mike Haslam. This is the Senior C Open, race number 170. C uh, standard boat in lane number one in your screen is Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. In lane number two, the Heat. And number three is Pickering Dragon Boat. Senior C Open coming your way. I would love to have Claudio tell me when I have bad news because Italian just make everything sound wonderful and okay. <laughs> Desiree, gracias Claudio. Puppy chow to the beer tent. Give our ears a rest. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was positive or negative. Is Mark Kane in the race? Yes, he's in this race. So here they come. This is Senior C Open. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia in lane number one. Heat holding our USDBF president, Mark Kane, also AKA our announcer in boat number two. And lane number three on the left side is Pickering Dragon Boat Club. Coming off the start line, it is Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. In second, it is Pickering followed by the Heat. We have 200 meters covered, 300 meters to go now. Will the Heat make their move and try to catch the beast from Nova Scotia? We shall see. Coming to the middle marker, it is still Dragon Beast Nova Scotia in the lead in round number one of Senior C Open. In second, Pickering Dragon Boat Club in lane number three. And in third, unofficially, it's the Heat. Coming to the finish line, we've got 100 meters left. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia looking very comfortable. Every single stroke counting, but nice technique. Followed by boat number three, that is Pickering Dragon Boat Club, and the heat in the middle. The heat is running out of room. They don't have a lot of room left. They're down to the last 50 meters. In the last 50 meters, it is still Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, followed by Pickering in lane number three, and the heat. Finishing off the race, the rate comes up slightly for Nova Scotia, and they take a commanding finish with over a boat and a half length from the other boat number three, and following that is Pickering and the Heat. The Heat does make up some ground on the final stretch, but not enough room to take boat three down. It is going to be unofficially Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, followed by Pickering and the Heat. And here are the official results, as mentioned, with a time of 2.01, Dragon Beast in second, Pickering with a time of 2.08, and finally, USA with a time of 2.09. We have another um, announcer up here with us, and I'd like to say hello, and hello to you. Hey, Carrie, how are you? I'm well, and who are you? My name is Grace, and I'm with the Florida Tarpons. My home team is One Fun Crew, otherwise known as Lake County Dragon Boat Club, 
and uh, I'm glad to be here. This is my first time in the finish line tent, and um, wow, just wow, the view is amazing. Not only that, but it's air conditioned. Now, where have you been? I was looking for you for the last couple of days. Oh, do you really want to hear the story? Oh, no, I can't tell you a story. The official, official is it was an unfortunate misunderstanding. Okay, we're not going to ask any more questions then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're back here. But, yeah, I'm here just for the day, just to check things out for the future. Um, I believe that the, is the next club crew championship is going to be here. Uh, the Nationals will be here, but the club crew will be going to Ravenna, Italy. Oh, Ravenna, okay. Would you be there? I will be there, absolutely. How could I not? And miss seeing you? <laughs> Thank you very much. Good grief. I think we've seen each other uh, almost every cycle. Yeah, we have. We have seen each other along the way. For a long time. So those who don't know Grace, um, on Facebook she has a dog. What kind of dog do you have? I've got a long-haired dachshund named Tiger the Love Sponge. I was asking her yesterday, how does your dog keep cool in this weather? <laughs> <laughs> he, d he actually, he, um, he loves to sunbathe, but most of the time he's an indoor dog. I mean, this is pretty hot. Now, this is hot. on your team, do you drum, helm? What do you do? For the Tarpons, um, I'm actually part of the leadership team. So I drum and um, I do some of the coaching as well and I usually run a portion of the time trials. And for uh, One Fun Crew, I'm the captain, so I'm like the head bottle washer and toilet scrubber. <laughs> now, why aren't the Tarpons here at Club Crew? Well, that's our official, official statement. It was an unfortunate misunderstanding. Oh, no. So we were here last year for the Nationals, and technically uh, we medaled. We won gold in every event that we participated in. And... Um, Let's just leave it at that. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? We've still got Ravenna coming up in Italy, and uh, when we meet up each with each other there, we can have a drink of wine, and you can tell me the whole story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a lot of wine, a lot of drinks. You going to help me with this race? Yeah, sure. This is race number? 171. And it is the? Senior C Women, round two. In lane number one, we've got Wham. In lane number two, we have Heat. Great Lake Paddlers in lane three, and Dragon Beat Beasts, Nova Scotia in lane four. And they're coming up to the start line now. Do you know the Heat well? I do. I, I know a lot of those guys. What a great team. Tell me about them. Um, they're very dedicated. Oh, ah, gotcha. That's all I can say is they're very, very dedicated. Aside from their time on the water as a team, they do work out together as well. And... Um, they put in a lot of time. I mean, they, they love their coach, and their coaching is top-notch, and um, just a great group of people. That's Pat Brandy you're talking about with Liz? With Liz, right, right. I heard Pat is not feeling well today, so he's at actually in the hotel resting up, and hopefully we'll see him tomorrow. That, that's a good thing. I heard that, um, yeah, I heard that there's some... We won't say the C word. Yeah, some icky stuff going around, and I, I do see a lot of paddlers wearing masks, which is probably a safe bet. If um, anybody knows Grace, say hi to her online. We're reading these comments as uh, we're commenting the race. I'll try to put on my sexiest race voice for you. <laughs> Hyper Z3, Luff Dashhounds. I have a smooth black and tan. We're now on to dogs here. Oh, <laughs> they're the best dogs. They're so loyal. But they do run the household if anybody's got one. Katie's saying, LOL, I want to hear more about the tarpon tea. The tarpon team? Tea. tea. Oh, oh, no. Uh, yeah, you'll have to message me privately. I'll be happy to tell you. Katie, there's some little secret I don't know about this, <laughs> but uh, we'll leave it this at that. Uh, Lisa's asked the question, is this small boat, why is the caption SB, which could stand for small boat or standard boat? So this race is actually... Small boat. Small boat. Yes. 500 small boat senior sea women. So when we say standard boat... We don't have standard boat right now. No, nope, it's, it's small, small boat. boat. 171. And if it's standard boat, it's ST. And here we go, the start of the race. You got this, Grace. Who's oh. in the lead? Okay, it looks like lane number two, Heat has, them, has, the, t has the lead by just about a head, and then it's... 
tied with lane number three and lane number four. Lane number one is falling behind, that's Wham. But it looks like lane number three, Great Lake Paddlers is making a move. Um, they're uh, kind of, uh, okay, here they go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's Cheryl steering lane number three. She's the lady who was up here earlier doing announcing for us, and she is from Ontario. She's got those beautiful fancy pants that Bob Minna was talking about. She's kind of in the left side of her lane, and um, I don't know if the if she, I don't know if the um, race officials the race officials are going to ask her to move over, but it doesn't look like it. She's doesn't seem to be interfering with anybody else. But lane number two, Heat still has the lead by pretty much a quarter of a boat length, followed by lane number three, Great Lake Paddlers, and then uh, lane number four, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia with Wham coming up behind in lane number one. What do you think of the stroke rate on the heat right now? Um, you know what, it's whatever works for you, right? So if this is a stroke rate that they've been practicing, then this is a stroke rate that is going to take them to the finish line. Do you prefer a high rate or a low rate? You know what, it depends on the team, right? It, de it depends on what you've been practicing. I was on senior B open boat for Hungary and it was my first time actually at a world event. And um, they were so, the stroke rate was so slow and so long that I, uh, I was like, God, guys, are you even awake? I see. I find that teams have all different strategies. What does the tarpon use? Don't call them the tarpons. <laughs> <laughs> it's too close to the tampons. Tarpons. 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 <laughs> tarpons, it's a gold, it's a silver fish. It's very hard to catch. <laughs> if anybody, if you had the camera on me right now, you'd see me hitting him hard. <laughs> All right. Okay, so lane number two, the heat still looks like they are getting edged out by lane number three, Great Lake Paddlers. It's very, very close. It's going to come right down to a photo finish, I believe. But it's two, no, nope, it's two, three, four, and one. That is the heat followed by the Great Lakes and an outside lane, lane number four. That is the Dragon Beast Nova Scotia in the final position. Is the final oh wham. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Grace Grace is looking at her notes and I'll let her call out the unofficial times to you. The unofficial time we've got USA Heat with 229.6464, followed by Canada Great Lake Paddlers, 229.968, followed by in third place Canada Dragon Beast Nova Scotia at 232.169. And USA Wham at 236.394, the unofficial time. And how do you pronounce the tarpons one more time? Tarpons. One more time. Tarpons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are some of your paddlers here with the other clubs? Yeah, I think that they're kind of peppered throughout the different teams today. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. We would have loved to have been here, but um, yeah. due to some circumstances, um, it, yeah, we, we didn't make it. But like I said, we're, we were here for the Nationals last year, and we won gold in every division. You guys are a hot team down here. Do you live in Sarasota or I don't. Else? I live uh, about f half an hour outside of Orlando. So, But this is only about two hours away from me, and I came to see you know, how the course is set up and um, to say hello to all my paddlers. We, my aunt is actually here with... Um, Greater Chicago Dragon Boat Club. So my Aunt Susan and Uncle Mike paddle for, for them. Want to do a shout out to them? They left. <laughs> <laughs> they left. <laughs> they left. But hey, if you're watching or if you're listening or anything like that, hey. Uh, Stacy Sullivan says, thanks, Grace. You got some fans here, uh, Grace, online. They're all kind of talking about you. Is it because of my sexy voice? I think so. So that was uh, Sullivan right here. Stacy said hi to you. Anyone want else want to say hi to St uh, Grace right now? Just go online, say something. Just to your left here, you're actually seeing the award ceremony. The award ceremony is from Race 163, University Mix. In the right side there, in third position, by the looks of it, that is Cal Dragon Boat on 163. On the outside there, on the left side, that is a team from Hungary called Pesh. And in first place, who is that? Liquid Assets. From? CSDC. Do you remember that team name? 
California. Canada. Can <laughs> I, I want. You. I want it to be California. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always lived in Florida? No, no, no. Actually, I'm originally from the Philippines, and then grew up in Chicago, and then came down to Florida, where we can paddle year-round. Hallelujah! Thank the Lord Jesus. <laughs> uh, we don't ever take a break here, and uh, we love the heat, obviously. Tell us about uh, this area. What is it known for? Is it uh, a business area? Is it a tourist area? Um, s I think Sarasota primarily is a tourist area. This is the uh, Nathan Benderson Park is fairly new, and I believe they built this for rowing and paddling. And since um, since its inception, I mean, we were here the first year that they were open. Um, it's been a huge draw. It's been a huge draw. The mall's been open, and there's lots of lodging. It's perfect for an event like this. And in Orlando, what club uh, do you belong to again? I belong to Lake County Dragon Boat Club, which houses one fun crew and some fun chicks and uh, the love machine and about chicka wow wow. <laughs> <laughs> and is Orlando have its own race as well, a local race? Uh, Orlando has about four races four races. So there's Claremont, there was Tavares pre-COVID, Mount Dora, um, and then we have Orlando that's run by Gray White North. Great. Now why is your team the hottest team here? Is it your technique, your determination? What is it? Wow, that's a loaded question. I know. I think with any team that is successful, I think it's that people, that the paddlers are individually self-motivated. Um, they're the kind of team that you don't have to corral like kitty cats. I, I think all the captains out there know and understand what that means. But um, they're ready, willing, and able to paddle at any notice. And um, they have the desire to win. Excellent. What is the best race you've ever done in the world in, uh, that topped your list? Wow. Um, I'll tell you my most favorite dragon boat moment was in Chicago about five years ago. And so my aunt and uncle were already participating in dragon boat racing. And what we did was we put together a team of 22 paddlers of my entire family. They were all my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, and um, nieces and nephews. And uh, we participated in the Chicago Chinatown Dragon Boat Race. Was that the Philippine team? It was. <laughs> and the, our, name wa our name was Fueled by Rice. Fueled, Fueled by, by rice. rice. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was. And um, in our tent, we had dried fish. We had rice. We had noodles, like lo mein. We had everything you're not supposed to eat during a dragon boat race. And, um, and then afterwards, we went out for dim sum. Oh, so that's awesome. Yeah, but it was, you know, I mean, to have... A whole team, like 22 members of your family members racing, and my uncle was screaming, and, you know, they, they, just, they just enjoyed it. They just loved it. I mean, just to spend a day with your family is one thing, but to spend a day with your family on a dragon boat team, you know, that's, that's like, that's top. That's top. What's the hairiest race you've ever been in? Like the craziest, nuttiest race? Collision, weather. Oh, by the way, the weather here is nuts. It's so <laughs> humid. I told you. It's going to be really hot. <laughs> and the lightning here is crazy. Yesterday night, out of nowhere, around 4 o'clock, it just came down. Was it raining? It was thundering. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, what's really dangerous is if you have lightning and there's no rain. Cause, cause How's that Because that, that can happen. It could be raining somewhere else, and then a lightning strike will come around wherever you are. And, and that, you know, that's super dangerous. Yeah, yeah, you can get hit very easily. I mean, we take it seriously here. So when we practice on the water and there's any hint of rain, you know, we do look online to see, um, you know, what the weather is going to be like. And if we see lightning in the distance or we hear thunder, we're off the water. Take a look at this comment online here. Something to you. You'll see it. You can read it out. Proud to have Grace as my coach. One fun crew. We're so fortunate to have her. Oh, Who was that? Love to you, Marianne. Marianne, I think you're just trying to suck up to your coach here to get a uh, better oh. seating position. 
Diane Steele is also one of my members. One fun crew dedication. Woo, fun crew. Okay. Yep. <laughs> you, got a, you got a huge fan base here, Grace. Woohoo. Yep, I have woohoo. So, um, oh, somebody says Mabuhai to me. Mabuhai to you back. Somebody knows that I'm Filipino. That's probably Mitch san. It is. There you go. I know Mitch. <laughs> Mitch has been online for the last couple of days cheering everyone on online. Oh, cool. But how did he know I was from the Philippines? Because you said that you're from the Philippines. I did? You did. Oh, okay. okay. So tell me again. I, I missed an answer. Uh, craziest race you've been in, uh, collision-wise, weather-wise. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Um, so I did a race in Fuzhou with the USA Premier Team, and we had to do these um, formats that I was really unfamiliar with. But the coolest thing about it was they treated us like celebrities. And um, so they kept all the athletes on one side of the river and then the spectators on the other side. And there were about 10,000 spectators. And the cameras were up and uh, a lot of television coverage. And it was just a crazy scene, but it was very, very cool. That was probably the craziest ever. Since you're enjoying our air conditioning, would you like to join me for race number 172? 172, okay. Who's in 172? Standard Boat Senior Sea Women. In lane number one, we've got Ottawa, DBC. In two, Dragonheart, Vermont. Maybe scratched. Um, I got a call through the radio that they got scratched, but let's go with three. Okay, three Gorging Dragons. Do you know where they're from? Just. Just guess. Canada? Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. East Coast or West Coast? Oh, good grief. Why are the hell are you asking me this? <laughs> I'm going to challenge you. I don't know. West Coast. They're West actually Coast. from the right, uh, just off of uh, Vancouver, on the island of Vancouver Island, and they're called Gorging Dragons, coached by uh, Tom Arnold. Oh, very cool. Very cool. In lane number four, we have PFP Golden Warriors. Do you know what PFP is? Philadelphia Flying, Flying Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. That's who they are. Okay. I know them. I, I know, know them. <laughs> uh, lane number five, we've got Pickering Dragon Boat Club. I have a friend on that boat today. From what country? From the U.S., actually. Pickering is actually in Canada. I know. Oh. <laughs> 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 Never mind. Never mind. I don't know that. Um, and in lane number six, we've got, is it Bytown? That's it, from Ottawa, Bytown, Canada. From Ottawa. We have a lot of Canadian teams you know what? Whenever the Canadians come down, it's it's always a great race. They're just so awesome. Unfortunately, the exchange rate usually kills us first, but uh, we love coming down to the U.S. I think the competition down in the U.S. is very good, and we love the com camaraderie between our teams. Uh, on the water, we try to beat each other, but off the water, we check each other out for drinks and food, and Grace <laughs> brought me a Bud Light a <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> Thank because you. Because I love you so. Thank you. So if I had to take a team to Canada, what, what event should I go to? You have to come to the Vancouver race. The Vancouver race is called Concord Pacific Dragon Boat Race, and uh, we have ours coming up just shortly. If you come up to Vancouver, we will take care of you. And that's the race that I run. Oh, okay. We've, you know what? We've, the Tarpons have been trying to get there for like the last several years. So June 23rd to 25th, 2023, this is our 35th anniversary race. So if you guys are coming up to Vancouver, look me up under Carrie Chow at dragonboatbc.ca and we'll love to take care of teams coming up to our race. Yep, we're going to definitely try to, okay, so all the teams are lined up and they're diligently right now trying to get the nose of that dragon into the cup. It looks like they've got a bit of a tailwind, judging from the uh, the video right now, and I can see the steers are are um, really trying to stabilize all their boats. What's your goal as the drummer on the team right now? What are you trying to do to the team? Right now, I'm just trying to really quiet the team because it's frantic, right? They're all just, you know, really kind of, well, by day five, everybody should know the, the drill. Here they go. And... Right now we've got in lane number three, it looks like perhaps Gorging Dragons is ahead, followed by perhaps Ottawa, DBC. Yeah, that's a great start from both yeah. three. 
Now, what do you do when you have somebody on your team who looks a little frantic or a little bit zoned out? Do you do something as a yeah, I drummer? Yeah, I call them out. Oh, do you? <laughs> I do, actually. Oh, wow. You know, I'll do it just in general. Like, everybody really needs to stay calm and stay focused, and we just have to get the nose gently into the cup. Um, you know, seats one and two usually bring the boat in, and, um, you know, then you have to either draw left or right, uh, usually by the tail, but the steersman will usually take care of that. Looks like lane number three, Gorging Dragons, is just just taking it away. Now, do you feel the boat through your body, or do you look and see what's happening? Which one do you feel better, the feel or the look? I, c I feel it. I feel it in my body. Like, I know, uh, I know when the boat settles. I know when the boat is off time. You can just, as a drummer, you can feel all of that because you know your team. Um, and then, of course, I'm usually not looking at my team. I'm looking at the field. You so actually look out of the boat. I do. I look left and right. I always, I, because you have to make the calls. It looks like lane number six, six by town DBC is, is taking the lead. Is that, am I correct? Yeah, six is really wow. a strong team from Ottawa. So they just, they just in the last, I don't know, 25 meters just really kind of forged ahead. So if you were um, gorging dragons, what call would you make right now to your team? Well, right now they're within the 50 meter mark, so they, they're they just finishing. But this finishing. is round two, so they're looking for best times here for sure. So coming to the finish line, Grace, what does it yeah. look like? So it looks like gorging dragons is going to take it away by a boat length and a half. Followed by either five or three, either Gorging Dragons or Pickering Dragon Boat. That's going to be number three, Gorging Dragons, followed by Pickering. But look at Gorging and Dragons. They only, only have 18 paddlers. They're down a bench. So is one, yeah. So is Ottawa. Yeah. Amazing. And then who's fili finishing up on the field? And finishing is... Uh, Philadelphia Flying Phoenix Golden Warriors. You see the race officials racing their white flag? And You don't know about that, do you? Well, hold on, yes. I've seen the white flag and I've seen the red flag. So what does a white flag mean? White flag is everything's cool. You got it. Yeah. Red flag? Uh, there's, an, there's an issue with the race. That's right. So when a red flag comes up, the uh, water officials come up and raise a red flag. They tell the race official what has happened. It is then the race committee's determination if that red flag is deemed an infraction or not and will assess a penalty or not. So all red flag does not equal a penalty. It just means there was an infraction. Race committee downstairs in the tower makes the final call. And the race results are here. Uh, first place is uh, Bytown DBC with a time of 2.11.466, followed by Gorging Dragons, 2.16.680. Uh, third place is Pickering Dragon Boat Club at 2.17.378. In four, Ottawa Dragon Boat Club at 2.20.415. In fifth place is Florida is uh, Philadelphia Flying Phoenix Golden Warriors at 2.32.299. Hey, Grace, thank you for coming up, and I really appreciate the wonderful gift. I do miss you. I was looking for you on day one, but couldn't find you. Um, I was kind of surprised, but uh, I'm glad I got into contact with you, and uh, we thank you for having us in Florida. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. I, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Anyone else want to say something to Grace? Feel free to put it online. She'll see them like the rest of you. And I've got some comments from... Uh, Marianne, good job, by town. Anything else that you see online? Uh, no, just Grace, you've got the sexiest voice I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> hey, who said that? Uh, uh, you have to look for it, but it's in there. Oh, oh you're, you saw that earlier. You're just calling it from memory. Yeah, Grace, you're, you're awesome. I, I've seen you for many, many times on the water as an ex a extraordinary uh, drummer for your teams, and I know the teams look at you with a lot of respect. Uh, Grace, I'm Jerry's daughter from The Heat. That's Stacy Sullivan again. So thank you again, Grace, for being here. Uh, we are now going to bring you race number 173 as our camera pans to the award ceremony. That is, I believe, 22 Dragons that is getting their bronze medal. So great job, kids.
and uh, w w uh, this guy is doing pump-ups here <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> These guys look like they're going to be the next generation. Oh, my God. Look at the bicep on wow. that guy. <laughs> they're chiseled. They are. All right. We'll be back shortly. One of the things that um, we have found to be really enjoyable about being here in Sarasota is the hospitality of the community. It just makes for a perfect setting for teams that are traveling from other locations, makes their stay more enjoyable in the community, and I can't wait for our world teams to experience that next year. First word starts with tough. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan Bittison Park is a wonderful United, place sorry, for us to paddle and compete. United. The technology, and the, the racing tower, and the timing down. tower I'm is speaking. phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive one facilities that I've raced at all over the world. This race area. venue yeah. is a great race venue because it's so purpose built for paddle sports. It's consistent water depth, which makes for fast times. Everybody has an equal footing in every race. This venue is one of the greatest venues for really highly competitive races. I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand. And there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benderson Park. Nathan Benderson Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. Personally, I've raced here before with my our regional championships and now with our national championship. The technology, the racing tower, and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive uh, facilities that I've raced at all over the world. The course is... Uh, uh, technically fair, uh, which you don't always get in all venues, uh, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Nathan Benderson Park is one of the best locations I've ever raced in the world. It's a great competitive location. The lanes are all the same depth, makes for great racing. Spectators at Nathan Benderson have a great view from the base of the tower. They see the finish very clearly. They always do a great job bringing in food trucks, vendors, grandstands, they really do a good job hosting events here at Nathan Benderson. What are people going to see when they come out? They're going to see a really exciting races. The 200 meter is probably the highest speed race because it's the shortest race. 500 meter is not an endurance test, but it's more technique. 500s, they're really good races because the finishes are really strong. You're going to see some people working really hard and really good athletes given everything they got. In Sunday, when we run the 2000, which is an oval course, tight turns, lots of teams competing head-to-head -head with each other in the middle of those tight turns. In dragon boating, we call that 2000 NASCAR dragon boating because of the turns, and it's a really exciting race to watch. This is an absolutely world-class venue. I've, I've competed and coached at just about every uh, world-class uh, venue all over the world including in China and Europe and I have to say being in our backyard here in stateside it, this is the premier uh, location to host a world-class event. We're a Pennsylvania Dragon Boat Club we're from Philadelphia Pennsylvania. The venue here at Nathan Benderson Park is incredible. It's clean, it's well organized, the race course is fantastic. You know, everything is really really well done and we're having a great time. Uh, Sarasota is great. It's beautiful. The weather is amazing. Uh, the people are great. We're, we're exploring out the, the different restaurants and food here, but uh, we're, enjoy we're enjoying our, our stay here at Sarasota.
Ottawa. Ottawa raised 174. You are being requested at Marshling now. Ottawa raised 174 to Marshling now. This is a call for 175 heat to the marshalling area now. 175 heat to the marshalling area now. We're also calling race 167 and 176. Sorry, my apologies. We're calling 176 and 177 to the marshalling area now. 176, 177, and let's go for 178.
All right, we're back online. I took a small break. Um, it was great to see Grace here from the tar ponds. I think I said that right. She's in the background laughing at me right now. We are now on race number 173. This is the PD2 Open Small Boat. Again, PD2 is the pair of dragons. With the pair of dragons, the requirement is with PD2 class, 50% of the paddlers has to have a recognized impairment. So again, this is Pair of Dragons. This is Nigel, who's bringing uh, the support to the sport here for sure. And we thank Nigel for supporting the Pair of Dragons. Um, I'm just going to make sure I said Nigel's last name correctly. Nigel Bedford, Chair of the Pair of Dragons. That's what it was. We are now racing 173. PD2 small boat in lane number one, Parafusion, lane number two, Adaptive Fusion, lane number three, Pads Dragon Boat Racing Team, lane four, Para Alliance, lane five, Out of Sight Dragon Boat Club, and lane number six, Para United. The Out of Sight Dragons out of Washington, D.C. is the premier dragon boat team of blind and visually impaired in the mid Atlantic area. Dragon boat racing is an international sport similar to canoeing. We use paddles, not oars. Boats have 10 for small or 20 traditional paddlers sitting side by side, a drummer and an oars person to steer the boat. The sport is a governing by the USDBF. OSD provides a fabulous opportunity for visually impaired individuals to learn a water sport as well meet others who believe in physical well-being through recreation and competition. We regularly participate in the DC Dragon Boat Festival in May and other regional races. The team has completed has competed in the Para Dragon Division of the Club Crew National and World Championships. We thank you for being here out of sight and uh, we look forward to an amazing race for for you in race number 173. PD2 Open Small Boat.
This is a call for 176 Great Lakes to the marshalling area now. 176 Great Lakes to the marshalling area now. Race 177 and 178 also to marshalling now. 177 and 178 to marshalling. And if we can, also 179 to marshalling. Welcome back, everyone. This is PD2 Small Boat Race 173. As the PD2 comes into uh, the boots, um, they're struggling just trying to get that nose into the chute. As you can see, boat number five, the out of sight dragon boat, is trying to get their nose into their cup. And uh, it's hard because there's a wind that's now moving from south to north. So earlier, it was east to west. Now it's south to north. And I don't mean to kind of chuckle there, but it's hard. As a helm's trying to get a boat into the chute, it's not easy. My apologies. So boats are being pushed down the race course, meaning their nose is pointing northbound right now. And as soon as they get too close to that chute, they get pushed right past it. Boat number one seems to be in fission. That's parafusion. Boat two is adaptive fusion. Three is Pad's Dragon Boat team from Cebu City. And there they go. They let that team go right off the line. It is basically Parafusion in one, Adaptive Fusion in two, Pads in three. Paralines is not in this race. Out of sight in five. And boat number six is Para United. I give credits to Out of Sight Dragon Boat Club for coming off the start line on an angle, but they've able to recorrect it and get into the center of the lane. And as the start, Pads just takes right off. I'm looking forward to meeting Mary Beth on this team. She'll be up here talking to us about her experiences in the Philippines and on the Para Dragon Pads team. As we look down the race course, Pad has a clear lead. They are in a class of their own for sure. This is Pad's Dragon Boat Racing Team for Zabu. In second place, it's going to be a toss up right now of Para United on the outside and lane number one, the Para Fusion Team. Coming down to the 200 meter mark, it is still going to be Pad's Dragon Boat Racing Team, followed by lanes number one or six. Let's take a look. It's going to be either Fusion in one or United in six. As you can see, the bright green team that is the out of sight team from DC. They're still doing quite well in their lane and they are trying to track down one of the teams in front of them. In lane number one, we've got Parafusion. Lane number two, Adaptive Fusion. In lane number three, from the Philippines, Pads Dragon Boat Racing Team. In lane number five, in the green, is the Out of Sight Team from DC. And in the sixth position, to the right of your screen, is Para United. Coming to the last 100 meter mark, it is still going to be Pads Dragon Boat Team. And I have to say, um, Bob, this team is not launching into the stratosphere today. They have even off their team where most of them are in the middle of the boat, not at the back of the boat. The drummer is sitting down this time and they're not being launched. But they're still doing the exact same as the previous couple of days. They are in the lead and are going to take this race. The fans on the short line are waving the Philippine national flag and they're cheering on their teams amazingly. We're now looking for second place and it will be boat number one, Parafusion, coming across the line on the right side with Mary steering that team. Mary from the Los Angeles racing team here. And lane number two is in third, and that will be Adaptive Fusion, followed by lane number six, Para United. And in last position, but still holding very strong, give it up for Out of Sight from DC. 
This is the PDT2 division, round number two. I've got my friend back. His name is Matthew. I think he's ready. Um, I, I think he was racing, actually. That's where he took off. Matthew, how did it go today? It was a really tough field out there in the Premier Mixed Standard Boat Division, but we are very, very excited and congratulatory to all the teams that did, in fact, medal. And a big congratulations to everybody else who's been racing here amazingly for the past five days of racing. You missed a bunch of races and left me up here by myself. I sure did. Well, looking at some of the unofficial results from that race, race 173, we have Pads Dragon Boat Racing in first with a 218.369. We have Parafusion in second place with a 230.009. We have Adaptive Fusion pulling third place with a 231.035. And all of the other crews um, did terrific as well. Those are the unofficial results again. Para United under them, DC, Dra I'm sorry, out of sight dragons in fifth place there. And now we have race 174, the Senior C Open Small Boat. This is their round two race. And they're off. In this heat, we have Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association in one, in three, the Great Lake Paddlers, in four, Ottawa Dragon Boat Club, and in five, Raysbury Dragons from the UK. Looks like all these boats off into a nice start, and we're about to see them get into their settle and try to get that rare swing that Bab Mina talked about the other day. In lane one on the far right of your screen, closest to shore, we see Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association leading the charge by a couple seats. And in the middle, we see Ottawa Dragon Boat Club, oh, excuse me, Great Lake Paddlers, putting the paddle to the metal, as we talked about yesterday. And in lane two, falling behind just a little bit are the Silverbacks of Germany, followed by Ottawa Dragon Boat Club in the red in lane four. Still charging ahead, we see Great Lake Paddlers and Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association fighting it out for gold. On the far side, we see Raysbury Dragons falling back just a little bit, putting up a fight with the Ottawa Dragon Boat Club and the Silverbacks. We see our Helms trying to keep it straight, straight down the line for this 500 meter race. They're coming into about the halfway point. We can see some of these really nice long strokes in this 500 meter settle. They're gonna pick it up in just a few more buoys. And I'll bet we're gonna see a nice strong finish from all of these teams. And coming into the final meters, we see Great Lake Paddlers, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association, and now Raysbury Dragons is in the mix. And coming to the line, it looks like it's going to be Great Lake Paddlers, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association, followed by Raysbury Dragons out in five followed by Ottawa Dragon Boat Club and the Silverbacks rounding out this heat, 174, the Senior C Open Small Boat. Boat three having Miss Fancy Pants. <laughs> that was Cheryl who came up earlier and uh, showed us her Fancy Pants. She actually showed that, sold it herself. And now results unofficially. In first place, the Great Lake Paddlers with 217.361. In second place, the Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association with a 217.746. In third, Raysbury Dragons with 218.617. In fourth, the Ottawa Dragon Boat Club with 219.155.
And rounding this out in fifth, the Silverbacks of Germany with a 2.22.031. Unofficial times, of course, unofficial. This is a call for race 176, Great Lake Paddlers, 176. We also need 178, 179 to marshalling. 178 and 179 to marshalling. Also pre-calling 180. 180 to marshalling as well. This is Senior C Open Standard Boat. Senior C Open Standard Boat. In race number 175, in lane number one, we have the Heat. In lane number two, we have lane number two, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. In lane number three, from Canada, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. This is Senior C Open Standard Boat. As the teams come up to the start line, We'll wait till the waves kind of dissipate from that official boat coming through the attenuator. That is a great shot from the drone right now. Again, the wind is coming from the south to the north. Teams are getting drawn right up to the start gates with just pure wind. Steers or the helms are just gliding into the boot very gently which is really nice to see that and heat is in the boot followed by Pickering and Dragon Beast Nova Scotia that is the best feeling as a helms when the wind actually pushes you right into the gates without any effort these teams are given the final call senior C open round number two And there they go. This is ra round number 175, or race number 75, coming you to you from Sarasota, Florida. And off the line is Dragon Beast Nova Scotia Dartmouth. And they're shot out of the start line like they have a mission. Lane number two, just tracking them down, is the Pickering Dragon Boat Club. And in lane number three, it's the Heat. And off the line, boat number two starts to draw left into their lane. Boat two has got to be very careful. They get back to the center of the lane or the officials on the water will raise, raise the red flag. But let's see what happens. It is still Dragon Beast Nova Scotia in the lead by a half boat length, followed by Pickering Dragon Boat Club still on the left side of their lane. And they've been there for a little bit and they better start getting over to that center of the lane or the officials may call that. In third, it is the Heat. Heat is staying to the right of their lane. So three, two, or sorry, one, two are separating from each other and they will try to find their center of the lane just momentarily. You can see the helm fighting that boat in boat number one. She is pulling on it or trying to get the boat to respond. But the power coming from the paddlers is causing the boat to either veer right or veer left a little bit, but she's done a great job, and boat one is the heat, and they're coming back in. And there's the actual official boat coming up to just check on boat number two. They're in the screen, just making sure that they're staying to the center of their lane. Boat number three is starting to also travel to the left of the lane. That is partially caused by the drift of the wind. Coming to the last 100 meters, it is basically Dragon Beast Nova Scotia off the line first and staying in the lead. With over a boat length, the Heat is finally making their move on boat number two. It is Heat coming in with a fight with Pickering Dragon Boat Club. And to finish, it is still going to be Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. And we're looking for second place now. Look at the Heat. They are about four benches behind. And they're running out of room, and it's still going to be Pickering in second, and in third, unofficially, is the Heat. 
the officials have raised the white flag, did not deem that any infraction had occurred, and that is the results. We'll just take a quick look, and we'll see what the times are. Unofficially, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia with a time of 202.10, Pickering 207.89, and U.S. Heat 208.75. That was race number 175, Senior C Open, round two. We are now going to go to 176, 176, Senior C Women, round three, small boat. One of the things I found to be really enjoyable about being here in Sarasota is the hospitality of the community. It just makes for a perfect setting for teams that make their stay more enjoyable in the community. And I can't wait for our world teams to experience that next year. First word starts with tough and tough. <laughs> Nathan Bennison Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. The technology, the racing tower, and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive facilities that I've raced at all over the world. This race venue is a great race venue because it's so purpose-built for paddle sports. It's consistent water depth, which makes for fast times. Everybody has an equal footing in every race. This venue is one of the greatest venues for really highly competitive races. I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand, and there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benerson Park.
This is race number 176 on the water. Senior C small boat. In 176, there is four boats. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, Great Lake Paddlers, Wham, and on the outside to your right is the Heat. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying the races online. Uh, we're still seeing lots of comments from Ryan. Go Heat. Lily Ting, you're back. Go Beast. Mike1967, go GLP, Senior C Women, which is Great Lake Paddlers. Our Fancy Pants is out there uh, doing a, a heck of a job uh, steering the Great Lake Paddlers. And we thank you for coming up and doing the interview with us. And that was Cheryl. We got some happy birthday uh, celebrations to Miles Barnardi, go team LACDBC. Miles, happy birthday. Tell us what the updated running list is. Um, if you're looking for the race grid, if you go to W or sorry, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash IDBFchamps.org forward slash two zero two two S A R. And there they go. This is race number one seven six on the water. In lane number one to the right of your screen is Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, followed by Great Lake Pallers in the second lane, and that's Fancy Pants Cheryl. In lane number three, that is Wham from Seattle. And on the left side of your screen, you're going to see the local team, the Heat from the Villages. Heat is obviously taking a very, very good lead off the line, followed by Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. And in third, it is Great Lake Paddlers and Wham in four. Th for third place, it's going to be a tight race between Great Lake and Wham. We still got half a race to go. They're at the 250 meter mark. It is still Heat in lane number four in first. In second, Dragon Beast Nova Scotia, Dartmouth. In third, it is Great Lake Paddlers. And in fourth, it's Wham. Coming down to the last 150 meter mark, it is still going to be the Heat. Heat has got a very comfortable lead here with 10 senior C women. And look at boat number one. They realize they're a little bit behind and they're picking up the rate. The stroke rate's coming up, hoping to catch boat number four. And let's see if they've got room. And they do. They've got only 100 meters left to go. One is now going to make a surge. It's one on four making a surge to the finish. Boat four just realizes it. They now up the rate to match up with boat one. But do they have enough room to catch them? It's going to be 4-1 or 1-4. Let's see what happens from the aerial shot. Coming to the finish line. It was boat four heat leading most of the way, but boat one is making their move, the Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. This is heat number three of the Senior C women and a run of real estate. It's going to be the heat followed by Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. In third, unofficially, Great Lake Paddlers and then Wham. Mm, great, great race. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia is just running out of room. Um, if they had initiated a finish a little bit earlier, they probably would have taken on the heat in lane number four and caught them. But because it's a 500-meter race, um, they just ran out of room. With the time, unofficially, USA Heat, time of 229.92. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia with a time of 2 minutes, 30 seconds, 0.827. Uh, Great Lake, 235.22. And Wham with a time of 238.76. That was race number 176 on the water. We are now hope going over to 177. In 177, we are at the Senior C Women's Standard Boat, round number three. With the following teams, please go to Marshalling 179, 180, and 181. 179, 180, and 181 to Marshalling. Any more comments online? Keep coming this way. Uh, Mitch San, good night to you. Sounds like you're a little tired. Uh, we are, you appreciate reading all the comments, which uh, when you replay it, you'll see it all when you wake up. So good night, Mitch San, and have a nice evening. And you can dream about dragon boating tonight. Stacy Sullivan, come on heat. 
Chibi from、uh, Chibi Totoro, Go Wham, Verna. Yes, great rates pads. So, still seeing a lot of positive comments coming through. And、uh, yeah, if you have any comments about your race or your club, let us know. We'd love to hear from all of you. This is race 177 on the water. This is Senior C Women Standard Boat. In lane number one to the right is Pickering Dragon Boat Club. By Town DBC in a bright yellow there in lane number two. Philadelphia Flying Phoenix in lane number three. Open space was Dragon Heart Vermont. They're scratched. Lane five is Ottawa. And lane number six on the left side is Gorging Dragons from Vancouver Island. And off the start line, no surprise to any of us, it's Bytown. Bytown has been commanding all the starts from all the races they've had. We've never se once seen DBC pull behind, or sorry,、uh, Bytown pull behind anyone on the start line. So, Bytown, very strong, but let's see what happens in the middle of the race course. Bytown's in first. In second, it's going to be between Gorging Dragons and Pickering in lane number one. Pickering and Gorging in one and six. We're、trying to take down Bytown. Let's see what happens here. Bytown still very comfortable in the lead. In second, it will be Pickering to the right, Gorging to the left. Ottawa still holding in the pack, fighting for third. Ottawa still looking very strong, and they seem to be reeling in Bytown. Bytown is not taking off any farther. It is now just a matter of holding that rate and surging at the end. And in the final position, it is going to be lane number three, PFP, which is the Philadelphia Flying Phoenix, Golden Warriors. Coming to the finish line, it looks like they heard my voice. Bytown is finally making their surge, trying to pull away from the pack, but one and six staying with them. It is still going to be Bytown from Ottawa. Trying to fend off Pickering on lane number one and lane number six, Gorging Dragons. This is going to be amazing. Look at this go. It's one and six. Bytown, they think they have it, but let's see what happens. Anything can happen here in the last hundred meters. It looks like one Pickering and six Gorging tracking down Bytown, coming to the finish line. Bytown still with a boat length lead, but Pickering making their final call and their drummers raising their hands. Let's go, girls! Coming to the finish line, it is Bytown, last 50 meters, and it's Gorging in second, Pickering in third, Ottawa in fourth, and unofficially, boat three, PFP coming through the last 25 meters of the race, and Bytown right off the get go. And they're giving a thumbs up to Pickering on their right side and they're waving. Nope, they're actually waving at their fans on the shoreline.、Uh, great work by town coming to the finish in command. That was boat number two from Ottawa. In second place, it's Pickering. In or sorry, Gorging. And in third, it's Pickering. With the time in first place by town, 214.38. Gorging, 217.81. In third, Pickering, 219.66. Ottawa, time of 222.12. And in fifth place, PFP, known as the Philadelphia Flying Phoenix, Golden Warriors, with a time of 233. Again, these are unofficial results. We still have to wait for any protest. And after the protest has passed that time period, Then the results become official. That is the Senior C Women Race 177. Yakamut, thank you very much for your, your comments about my soothing voice. Uh, my neighbor here, Matthew, <laughs> doesn't think it's soothing, especially when it comes, becomes too excited. Robert Burns, well done, Bytown. Brian Krushank, yay, Bytown. Corey Stories, yes. 
Sharon Boucher, you our girls rock. I guess when you say our girls, you're referencing Bytown in Ottawa. Cat Black, go GD. Gorgie Dragons did really well in that race. They tried to track down the Bytown team from Ottawa. They ran out of real estate, but very proud of the Gorgie Dragons for sure. Uh, Corey at Sharon Boucher, they're amazing. Yes, Senior C women are always amazing. These ladies have raised families, um, gone through l all the ups and downs in life, and have lots of experience. And to see them on the water kick butt, <laughs> very impressive. And I know Bob from um, the hotel would probably agree with that comment for sure. So again, Senior C, for those who don't know, is 60 or later birthday that falls in the year of the competition. So these ladies, even though you say that they're 60 or later, these ladies race like they're in their 20s. So great job, ladies. Very proud. I'm not that far off, by the way, for Senior C either. But I'll race in the open division. Uh, Ron Smith, when I grow up, I want to pedal like these ladies. Yes, Ron, I completely agree with you. Keep up these comments. Uh, we have lots of more racing for today. We're now going to race number 178. This is the PD2 Open, where 50% of the para dragon class, they have to have a recognized impairment. In lane number one, we've got Para United. Lane number two, Para Alliance. Lane three, Out of Sight Dragon Boat Club. Lane four, Adaptive Fusion. Lane 5, Pads Dragon Boat Racing Team, and Lane 6, Para Fusion. This is a call for race number 179. We need Raysbury, Ottawa, Philadelphia, and Silverbacks now. Race 179, Raysbury, Ottawa, Philadelphia, and Silverbacks. In race number 180, we need Pickering, Dragon Beast, and Heat. Race 180, Pickering, Dragon Beast, and Heat to the marshalling now. We're also calling race 181 and 182. IDBF official, Belinda Chung. IDBF official, Belinda Chung. You are wanted at the race and min. Belinda Chung to the race and min.
Laura Lee, you are quiet. I can't read your comment because that would be uh, firing shots at the other country, and I don't want to start a war. But Laura Lee, thank you for your comments. Sharon Boucher, all the teams are fantastic, just qualified to be there. I agree with you, Sharon. Bob, pads, you are clear for takeoff. <laughs> Lane five wins west northwest 15 to 20. VFR rules apply. Bob, even though you may be feeling a little sick, you're hilarious online as well. <laughs> Congratulations to Bytown Super Seas. You rock. Thanks, Roger. I think, Bob, you never have a down moment, do you? Your comments are hilarious. And for those who don't know Bob, check out his Facebook page. Um, he's an absolutely amazing artist. Uh, he's able to draw on just paper plates and he draws these wonderful photos uh pictures i mean i never asked you bob how you got into this and i i heard a little story from a little bird that told me that you did this for your daughter and used to draw these um pictures for her and you would leave it in their lunch in their lunch kits but uh, tell me otherwise but i'd love to hear the story behind that Hey, Tom, you're right. The race in Denver is sl at Slow Lake today and tomorrow. So if you guys get a chance, the people online that are in the Denver region, head down to Slow Lake and check out their race. They have a race combining both Taiwanese boats and Hong Kong boats. So again, that's at Slow Lake in Denver, Colorado. Coming to you right now in Sarasota, Florida, is the PD2 race number 178. In lane number one, Para United. 
Lane number three, Out of Sight Dragon Boat Club. Lane number four, Adaptive Fusion. And lane number five, this team is ready for takeoff, Bob. They have done the same setup now. They're packed into the back of the boat, and that boat is about to launch off. And lane number six, Para Fusion. Starter has the call. Boat number three is slightly on an angle, but like we saw earlier, they love to start on angles and correct it right off the, step, the start. As an official, that's, this would freak me out, but look at this. There he goes. Boat three pulls to the right off the start line. But as they do that, boat number five takes off and they're off. Engines a go. Boat is lifting off from our angle, and Bob, you have to see this one again. This is liftoff. There is no holding back boat five at all, and they're in the lead. Now the question is, will they explode? I hope not. They will make it to the finish line. It looks like boat number six is in second, and in third is boat number one. In boat number six, that is Para Fusion, and lane number one, that is Para United. Followed by them is the boat number four, Adaptive Fusion, and then out of sight in boat number three. Coming to the 200 meter mark off the start line, it is still going to be the PADS Dragon Boat Racing Team, who apparently all work for NASA. In second place, it will be Para Fusion in lane number one, Para United, followed by Adaptive Fusion and Out of Sight Dragon Boat Club. As they race down to the halfway mark, it is still the NASA team called PADS Dragon Boat Racing Team. This is quite uh, normally called uh, NASA or in Florida because of this team right here. They, they've got their drummer just off the front of the bow of the boat. And Bob, you, <laughs> if you were here, you would have a good, good laugh. But they're doing really well. And Bob's comment, Pads, give me a go, no go for lunch. Pads have cleared the tower. We have liftoff. <laughs> So who's on the water right now? This is the PD2 Para Dragon 2 Open Division Small Boat. Coming to the finish line, the Para Dragons are now re-entering the atmosphere. They've got uh, the big flame, the chutes have come out, and the finish line is within 25 meters, and they're gonna do a splashdown in three, two, and one, and there's the Para Dragons from Cebu City. Excellent race. In second place is going to be boat number six, the Para Fusion, and coming in third out of nowhere, Para United, catching boat four, the Adaptive Fusion team. And finally, in the last position, first in their lane, give it up for out of sight Dragon Boat uh, from DC. This is a visually impaired team, and they have done amazingly here this weekend, and that is out of sight, boat number three. With unofficial results coming your way, just a moment, we will be going to race number 179, Senior C Open Small Boat. Results from 178 are just going to pop up, and I'll just give you the final times. I'll do a quick shout out for the Out of Sight Dragons from DC. I see Robin on the drum and Simon on steer. Great to see you guys. Again, based out of DC, some of the nicest folks I've ever had the pleasure of paddling with. And results from that race, the PD2 Open. In first place, Pads with a 219.015. In second, Para Fusion with a 228.84. In third, Para United with a 229.5. In fourth, Adaptive Fusion with a 230.256. And rounding this out, in fifth, Out of Sight Dragons with a 253.826. This is called for race 181, 182, and 183 to marshalling now. Race 181, 182, and 183 to marshalling now.
Brenda, I like your comment. Go NASA. <laughs> this humor is keep keeping me going for at least one and a half more days. So thank you very much for these awesome comments. Um, I just wish that Bob gets well and comes back up here and joins us for sure. Um, I can't speak Tagala. It's something about pads. I'm not even going to try to say those words because I'll probably butcher the language and I do apologize. But Wendy, uh, Wanda, thank you very much for your comments. I was wondering if Matthew can read Tagala. Nope, he said no. So they just learned from Bob that the Out of Sight team is the only visually impaired Dragon Boat racing team in the East. But hopefully in the short little while, we will inspire other teams uh, to form with the new Para Dragon at the IDBF and the USDBF level. And as we get to encourage and share our sport with, out, with more people out there, we will see more women, more breast cancer, more uh, um, cancer paddlers, visually impaired, um, in any kind of impairments. And this is the beauty of dragon boating. Anyone can do the sport. If you have the determination, we have the sport and we have coaches out there that will teach. And there's some great coaches out there at all levels, from recreational, novice to competitive. And if you find these coaches, cherish them because they do an amazing thing for all of us, and that is teach the sport of dragon boating. Race 176 Award Ceremony. A award ceremony for Race 176 Senior C Women. Would you please approach the stage at 1.30? This is award ceremony for race 176, Senior C Women. Small boat, please go to the award ceremony at 130. Race 181 needs not a breast to the marshalling area immediately. Race 181, we need not a breast to the marshalling area immediately. Calling race 182, 183 to marshalling now. 182 and 183.
Uh, sorry, Adrian. Uh, we've just been having a small little break here. We missed your question. How off are the races? I haven't seen a reply. So let's just get a scope of where we are at, and uh, we'll just calculate for you if we're ahead or behind. Uh, we are up to race number 179, Senior C Open, small boat. That race was scheduled for, let me just double check, 179, yep, 1240. The time right now is 1.23 p.m., and we're just a few minutes uh, before race. So we are roughly 44 minutes uh, behind schedule at this point. We lost a little time when there was a small turnover in a few heats ago. Uh, we will try our best to catch up. So we're about 44-odd minutes behind right now. I hope that answers your question, Adrian. Ah, we have somebody already answering my question faster than I can. So does, so does Jar. Thank you very much. Oh, we just got corrected. There, apparently there may be another team who is uh, visually impaired. Natural fact, in Canada, there is a few visually impaired teams. There is two in Vancouver right, that I know of, and I think there's another one or two in the, on the east side. So we actually have a few visually impaired teams, and a couple of them are very competitive, too. Uh, Helen, not going to be able to watch your races H2O as I have other commitment. To my daughter and Kim and team, Know my heart is there with you. Give it all, it your all. That is all you can do. Thank you, Helen, uh, for the message out to your daughters. Uh, we've sent a message out to Racers Village. They can hear our live stream as well. Bob, um, he's mentioned that we need to get out of sight dragons up to Montreal or Cavella down to DC. So out of sight, you have a request to join some races. We would love to have you either in Vancouver or Montreal, and we can match you up with the other out of sight teams. Uh, we are introducing Para Dragons in Vancouver, and uh, we're having some huge successes for sure. Carvella, as uh, Bob had mentioned in DC, another great race for you to go to as well. Thank you, Bob and Solis Jar. We thank you for your comments. Carvella is the team um, that's out of 22D. Thanks, Lisa. And now starting off, we have race 179, the Senior C Open Small Boat Race. In lane one is Raysbury Dragons. In lane two is the Great Lake Paddlers. In lane three, falling behind just a little bit is Ottawa Dragon Boat Club. Leading the charge is lane four, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association. And in lane five, the Silverbacks of Magdeburg, Germany. Round out this five-boat heat. Sorry to interrupt there, Matthew. Uh, we're calling race 182, Pickering, L.A. County, and Cal Dragon Boat to marshalling, please. All these teams looking strong, especially in these small boats. Look at the wakes that they're putting out in the behind them. They're displacing a lot of water here. We see the steers of Philadelphia in four moving his body with the rhythm of the strokes. Trying to push that boat forward. Now the Silverbacks in five are lagging behind by about a boat length. About 200 meters out now. And it's still Philadelphia leading the field, followed by Great Lake Paddlers and Ottawa. On the near side, the Raysbury Dragons are very much into their settle, lengthening it out for this 500 meter race. We see very similar stroke rate for most of these crews. We can see, especially in the 500, just how long a lot of these strokes are. It's very, very different from the 200 yesterday and the day before. And we'll see more of this 500-meter racing tomorrow as well. 
Coming into the final stretch, it is, in fact, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association in the lead. This senior C crew is not giving up. They're going to push it straight to the line, followed by Ottawa Dragon Boat Club, ahead of Great Lake Paddlers by about a seat or two. And it looks like Great Lake Paddlers may have made up that difference in the final push. We'll have to go to the camera, but Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association unofficially crosses the line in first, followed by either the Great Lake Paddlers or Ottawa Dragon Boat Club. And now over the line, we also see the Silverbacks from Germany. A congratulations to all of these teams in round three of the Senior Sea Open Small Boat. And here are the results. Unofficially in first place, Philadelphia Dragon Boat Association with a 216.325. In second, Ottawa Dragon Boat Club with a 218.807. And just behind them in third, the Great Lake Paddlers with a 218.968, a point one difference. In fourth, the Raysbury Dragons with a 220.012. And the Silverbacks in fifth with a 228.575. An impressive performance from all of these senior C Open, 16 above. Crews, especially in these small boats, that is not an easy task. Coming into the boots now is race 180, race 180. This is the Senior C Open, so again, 16 above, uh, but in the standard boat. This is also their round three. And again, for rounds, we will be totaling their times, and that lowest cumulative time will determine the winners. This is a three-boat heat. In lane one, we have Pickering Dragon Boat Club from Canada. In lane two, the Dragon Beasts of Nova Scotia. And in lane three, Heat, here from Florida, and they're off. All of these teams off to blazing fast starts. The timing, the sync of Dragon Beast Nova Scotia and Boat 2 in particular is very impressive. And they are in fact leading the field. That is the Dragon Beast of Nova Scotia, followed by Heat on the outside with Pickering Dragon Boat Club making up some ground now. And Pickering is pulling ahead of Heat. Pickering is now walking a little bit. They have maybe four or five seats on Heat. And they're only behind by about half a boat on two. They're making a move against the Dragon Beasts. All these teams fully into the settle now. We see them lengthening out with a nice low rate using their entire bodies in this really difficult distance, 500 meter, not a sprint, not a, not a long distance. We're about halfway through the course now, and it's still the Dragon Beast of Nova Scotia with an impressive lead over the rest of the field. Pickering Dragon Boat Club trying to catch up, but they've fallen behind in the last few seconds where Heat are waiting for them. We see Heat's drummer hinging back and forth on that drum, wailing, wailing on that drum with that stick. And we see very impressive bow weight coming off of all of these boats, I have to say. And coming into the finish, it is Dragon Beast of Nova Scotia over the line first, followed by Pickering. 
and heat. It looked for a little bit like Heat was going to overtake Pickering as Pickering fell behind, but unfortunately, they did not. Unofficially, we have results. Dragon Beast of Nova Scotia in first with a 202.841. In second, the Pickering Dragon Boat Club with a 206.776. And in third, Heat with a 209.357. Again, these are unofficial times. And we have some terrific comments coming in from the live stream, too. Way to go, Ottawa. Well done, Philly. Go, Pickering, go. Woo, Pickering Dragons, go. Grabbing that glide. That's right. Bob and some of the folks on the live stream are talking about that sweet spot stroke and that mystical swing exactly. They're getting that glide very, very perfectly. An impressive performance put on by the Dragon Beast of Nova Scotia. This is an award ceremony announcement. Award ceremony announcement for race 176. Race 176 awards. Please go to the award ceremony now. That is Dragon Beast Nova Scotia and Great Lake Paddlers. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia and Great Lake Paddlers for Senior Sea Women Small Boat Race 176. Please go to the award ceremony now. Another awards announcement. We are calling races 177 and 178. 177 and 178. Please come to the award ceremony now.
Again, this is an award ceremony announcement, award ceremony announcement for races 176, 177, and 178. Please come to the award ceremony area. This is the award ceremony that we require at the medal ceremony, race 176. With the following three teams, please go to the medal award ceremony. Dragon Beast Nova Scotia. Great Lake Paddlers. The Heat. This is Senior C Women, race 176 for the medal ceremony. And now on the water, we have race 181, BCP Women, Standard Boat. Race 184 and 85, 184, 185 to the marshalling area now. Now this is a four boat heat on the water, 181. Out on the far left of your screen in lane four is NBP Paddling. They have a lead on the rest of the field, followed by Not Abreast in lane two. Dragon Boat Charleston in three, and Empire Dragon is out of New York City. Is in lane three right there. Again, we have Dragon Boat Charleston in lane one, Not Abreast in lane two, Empire Dragon is in lane three, and NBP Paddling in lane four. These crews are putting on an impressive performance here at the Club Crew World Championships in Sarasota, Florida. And coming into the final stretch of this 500 meters, we do see NBP paddling in boat four out in front, followed by not abreast in boat two. Empire Dragons looks like they'll be coming in third. They are in boat three. NBP paddling is over the line. Not abreast is over the line. Coming into the finish, Empire Dragons just crosses the finish, followed by Dragon Boat Charleston rounding out this BCP women 500 meter round one. This is a medal award ceremony call. Medal award ceremony call. Race 177 to the medal podium now. Pickering, Gorging, and Bytown. Senior C women, please go to the medal award ceremony now. Pickering, Gorging, Bytown. And those unofficial results from this race, NBP paddling in first with a 221.203. In second, not abreast from Canada with a 223.42. In third, Empire Dragons with a 227.693. And in fourth, Dragon Boat Charleston with a 229.527, unofficially. Medal award ceremony, 179, 179. This is the Senior C Open with Ottawa, Great Lake, and Philadelphia. St start heading towards the medal award ceremony. This is a call for race 184, 185, 186 to marshalling now. Again, 184, 85, and 86 to the marshalling now. Mary Beth will be on our way. Listen carefully. We will be doing an awards, uh, a present, sorry, not a presentation, but a interview with Mary Beth from the Philippines.
I see there's a discussion online between Bob and Christine. I just noticed it right now, so I'm just going to read out what their discussion was about. Bob is talking about some mystical swing that they've got. Christy, uh, Bob was saying at Christina Jackson, I know they're trying to use the tower camera to look at the awards when there isn't any race ready to go and running on the water and the ceremony is going on. But yeah, you're right on that, Bob and Christina. We are trying to bring you more of the award ceremony. And as we do that, we also have the races coming down the race course. So it's a, a bit of a kind of a balance because there's only one camera that can be shown on a, at a time online, but we do our best to focus between racing and medal award ceremony. And yes, it's a balance of luck and timing for sure. I know we're getting the request to show, but it's really hard to do as we don't have a fixed camera at the podium and we can cut in. And there it is as we speak. Production, here's my call. And if you look carefully, that is the Nova Scotia team, Dragon Beast from Dartmouth. They're just going to come into your view just momentarily. The other team that's just walking on the stage is now scootered over to the race itself. Matthew, what's happening here? This is race 182, the U24 Open and ACP Open small boat event. In this race, we have Pickering Dragon Boat Club, LA County Dragon Boat Club, Cal Dragon Boat, and Necker Dragon. That's the four lanes on your right. And the two on the left, the outside lanes five and six, that is Dragon Boat Charleston and NBP Paddling. NBP Paddling in six on the outside. Leading the th charge here in the U24 Open Division is Pickering Dragon Boat Club in Boat 1. Looking very strong. They have a little bit of a higher rate than some of the other crews. Using that classic Canadian stroke. Very, very powerful. We see Boat 4 as well. Necker Dragon coming up from behind a little bit. Big space between the U24 and ACP. Uh, Matthew, do you know why they put a big break between the two groups? I do not know why, but that is Dragon Boat Charleston down there on the right side. That looks like lane five, and in lane six is NBP paddling. NBP paddling also looks like they're racing one row down. They're racing with eight. That must be difficult in a small boat. So the reason for the break is the ACP team has asked that the U24 don't get too close. Their wash off the U24 boat is so strong that it pushes the AC boats, ACP boats around a little bit. So we put two boat lengths in or two lanes in between them so that their wash does not hit their boat. And now coming up to the finish, we have Pickering Dragon Boat Club fighting it out with Necker Dragon boats one and four. Coming into this finish here, it looks like Pickering Dragon Boat Club is going to take this round one. Necker Dragon following closely behind. They're over the line with about four or five seats behind. And in third, it looks like LA County Dragon Boat Club followed by Cal Dragon Boat in fourth. Isn't that your friend Nathan Salazar steering boat number two? That is, in fact, my friend Nathan Salazar steering boat two. Hey, Nathan. Is he, he is the head coach of Team USA Juniors, the under-18s and under-16s. But he's not under-24. Yes. That's because of the U24, the Helms does not have to be under U24. All right, coming through the finish line is the ACP team, and it was lane number six, NB Pedaling and Dragon Boat Charleston. Race results. The unofficial results, Pickering Dragon Boat Club in first with a 211.697. In second, Necker Dragon with a 214.412. And in third, LA County Dragon Boat Club with a 216.364. Rounding out the 24s, Cal Dragon Boat in fourth with the 217.708. For the ACP divisions, we have NBP paddling with a 244.647 and Dragon Boat Charleston with a 249.142.
This is a call for race number 184, Edmonton DEDBRC. You're requested at Marshalling Now. Race 184, EDBRC to Marshalling Now. As we look at the stage, you're looking at the heat just getting off the stage. So congratulations to them. And in the black with yellow shoulders, that is the team from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Dragon Beast. Very happy paddlers for sure. Big smiles. I just don't know which division that was. We'll continue to stay on the award ceremony for those online. Um, after that, we'll go back to the racing shortly. Lots of smiles. The sun is out again. And so far, um, no clouds that show any thundering at this time. Uh, we look down the race course. Uh, we'll ask the production team to see if we can get a good zoom from the drones of the entire race. And we'll walk you through what we're seeing here. We have our official boats on the water. They're staying hydrated. For those out in the racer's village, do get some water. Our cameras are just getting ready and we'll just kind of quickly look straight down and we'll tell you who this is in front of you. Obviously the bright green is Bytown from Ottawa. This looks like a standard boat for sure. And I believe from my observation, I recognize the silver is most likely Gorging Dragons. This is probably the Senior Sea Standard Boat Medal Ceremony. And I am correct. That is Belleville, I'm uh, sorry, Believe, Train, and Do. That is Pickering Dragon Boat Club in the white there, receiving the bronze medal. Congratulations to Pickering. In the middle there, in the bright green, is the team from Ottawa. That is Mike Haslam in the red hat. And those who want to know what Claudio looks like, that is Claudio. Uh, just walking by there with a black mask. Uh, that's Mr. Haslam or Mike Haslam uh, there in the red hat. And to the far left, you will see uh, the team from Victoria, B.C., that is the Gorging Dragons. And you look at the smiles, that is Tom Arnold's team. Tom, excellent work. And they're <laughs> handing out the medals to their teammates. Uh, congratulations again to the Gorging Dragons winning silver in the Senior C Women Standard Boat. And there's a big picture of Senior C Women Standard Boat. To your right, Pickering in the middle for first place is Bytown. And to your left is the Gorging Dragons. I hope you guys love that shot online. It is great to see the awards for sure.
And now coming through the attenuator wall, we see Cal Dragon Boat in Boat 3. This is the U24 Women's Small Boat. This is, I think, one of Kerry's and my favorite angles on the camera on the live stream. Very cool. You get to see all these teams warming up, cruising through that attenuator wall gap, and out onto the race course. Now, as I just mentioned, we just saw Cal Dragon Boat. Now, Cal Dragon Boat is based out of UC Berkeley. That's University of California in Berkeley. Cal Dragon Boat was founded in 1998 and is a competitive student-run Dragon Boat team at UC Berkeley. They regularly participate in regional, national, and international races like this very one. And they are a diverse group of hardworking students studying various concentrations, ranging from medicine, engineering, rhetoric, architecture, all of these different things. And they strive to make Dragon Boat more accessible to students at UC Berkeley. They recruit student athletes twice a year, and they're very proud to be one of the top college teams in the US. As someone who has paddled with and against Cal Dragon Boat, I would agree heartily. Now again, this is race 183, the U24 women and BCP women small boat. In this race, we have three U24 women's boats and three BCP women's boats. The U24 boats are lanes one, two, and three. And the BCP boats will be four, five, six. We can start to see some of the crews coming onto the water now. In lane one will be U24, and that will be the Pickering Dragon Boat Club. In lane two will be LA County Dragon Boat Club. And in lane three, Cal Dragon Boat. Moving to the BCPs in lane four. Oh, excuse me, lane four is a scratch. Starting in lane five, again, BCP will be Dragonheart Vermont, based in Burlington, Vermont. And in lane six are the Pink Dragonistas of Germany. This is a marshalling call, marshalling call for races 186, 187, 188. Boats in races 186, 187, and 188, please report to marshalling. Now on the water, we see these crews in race 183 coming up to the boots together. It is very difficult sometimes to get these boots right, depending on conditions. Earlier when I was steering, we had an incredible right to left crosswind that really, really was difficult. But here it looks like all of these boats are nicely seated in that basket. They have a slight tailwind. Again, the wind changes like crazy around here. And a reminder, race 183, U24 women and BCP women. Lane four is a scratch for this. And so the one, two, three lanes will be U24 women. And lanes five and six are BCP women. They are off. And it looks like Pickering Dragon Boat Club in lane one is off to a blazing fast start. Picking that boat up, trying to get that glide. Still in contention, LA County and Cal Dragon Boat. As these three U24 crews enter the settle, 
they are very, very close. And they have a lot more paddling to do to come up to the 500 meters. On the outside, we have Dragonheart Vermont leading the Pink Dragonistas. Five leading in front of six by about three or four seats. Now four or five seats. LA County in lane two is starting to come out in front a little bit. They're making a little bit of a move. Maybe they called their mid-race power 10. And Pickering Dragon Boat is not taking this lying down. Cal Dragon Boat falling back to third in the U24 women's division. But over in the BCP, it looks like Dragonheart Vermont is still leading the Pink Dragonistas of Germany. Pink Dragonista sitting a little bit in the right of their lane. Not a huge problem from our unofficial vantage point. All of these U24 women's crews and BCP women's crews are paddling as hard as they can, coming into the halfway point. We see LA County in their beautiful new kit. Black, white, and red, very looking cool. Especially at this high level, it's incredible to see the sync, the timing, the technique, the consistency between all of these crews, especially considering they're all in under 24, maybe haven't been paddling for quite as long as some of the other folks. And coming into the final stretch of this race, 183, we see Pickering and LA County fighting it out for first. Who's gonna cross the line first? And it looks like it'll be Pickering Dragon Boat Club walking on LA County, crossing the line first, LA County second, Cal Dragon Boat behind, and Dragonheart Vermont is over the line followed by the Pink Dragonistas. Unofficially, that was one, two, three, five, six. And that's exactly what it was. Unofficially, in first, Pickering Dragon Boat Club with 223.996. In second, LA County Dragon Boat Club with a 225.644. And in third, Cal Dragon Boat with a 230.429. In the BCP division, Dragonheart Vermont takes first with a 233.953. And Pink Dragonistas are in second with a 236.066, unofficially. So on the award ceremony there, uh, you see to the right in the bright green, that's the out of sight team from DC. In the middle from the Philippines, that is PADS from Cebu City. And on the far left, that will be Adaptive Fusion. So Adaptive Fusion uh, in the blue from Cebu City, Philippines. Congratulations to our new NASA team. So, <laughs> sorry, pads. And on the right from uh, Washington, D.C., that is the out of sight team. Congratulations. And look at all those proud members uh, being photographed by their fans, their family who are here. Uh, you cannot miss the colors of the Philippine flag on a lot of their jerseys, the blue, the red, and the yellow. The time here in Sarasota, Florida is 2.04, and so far, Mark, we've evaded the thunder showers, which has been great. To get to 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a 
July Saturday and no threatening clouds, we're having a good day. Uh, Bob wrote something. I'm not sure if I should read it, but something about pads is coming to the metal podium and several of these guys are using their one leg to kick everyone's butt. I guess that's safe to say, but I've said it already. Amazing and congratulations to pads. What else is on that uh, line there, Mark? Uh, Suyin Dula, congrats Cebu team, great work. Uh, a bunch of people are agreeing with Bob. Bob, at Bob Mina, yes, ha, had to pull out due to illness. I'm not certain if Terry is referring to herself or to Bob. <laughs> Maybe both of them. Could be. Kelly here, a uh, good friend of mine, good, go Edmonton, Wee! from a team with very little paddling due to snow, ice, raging river. Your hard work over the year has paid off. So in Edmonton, their dock got ripped apart and they uh, came together as a community rebuilt the dock, and they're back on the water again. At one point, they could only have one person on the dock to get into the boat, and it was a slow um, process, but they're back on the water, and I'm glad to hear that Edmonton is ready to re-race again. A couple of years ago in Puerto Rico, we were racing against a team from Alberta, and I can't remember if they were from Calgary or Edmonton, but due to the snow and the ice, they actually managed to get a 10-man boat in an indoor pool, and they had it rigged with pulleys so they could paddle the 10-man boat in an indoor pool. We actually have a, uh, a tank in Vancouver, um, just in Richmond, that is, and we were able to simulate paddling in an indoor um, paddling um, kind of like a pool. Mm -hmm. It's actually really, really good. Ontario has that as well. Have you ever tried ice dragon boating? I have not. I live in Florida, and I can't get any of my teammates to go up there with me. Uh, although there's an awful lot of people in Florida who express an interest in going up, we just haven't managed to pull it off yet. I've done it once, and uh, I'm not doing that one again. It's a great race for ice dragon boat racing. It's cold. It's super cold. There is an ice boat, great ice boat, dragon boat racing federation now. Yeah, there is. And I know Jason Chan has been involved with that as well from Singapore, but it's one, one cold race. But afterwards, a drink of hot chocolate and some, um, I won't say what kind of something else alcohol it is, but it warms you up. Um, your fingers are just frozen like crazy, but yeah. Uh, from Phyllis, for our great announcers, just to let you know that Hope Afloat Helm learned how to steer just two weeks ago. This was her first race. We had good company with DHVT and Pink Dragonista. Do you know what DHVT is? Dragonheart Vermont. Oh, the Vermont team and the uh, German Dragonista. So that is amazing to see a Hope of Lone Helm with just learning how to steer just two weeks ago at the international level. You're getting a... Input from Bob Carey, there is a paddle pool in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and prior to that there was one in Haverford, and the pool is a grind, but good winter work. I have never practiced in a paddle pool. I just said from Florida it's tough getting people to go to an ice boat, ice dragon boat race, but we can, pa we can paddle on water year-round. I was going to ask Matthew if you've ever tried ice dragon boat racing before. I have not, no, but I have been to a paddle pool, and it was very, very fun. You either use Swiss cheese paddles, ones with, like, holes in them, or you use very, very thin paddles. If you look down to the stage, you're looking at the pad group coming together, and there they go. This is race number 184 on the water. Senior A women, round number one, small boat. In lane number one to your right, it is 22 Dragons. In lane number two from Edmonton, Kelly, this is your team, EDBRC. In lane number three from Germany, Neck of Dragons. In lane number four from Chicago, Windy City Dragons. In lane number five to your left, that is the German team, 1C. As they race down the race course, it is going to be 22 Dragons in the lead. In 
second, in this windy city from Chicago. In third, it's going to be a close tie between Neck of Dragons and lane number two, the EDBRC. I know can hear you from Edmonton Kelly. You're cheering on your team in red in lane number two, EDBRC, but it looks like number one has surged ahead now. It is 21 22, I don't know how I got 21, but 22 Dragons in the lead here, followed by lane number four, Windy City, and in third, it will be EDBRC. Coming off 200-meter line, it is still going to be 22 Dragons, followed by Windy City and EDBRC. Let's see what happens in the middle of the race. It's still the same teams in the right order. It is going to be 22 Dragons, followed by Windy City and EDBRC, but don't count out the Neck of Dragons from Germany and Wansi on the outside in five. Coming to the left 200 meters, it is still 22 Dragons in the lead. And we see a nice great shot from the finish line. And it looks like it's still 22 Dragons coming through with command on lane number one. In second, it's still Windy City followed by EDBRC in lane number two. Lane three and lane five from the two German teams are going to try to reel them in on the last 75 meters. Coming to the finish line, it is still 22 Dragons in the lead, followed by Windy City in lane number four. And look at EDBRC, they're making their move. Rate is coming up on all the boats. Windy City is starting to charge. Windy City going to take on the 22 Dragons coming to the finish line. It's Windy City and 22 Dragons from Canada. It is Windy City, 22. They're looking at each other, coming to the line. It will be... Oh, this is lane number one. Out of nowhere, 22 Dragons followed by Windy City and EDBRC in third unofficially. That was amazing. But you know what the funny thing? 22 Dragon means 22 uh, paddlers, 20 paddlers, drummer and helm. What do you call them on a small boat? Uh, 14 Dragons. Ah, you're right. Okay. So in first unofficially, 22 Dragons at a time of 22.25. Point two three, Windy City, 225.70. And then third, Kelly, your team, EDBRC, 227.48. And in fourth, unofficially, Neck of Dragon, 228.64. And Wansi, 230.02. This, this last race, race 184, Senior A Women's Small Boat, it is a three-round cumulative time to determine the medal positions. So that is a good start for all of those teams, and the next two races will ultimately determine their medal positions. I think we got to call that 22 Dragons, now 14. Actually, 14 would be the spares. It's 12 Dragons. How do you get 12? Oh, yeah, 10, 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2. <laughs> I, I was doing the, the medal count for 14 with the spares. <laughs> All right, great race. Kelly, did you like that from uh, Canada? That was a great race. So we got some great comments coming through. Windy City and 22 Dragons, great show. Kelly, congratulations to all teams, but internally, Kelly, you're saying yes, Canada, EDBRC. Uh, Yumi's still alive. What is we, she saying? Yumi, uh, Tampa, Tampa, let's do it. Was Tampa in that race? No, they're coming up. Oh, is that why she's saying that? <laughs> uh, we have a Tom Toomey. I have done uh, Ice Dragon Boat is the steersman. It's not Eddie. I'm gonna. I'm guessing that should be easy. Okay, we have to ter learn spelling here. <laughs> we don't have autocorrect on the uh, chat room. Kelly's comment. I did. My heart went out of my body. Kelly, do you need us called 911? Uh, Mary and May, good luck, NPP Senior A Women's Boat. Let's go, Dragons. So keep up your comments. Uh, we love reading them. It actually uh, helps us out. And the next race we've got is race 185, Senior A Women's Standard Boat. Last call, Bucks County, race 187. This is your last call, Bucks County Fusion. Race 187 to Marshalling. On the camera, we still have Adaptive Fusion taking photos and celebrating their medal. On the podium with a gorgeous backdrop for the 13th Club Crew World Championships.
Okay, race 185 is underway. It looks like on lane five, TNPC is out to a quick lead. But it is tight this early in the race. Uh, CDC Liquid Assets is right there with them, as is Ottawa Dragon Boat Club. And there's not a big separation anywhere across the board. TNPC is getting a little separation, but this is a tight race at this point, probably 100 meters in. Bytown in their bright yellow gear, you, they're easy to spot from the drone and they're easy to spot anywhere in the facility. TNPC still has the lead followed by CSDC Liquid Assets, followed by Ottawa, Bytown and Tampa River. Again, this is a normal progression race where the winner goes straight through to the grand final and the second, second fastest boat in the heat goes through to the grand final and the other boats go to the repassage. It is still TNPC in the lead followed by CSDC in Ottawa. We're not changing positions, although it looks like Bytown may be getting ready to challenge Ottawa. Bytown's inching up ev with every stroke. We'll have to see how this finishes. It is still TNPC in the lead out in lane five, followed by CSDC liquid assets in lane four. Looks like Ottawa has put on a surge to hold off the challenge from Bytown, but Bytown is challenging still. Coming into the final 20 meters, it is true TNPC followed by CD. CSDC followed by Ottawa, Bytown, and Tampa River. Great race. Those are four Canadian teams that just came through that finish line with one USA team. Great race, everyone. Over the years, I've paddled with a number of the people in the Tampa River. That is a highly competitive program they've got there. We're noticing a lot of clubs are really stepping up their game this weekend. Uh, okay, the unofficial results, True North Paddling, 205.53, CSDC Liquid Assets, 206.74, Ottawa DBC, 210.3, Bytown DBC, 211 two rounded up, it was 210.98, and Tampa River, 213.5. Congratulations, on behalf of Burntwater, the next person has won their daily raffle. Susan Lemnick from PDVA. Please go to the Burnwater booth. You've won some swag from Burnwater. Again, if you guys are looking for the best blades in town, go check out Burnwater. Looking for a paddle with ultimate stiffness, control yet lightweight and durable? Check out the Burnwater paddles. Individually handmade with multiple layers of aerospace grade carbon fiber. Our one-piece design ensures each stroke delivers a clean entry with superior control. Available as fixed length or adjustable. Drop by our tent and try one out. Burn water. Great paddlers love. Made in the USA. This is a call for race 189 and 190 to the marshalling now. 188 requires Ottawa and CSDC urgently. 188, Ottawa and CSDC urgently. This is call for race number 185 on the water now. Senior A women. Standard boat. No, my bad. This is 186 on the water. Ready to start. And 186, this is heat number two, women. In lane number one, it is NBP paddling on the right side in the blue shirt. In lane number two, H2O Montreal, Canada in the second lane. In the third lane, mm, 
I apologize. Lane one is empty. Let me rephrase this. Lane number two in the blue chart is NB Paddling. Lane three, H2O Montreal, Canada. In lane number four, it is Matthew's team, Bucks County Fusion, and lane number five, South Breeze. Matthew, you want to call this race? I sure will. We see NBP paddling coming into the boot now. They came in with just a little bit of speed, but all good. Head is not knocked off. And these four crews are very, very strong. Again, this is Heat 2. And they're off a very quick start. H2O Montreal in lane three is out. They are leading this pack of four, followed by Bucks County Fusion. Woo, go Bucks, uh, in lane four. South Breeze on the far side, about a seat and a half in front of NBP paddling at this point. And now they've walked up, NBP paddling, lagging behind these three. It looks like H2O Montreal, Canada in lane three is leading this with Bucks County Fusion and South Breeze falling very closely behind, especially in a longer race like this instead of the 200. Um, just because they're ahead right now does not at all mean that they're going to be ahead at the finish. So we will see what happens. NBP paddling now behind by open water with Bucks County Fusion in the second place right now, in second position, in front of South Breeze and behind H2O Montreal. All these crews using really nice long strokes in this 500 meter and a really, really nice solid slow rate. This rate is likely similar to what they all used in the 2K a few days ago. Coming into the finish, we see Bucks County making a move, trying to fight off H2O Montreal. Let's see if H2O Montreal can hold on to their lead. Finishing strong, all of these crews pushing over the line. It looks like Bucks County is now out in front. Oh, it is way too close for me to call. Between H2O and Bucks County, we will have to go to the photo for that. But South Breeze rounds out third place in this heat with NBP paddling coming up in fourth out of lane two. And oh my goodness, unofficial results. In first, unofficially, H2O Montreal with a 208.398. In second, so close, Bucks County with a 208.443. In third, South Breeze with 209.887. And in fourth, NBP paddling with a 219.709. If you could only see the body language of Matthew, he's just bending over just like, what does it take to win here in Sarasota, Florida? That was amazing. His team, Bucks County Fusion, with his dad on it, he's been rooting for them all week. And they had a chance to win the race. And 0.05 <laughs> of a second behind H2O unofficially. Well, if you were down there, would you raise a red flag on H2O? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I would not. Clean racing by all. All right, sounds great. We've got race 187 coming your way, Senior A Open, small boat. Now Matthew's on his phone right now texting his dad. Why, dad? Why? Actually, <laughs> actually, Kerry, that was the senior eight women. <laughs> but coming up in this race, 187, is in fact my dad. Since this is your dad in this race, I'll let you call this one too, and we'll see if we can take a medal on this one. How does that sound? Sounds good. And as a reminder, that was race 186, the senior A women heat two. The winner of that race, which un again, unofficially was H2O Montreal, Go straight to the grand final, along with the next fastest time of that heat and heat one, which came before it. But coming onto the water now is race 187, Senior A Open Small Boat. And this is round one.
to Fania in Vancouver. Thanks for coming online and listening to the broadcast of the 13th annual World Club Crew Championships here. Fania Chan, we miss you. We'll hope to see you back on the water soon. Yumi Chan just sent me a note. What my treat? <laughs> she wants a treat too. Elaine Sit from Vancouver. I can hear you even without watching. Thanks, Elaine. Uh, Jeff G from Houston. Thanks for your comments. I love all the support out there. Um, we do this for you guys that's not here. And we're trying to connect the community to the races here in Sarasota, Florida. If you have any comments, you want to do a shout out, you want to promote your race, let us know. We'll share it with everyone. Now we can see these six boats coming up to the line in lane one, Dragon Aqua SE. Did you see um, Bob's comment online there? I did. <laughs> Carrie, if Elan, is that your dad's name? Alan Al, yes. It is in the women's boat for bucks. We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I also found out about uh, Nathan Salazar in the U18 or U24 boat. He got um, exemption to race with his team. And that's, that's right. what happened there. Anyway, so in this race, 187, Senior A open small boat in lane one, Dragon Aqua SE. In lane two, H2O Montreal. In lane three, Dubai Diggers. In lane four, Bucks County Fusion. Woo! In lane five, Necker Dragon. And in lane six, Wham! Out of Seattle. If you're looking for the link for the race schedule, it is idbfchamps dot org forward slash two zero two two S A R. We are very excited for this round one. No, you are excited about this round <laughs> one. Let's just clarify what's going on here. I'm just hoping to get through the day alive. <laughs> Again, this is a very diverse race actually. We have Hungary, Canada, UAE, US, Germany, and US represented here. Now, we see a whole ton of white water thrown up by these boats as they power out of their starts. Shooting out like a rocket is the Dubai Diggers in lane three, followed very closely behind by H2O Montreal just next to them in lane two. Last call for Ottawa to race 188. 189 and 192 marshalling now with 191. 189, 190, and 191 to marshalling. And still on the water, we see H2 Montreal has taken the lead over the Dubai Diggers. Lane two overtaking three. And next to them in third, it looks like it's either Bucks County Fusion or Dragon Aqua SE. It looks like Bucks is ahead by just a few seats. But again, in these 500 meter races, that change can happen very quickly. And in fact, Necker Dragon in lane five is starting to make a move, it looks like, coming up just a little bit on Bucks and also on Dragon Aqua, who again are in lane one on the far side, on the close side. Wham in lane six is trailing behind this field, being left behind just a little bit. And still holding on to that lead is H2O Montreal in lane two, followed by lane three, the Dubai Diggers. It looks like Dragon Aqua SE is no longer a threat to the Bucks County Fusion boat in lane four. And lane five, Necker Dragon is trying to walk up on Bucks, but it looks like Bucks is holding them off for the time being. Coming into the final stretch of this race, Dubai is still, oh, I'm sorry, Dubai is still behind H2O Montreal. H2O still powering through. But as they come into their finishes, we will see if any heads pass any other heads. And in fact, it looks like the Dubai Diggers have powered through. They are leading this pack now by just a hair. Oh, and they're trading first with H2O Montreal, and H2O will take first in this race, followed by Dubai. And third is too close to call for me. It is either Bucks or Necker Dragon in five. Over the line now is Dragon Aqua SE from Sehesfehervar in Hungary, and in the far side, Wham in lane six, also finishing a very strong race. This was race 187, the Senior A Open Small Boat Event, round one.
and unofficially we have some results. In first, H2O Montreal with a 212.412. In second, Dubai Diggers with a 212.958. In third, Bucks County Fusion with a 214.537. And in fourth, Necker Dragon with a 214.618. Dragon Aqua comes in in fifth with a 219.893. And Wham in sixth with a 222.058. Wow, what a very close race for Bucks and Necker Dragon coming into third there. And a good afternoon, everyone. The time here is at 2.31 uh, Sarasota time here. I've got a special guest here. Uh, her name is Mary Beth. Nave. Nave. Hey. And Mary Beth, <laughs> where are you from? I'm from the Philippines, everyone. Yo, congratulations to all the racers. You guys are so amazing. What would you like to say in Tagalog to our friends online? Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Laban Pilipinas, Pilipinas, laban. All right, we have a firecracker here of Mary <laughs> Beth. Mary Beth, yeah. what are you doing here in Sarasota, Florida? Well, I'm here for the sightseeing. Of course not. I'm here to paddle with all of these amazing countries. I'm here with pads, and uh, we represent the Philippines. And yeah, we're here. And now I'm co-hosting with you. Now, <laughs> what you don't know about Mary Beth, she's a DJ and a ah. VJ in the Philippines. Yeah, correct. What does correct. that mean? So you're a video jock, so you come up on TV, and you do a lot of this, what you're doing. And this jockey is like, basically, you play music and say, hello, good morning, everyone. I hope you like have the music and you're enjoying it. And events hosting and TV hosting, stuff that you do too, but Actually, in the USA. I don't. Yes, you do. What are you doing now? I'll do it here, but oh, okay. normally at home, I don't do this kind of stuff. Oh, well, so wow. I'm we are honored to have you, though. You <laughs> Thank know? you very much. Everybody's so entertained with what you do. So what do you do with the PADS team? Well, okay, so we have Master Sergeant. While we're waiting for a race 188, right, um, we have a head coach. She's a Master Sergeant of the Philippine Air Force. And she's coaching so many teams right now that win gold medals internationally. And she's our coach in Triton Dragon Boat Racing Team. Then she handpicked three physically able-bodied paddlers to join PADS um, to race here. Because apparently PADS, which is a PWD Dragon Boat Racing Team, is uh, pa they paddled for every small boat category. So boom. <laughs> Excellent. Here. Yeah. And who's our friend here with you? Andrew Perez, yeah, from LA, yo. <laughs> he's here, he's, uh, he's, he's like a team manager too and, and takes photos and videos like what he's doing right now. That's excellent. Tell me a little bit about you and your racing at home. What is the difference between Philippine racing and versus the IDBF uh, World Club Crew Championships? Okay, well, basically, we are part of the Philippine Dragon Boat Federation, which is an official member of the IDBF. So um, the racing conditions is... We paddle even if it rains. So, you know, when we had this delay of the weather yesterday, we were all like, 
Where's the rain? Where's the lightning? Where's the thunderstorm? We paddle and race in typhoon signal number one to two. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. <laughs> but no alligators, though. Here there are alligators, and I've just been waiting for them to pop up at the end of the finish line. W would you scream if you saw one? No, I'd go, hey, let's have a photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mary Beth, yep. let's continue this sure. interview after this race. Can you help me with this race? Yeah, sure. I hope I don't make a mistake. Yes. No, you're going to do well. Okay. It's race number? 188. For the standard senior A open. Perfect. In lane number one. We have uh, Ottawa DBC. Not Ottawa. And it's a Canadian town called Ottawa. Oh, Ottawa. So sorry, guys. All right. Ottawa. Got it. And lane number two, we've got CSDC Liquid Acid. Lane number three, 22 Dragons. Lane number four, Wendy. Wendy City Dragons. And number five, Tampa River Dragon Boat. And the, the race has just begun. Look at all those paddlers. They are paddling really, really strong, even if it's so hot. You know what? It's not just the power longs that are having, um, a, a, you know, this endurance and strength. But waiting in the start line with this kind of heat is totally, totally crazy. So it looks like Ottawa is not here. So you've ah. only got two, three, four, five. Tell me what's happening on the race course. Well, what I'm seeing right now it's a full standard boat and everybody's paddling strong they're like side by side right now and uh they're doing power long so um this is senior a open so i'm guessing this is like 40s and up right or am i am i right or wrong senior a is 40 and up. Yeah, so imagine the kind of heart strength, the kind of will, determination, the physical agility alone. That is not easy to do, guys. What I like to do is change to Tagalog now, and, and when you finish with Tagalog, I will go to English. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Tagalog daw ako sa mga kababayan natin sa Pilipinas, ang nangyayari ngayon ay nasa IDBF tayo ngayon. At nakikita natin ang Event 188 and Standard Senior A Open. At meron po tayong apat na lanes na nagsumasagwan for the 500 meters dash. Um, and let's see, could we I think this is lane number two, am I right? Um, ito lane number two. Mukhang CSDC liquid assets po ang nao na. At mukha, this is unofficial ha. At na, na lane number three, 23 dra 22 dragons. Na lane number four, Windy City dragons. Mukhang pantay pantay lang po talaga sila dito sa screen namin and this beautiful um, Nathan Benderson Park building. So um, we'll find out. Malalaman po natin kung malapit na mga 50 meters kung sino po talaga mananalo. Pero mukhang lane four ang na na ngayon kasi mukhang nagpipick up at nag the last kick na sila. At let's see, no, mukhang, wow, strong finish. It's going to be lane number two and four. CSDC ah! coming to the finish line with Windy City coming third. In third place, it will be 22 Dragons followed by... Tampa River. Yeah! Congratulations to all the teams. Don't forget to hydrate because we don't want anyone fainting in the medical bay. And if you can read the unofficial results, they'll just come up on screen and okay. we'll continue our interview. In Tagalog. All right, event 188 and standard senior A open. Meron po tayo in lane. Uh, first, first place unofficial is CSDC Liquid Assets. In, lane, um, in place number two, you've got USA Windy City Dragons. And in third place, you've got um, 22 Dragons. Fourth place, Tampa River Dragon Boa. All Boa? Right. All right. Oh, no, Bolt. <laughs> Bolt. Okay, I was like, what's a Boa? Hey, <laughs> not bad. Look look at the time, Carrie. Very close. Look at the time. It's just like one second. Like a second, two seconds. Wow. How do you drag? When, when is the last time you dragon boat? Oh, don't ask. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, you should go back. I, I know, I know. So uh, there's yeah. something around your neck here. Yeah. Let's let's continue it's our interview. It's called my ID. It's called my ID. No, it's not your ID because I'm hearing ID. a cling, cling, cling sound. Oh, what yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah, the cling, cling sound is, um, ladies and gentlemen, the fourth gold medal for the Philippines. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. I am not kidding you guys out there in the internet world and in the in the crowd. I have a firecracker <laughs> here by all means. So, Mary Beth, let's go back to our discussion about sure. the racing in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest race in the Philippines? Biggest race? Oh, gosh, that is tricky. Um, biggest race is um, we have the Philippine Dragon Boat Federation. All the regattas are pretty big. Um, we also have, like, our team, Triton Dragon Boat Racing Team, we have, like, about 300 members, 100 active because we're like, you know, a huge team. We created our own event. <laughs> now, with that many members, why couldn't you guys send more teams to the club crew? 
because um, what happens is a uh, pandemic, remember, U.S. Embassy closed down. Not everybody could really get a schedule for the U.S. visa. In fact, PADS had this huge challenge. They only got their scheduled interview a week prior this event. No way. Yes way. Uh -uh. So that's why, that's where I come in. So I'm Manila based, all of them are Cebu based. And they would fly to Manila to get the interview. Then they would wait until the US passports or the US visa would come out. And then they would be, they would fly back to Cebu. And then those that, that just came back, the, the late US visas, I would, I would bring them to PAL Cargo and have it shipped to Cebu. And so you imagine, it is not just this race we're having a challenge with, but the weight of the, the, the US passports or the US visas, they were, a bunch of them were in the Mactan International Airport for like 12 hours. Crazy. Yeah. Since yeah. getting here, are they having a good time? Great time. You have no idea the, the Sarasota Filipino community support. Like day one, we didn't know what we were going to eat. And then our coach just reached out. We're like, okay, guys, we're hungry. We need help. And then boom, next day, overflow of food. It's like we were just offering food and drinks with the people around us. We even fed like the Sarasota County officers and, and those who needed hydration just get it from our tent. And you know what? The IDBF, the club crews that are here, overwhelming support, applause, love. Wow. That I mean, I would do this over and over again. Like. So did you take time off from work to come here? Of course, yeah. <laughs> and who do you work for? I work for this international company that does voiceovers. So I do a lot of voiceovers for the United States of America. What's the famous voiceover you did recently? Uh, I did one for like a, 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 the local version of like Moana. So, because my hair is crazy, right? So, um, I was supposed to go to Hong Kong Disneyland and I was supposed to be Moana on stage. But then pandemic hit and then boom. And yeah, there was auditions for that. Like 500 people auditioned to be Moana. And I came in with a whole Moana outfit with my crazy hair. And then the, 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 the casting director goes, that's her. And they made me dance this Hawaiian thing. And they're like, okay, you don't have tattoos. I'm like, no, no tattoos. Let me see your teeth. And then boom. Next thing I know, yeah, you're it. And can then you, can yeah. you give me a sound of Moana right now? Um, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. No. Ad lib it. You know, like right now, I don't. Uh, give me a line. I need a. I need a script. I want to read it. Try. Try something. Uh. Uh. Gosh, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm thinking of. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I caught. I <laughs> you caught, caught me. I caught you Mary caught Beth me. off guard yeah, here. You did. That's she's look, she's looking I'm at googling. her phone. I'm Googling. I'm Googling. I'm going to Google. While you, while you Google, I'll ask mm -hmm. you another question sure. of, of interest. Sure. When's the last time you raced? Wow. I raced this year. Yeah. I regatta won in, in PDBF. Okay. So that was like, I think, around April. And then after this, I'm going to be flying back to the, the Philippines in Manila because we're going to have a race in July 31. So I only have one day to recover wow. from a 28-hour flight wow. and trip. <laughs> that's a that's a big big uh, duty for you to come all the way here to Sarasota, Florida, for the Pads Group. Hey, you know, uh, being handpicked by the founders of Triton, being approved by the captains of Triton, being handpicked by the coach, that was like a huge, you know, I didn't expect a anything. huge honor. Yeah, it is. It that's, is. That it's is so, so great. Yeah. Now, with the Philippine Dragon Boat uh, mm -hmm. uh, Federation, mm -hmm. who's now the president? Oh, okay. The president. Uh, <laughs> You're going. You're actually ca catching me off guard right now, because I know. All, oh, um, Japok. Uh, uh, yes, Attorney Japok is actually one of the secretaries. We have Madame Marsha Cristobal. Then we also have. Um, oh no, I'm gonna get killed. I'm gonna get. <laughs> I'm gonna get kicked out of PDVF. Why did you ask me these so questions? So Marsh, Marsh, Marsha, Marsha Cristobal is is um, part of the of the founding of the association right now. That's right. Attorney Japok is there. And oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I know his face, but he's going to kill me. I that's okay. That's okay, Mary yeah. Beth. <laughs> I kind of put you on the spot by calling you up here. Um, Marsha, I know you're probably online watching the races from oh the man. Philippines. Marsha, I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, I saw you before the COVID pandemic started. But I hope to again see you again soon. I can't cheat. There's no Wi-Fi. I can't even Google the answers. <laughs> I can't okay. even Google Mo Mo Moana's lyrics. Ah. No worries. No worries. I'm going to start asking you questions. So why aren't you paddling anymore? I have stopped paddling for many years now. Why? I was paddling before. From paddling, I went over to coaching. 
from coaching, I went over to officiating, uh-huh. and I've basically stayed in the fishing capacity now on the West Coast. So I do a lot of races in Vancouver, Arizona, Denver, San Francisco. So I travel a circuit on the West Coast, mm-hmm. and I support a lot of races. So dragon boating is very dear to my heart. We meet friends like yourself. Uh-huh. I see friends from Italy, from Singapore, Hong Kong, and they become true friends over the years. So I've stayed within the sport because of what it's given to me. And like you, uh, we love the sport. Yeah, we do. We do. You should get back into it. You get. You got to get back into the water and figure out if you're going to meet an alligator at the end of the finish line. That's why I'm up here. <sighs> Take a look. There's boat number one wow. for the next race. You're going to help me in Tagala. Okay. I will do it in English. Oh, sure. So when we do it, you have to just give me a little break to speak a little English, and then <laughs> I go back to Tagala, and no we go problem. back and forth. Got it, got it, got it. So this is race number? 189. That's a standard BCP women? Standard boat. And BCP Stands means for? breast cancer paddlers. Oh, so this is the okay. breast cancer division. Okay, all right. They're they're wearing pink, right? They're all in pink. Not necessarily. Some teams do dress in pink. Um, some just re- wear uh, normal jersey colors. But mm-hmm. most BCP paddlers uh, use a color of pink to represent the breast cancer division. So we have how many boats in this division? Uh, we have four. And how many are in the water? Right now, one, as I see it. Okay, you need to get your eyes checked, girl. <laughs> That's the start line, right? There's one across. Okay, where's the And two? there's one going this way. Where's this way? Look at the white official boat. You'll see the boat just turning now. Oh, that's <laughs> another boat. <laughs> okay, there are two. There are two, so we're waiting for two more. <laughs> yeah, you know, this, okay, I'm. you want me up here because you just want, yeah, you're putting me on the spot. You, we have not seen each other for a long time, and I have this feeling that I'm going to get kicked out of the PDVF <laughs> for not knowing the PDVF president's name, although I know him a lot. Okay, third boat is out in the water, on going out of the water. You have a fourth boat is following third boat, of course. You know, four is... As these boats come finish. through attenuator, as I transfer back to Mary Beth, she will be speaking Tagala and I'll be speaking English. Yes! At nandiyan na po tayo mga kaibigan, lumalabas na po yung pangatlong bangka at kasunod po yung pangapat. Again, this is the standard boat of the breast cancer um, paddlers. So these are the survivors. Sa so mga meron pong nag- pinagdadaanan dyan ngayon at meron, um, hindi nyo alam kung pwede ka pa kayong mag-paddle sa isang sport, again, you pwede po kayong mag-sign up dito sa category na to. That was boat number two, Dragon Boat Charleston, just coming through the, antenna, at the break in the water. In lane number four, from Hamilton, in Ontario, this is not a breast. Oh, okay, all right. And uh, one, well, uh, event one eight nine. I'm looking at the water right now, and it seems like they are lined up. Naglaline up na po sila ngayon para po ma paghandaan ng event one eight nine. Yes. Okay. Okay, you stay in Tagala, I stay in English, <laughs> and we share this commentary on race one eighty nine from Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> the time here locally is two forty seven p.m. This race was scheduled for. 2 p.m. So we're behind schedule by about 47 minutes uh, to the time here. Magandang balita yon kasi kahapon dalawang oras tayo nag-delay. <laughs> we have some people here who are watching online and saying, represent uh, the Filipinos. I love it and you can see it right here. Uh, Where's that? Some t- Make us to noise proud. Yes. Yeah. You can see that one? Yeah, I can. I can. I can. And there's a couple more comments here. Oh my God, I love this. By Lisa R- Raymond. Mahusa. Oh wait, Mahusa Mary Beth. Hi, Mackel. So, Mackie. Mackie Desiderio. Hello, hello, hello. Wow, you know you have the best view. This is like the penthouse suite. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but you're working for it. Okay, and right now, mga uh, kabayan ko, <laughs> um, mukhang nagla-line up na po yung apat na bangka. Again, standard po, standard boat po ito. So, meron po tayong mga 20 paddlers sa isang bangka. Kasama po ang caller at kasama po ang steers. The Which wind is right now coming from the south to the north. It's pushing the boats towards the start line. Kailangan po talaga malakas ang steers kasi po kung hindi magaling ang steers, pwede pong tumaob ang bangka dahil lang po sa hangin. Kung makikita niyo po sa screen, mukhang parang kalma lang ang mga tubig. Pero ang, ang totoo dyan is pag may nakikita ko yung mga ripple effect, yan na po, nakikita natin na may malakas po na hangin. In lane number one from New uh, from US of A, Empire Dragons. Lane number two from USA, Dragon Boat Charleston. Lane number three from the local area, NBP Paddling. And lane number four from Canada, Not Abreast. 
Wow, that's actually a name. Okay, so mga kababayan, kaibigan, kapamilya, kapuso at mga nanonood po sa atin mula sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Uh, ito na po ang Event 189. Nagla-line up na po sila. Medyo may pagkahirapan po talaga mag-align dahil hindi lang po uh, hangin ang kalaban. Pero meron din pong, yun nga, yung water condition, tsaka yung paggalaw din ng bangka. Kailangan po talaga equal weight, kaliwa at kanan. This is the BCP women in race 189 coming from Sarasota, Florida, both in English and Tagalog. Tagalog. Thank you very much. And here's the start of the race. We've got the four teams and the Breast Cancer Paddlers Women Standard Boat Division. This is round number two coming your way in just a few seconds. Boom. <laughs> 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 that was so anticlimactic there, Mary Beth. No, hey, at least I said a word. <laughs> I don't know if you were going to go to commercial or there was a break, but normally when somebody does that to me, there's like a commercial break in between. Um, Pinoy represent, yes. Hi, Mackie, again. Thank you so much. Um, you know what? In the Philippines, it is... It is. What time is it? It's 2.50 in the morning. You're just waking them up with your enthusiasm. And no, you're putting me on the spot. Wow, that looks gorgeous. Kung makikita po natin sa YouTube um, live stream, naka-align na po lahat ng boat. So, makikita po natin na may mga metal. Hindi siya metal detector. Ayan na po! Pasimula na po ang, ang race, number eight, event 189. Ito po ang standard boat ng BCP Women. Uh, mukhang pantay-pantay pa lang siya ngayon. Pero nangunguna po ang lane number three. Three. Yan po. Um, yan po yung power starts, uh, meron po silang power starts. Ngayon mukhang malakas po ang lahat ng kaliwa at kanan. Kailangan po talaga sabay-sabay para umusad ang bangka pa papuntang finish line. Lane number three. Off the start line, it is lane number three, NB paddling from the local Sarasota region. In first place, in second, it will be boat number four from Hamilton, not abreast. In third, it is going to be Empire Dragons. And in fourth, and still not out of it, it is boat number two, Dragon Boat Charleston. Coming down the race course after 200 meters, it is still boat number three, NB paddling, followed by not abreast, then Empire, and finally, Dragon Boat Charleston. Pero hindi po po nagtatapos ang race na yan dahil po pwede pang humabol ang boats 1 and 2. Kasi po, 500 meters po ang distansya para po matapos ang uh, race na ito. So, kung mag-power lungs, mag-pick up, mag-glass kick, mag ang boats 1 and 2, pwede pa pong mahabol ang lane 3 at 4. Nathan Salazar, eat your heart out. I've got a better announcer here with Mary ah! Beth. <laughs> And coming down the race course, we're at the 250 meter mark. We're wow. going to turn our eyes to the race course. It's still race lane number three in the lead. That is NBP paddling. In second, it is going to be not oh, abreast. abreast. In lane number four, Salamit. In third place, it is going to be boat number one, Empire. And in fourth, unofficially still, Dragon Boat Charleston. Boom. <laughs> yeah, you're going to kill me again. But ladies and gentlemen, we are now, um, nandito na po tayo sa huling 50 meters ng race na ito. Mukhang nangunguna pa talaga hindi. Pantay ang boat 4 at boat 3. So tingnan na lang po natin kung sino pong makakatulak sa bangka. Mukhang boat 4 na po ang nangunguna. So makikita po natin, this is the last 20 meters. Ito po yung exciting part kasi pwede pong humabol ang lane, ang boat 3. At mukhang humahabol po ang boat 3. Ayan, boat 4, boat 3, head-to-head -head combat na po yan. So mukhang boat 3 pa ang nangunguna. This is the unofficial results. Congratulations! To boat number three. Again, that's not the that final. That is the NBP paddling coming across the line first. In second, unofficially, not abreast, followed by Empire Dragons from New York, and finally, the Dragon Boat Charleston. Yes. That was race number 189 from Sarasota. Wow. So, you know, I have a question for yeah, you. Yeah, please. Why? Why here? Why, why have the, I'm just really curious, why Sarasota, Florida to have so, the IDBF? So the IDBF uh, sends out a bid to all the countries, mm -hmm. and other countries all put in a bid. Yeah. And through their council, they select a race site. So this is done by a committee, and the IDBF selects a different city every time. Oh, I see. But I heard like it's going to be in Sarasota, Florida for the next one? For the U.S. Uh, that is, I believe, 
for the U.S. of A. Uh, you for have a cheat code sheet right there. We, we do. How come you have a cheat sheet? So the World Dragon Boat Racing Championships uh -huh. are going to be in Hong Kong, Ooh. August 7th to 13th in 2023. Wow. The next club crew is going to be at Ravenna, Italy on September 5th to the 8th, 2024, followed by Germany. Nice. And that's the World Dragon Boat Racing Championships based on countries, 25. July 2025. Gosh, we have like years to, you know, save up. So what you heard mm -hmm. about Sarasota, Florida mm -hmm. is where the U.S. National Race will be held. I see. So don't get that confused with right, IDBF. Right. And that's what you heard. Yeah, that's what I heard. So we're like, oh, we're coming back to Sarasota? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if anybody from the Philippines would like to come to Sarasota, F Florida, Mary Beth will have you uh, brought I over. I know, I was gonna say, um, Carrie is gonna be sponsoring your ticket. I'm Canadian. So? Okay, come up to Vancouver, Canada. I'll uh, sponsor you up there. All right, let's do this today. Anytime. Okay, now, let's so, go. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So uh, if you guys are interested, uh, please come back to Sarasota, Florida anytime. We'd love to have you here. The IDBF and the USDBF have been very supportive of all the international teams. Totally. We hope to see another few more IDBF, or sorry, another set of Filipino teams come across the water. Yeah, we hope so too. We were the here. only Philippine delegation. We were so surprised. We thought, you know, other Dragon Boat teams would come over, but then, wow, okay, Paz is the only Philippine delegation. The LA County is also a Filipino team. Really? <laughs> Mabuhay, I'm Filipina. <laughs> so, okay. It's uh, Nathan Salazar's joke with I, uh, with me about this. Uh, explained his whole team is all uh, Filipinos. Filipinos. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Filipinos practically go all over the world and not just because they're nurses. Or caregivers. Are yeah, you are yeah. you a nurse? No, I'm an event host. Remember? Exactly. Yeah. I have a gift on oh. behalf of the USDBF Yay. for you. Oh gosh, thank you so this much. This is from Nathan Nathan Benderson Park. Thank it you so much. It is their official pin, and we oh, welcome you. you here to Sarasota, Florida. Oh, thank you. You know what? You're not the only one with a gift. Oh, I take the medal. I, I, uh, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, Drew, where's your medal? Give me your medal. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me. Wait, wait, wait. So, on behalf of, I hope I. Is, is John here there. from Crossbone? Yeah, John is downstairs with Pat. You know, the husband and wife yeah, couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've lent like their, their Crossbone paddles to the whole Pads team oh, and the bags and stuff. wonderful. So on behalf of Pads, the Dragon Boat Racing Team, um, this is our thank you for having us over. So <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's narrow wood. So that's like one of the rare woods in the Philippines right now. So it's illegal to chop it down. Not that I'm saying that we did. So <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's just, it's a very rare wood. And, and thank you for being, you know. Mary Beth, thank you very much for being here. For yeah. the ones online, I appreciate all the comments and support of the Philippines national team uh, Yay. pads. Yay, thank you. I hope the Philippines will still accept me in PDBF. So <laughs> uh, am I ex 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 exiting as well? Bye, Cal. Good night. Race 192, 193 to Marshalling now. 192 and 193 to Marshalling now. Also getting race 194, 194. This is race number 189, and we thank you very much, Mary Beth, for coming up to visit our announcing booth. Again, if you guys would like her to announce any race, give her a shout on Facebook. 
And uh, yeah, we're back onto the race now. We're calling race number 190, U24, and ACP Open. In the 190 race in Mary Beth, you'll see the uh, Filipino team in lane number one, the U24 team. That is the LA County DBC, coached by Nathan Salazar. In lane number two, Necker Dragon from Germany. Lane number three from Canada, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. Lane number four, Cal Dragon Boat. And the ACP division, lane number five, it is Nathan Benderson Park paddling in lane five. And lane name number six, Dragon Boat Charleston. This is an important message to all teams. All teams, important message. Please hand in your crew list for tomorrow as soon as possible. If we do not receive your crew list as soon as possible, you will not be racing tomorrow. Again, this is an important message for all team managers. Please hand in your crew list for tomorrow's race now at Race Edmund. <laughs> Online, we have Nathan Benderson Park, whoever is typing the message, being a little bit biased. N-B-P. N-B-P. Hmm. I wonder who's writing in the uh, tower here. I still haven't figured it out, but uh, love the comments from the moderator of Nathan Benderson Park. I think uh, you're going with Bob and challenge each other on that one, so that's great to see. Ellen, great race, NBP. I was yelling and screaming a lot. LOL, congratulations to everyone. So, we're just a few minutes away, and you'll see four boats to the right of your screen, two boats to your left. Those four to the right is the U24. With three rows in between, we then see the ACP. Again, the three-row gap is to avoid the U24 from creating too much wash that may hit the ACP team and cause some disturbance to their boat. So this is more of a safety issue, if anything. In lane number one, in the white boat, or sorry, white shirts, you see LA County, DBC. Lane number two from Germany, Necro Dragon. Lane number three, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. And lane number four, Cal. This is round number two for both U24 and ACP. And to our moderator in the building somewhere, your friends, NBP Paddling. And lane number six, Dragon Boat Charleston. NBP having a little difficult time getting into the basket. Uh, looks like they're trying to back the boat out of it so that they can get their head back in. If that head comes down, it may catch the front of the boat. And you can see the wind pushing this boat right past the start line here. So Helm is trying to call him back. And they're back past our before the basket, which is great. And now they're going to get the nose into the basket. And you're going to have the stairs uh, just draw that boat back to the left side a little bit. But one of the dangers of drawing a boat over on the left side. Oh, and they just called the start on them. It was lined up and they called start. And NBP, awesome job in correcting that boat back online. So off the line, right from the get-go, we have lanes 1, LA, Necker Dragon 2, Pickering 3, Cal 4. And on the ACP side, we have... 
NBP Paddling and Dragon Boat Charleston in lane number six. And off the line it is lane number three, Pickering. Pickering taking a lead over boat number two, Necker Dragon. LA County in third. In fourth, it is going to be Cal. Coming off to the 100 meter, 150 meter mark, it is still Pickering, followed by Necker Dragon and LA County. Cal in fourth. On the APC side, it is MBP Paddling in the lead over Dragon Boat Charleston. NBP paddling having a nice race here with over a boat length difference. Going back to the U24 team. U24, we have Neck of the Dragons in the lead, followed by either two or one. It's going to be a fight between Neck. Ne Necker Dragon and LA County and over a boat length difference we got Cal treading those U24 boats. Going back to the ACP side, ACP NBP pedaling very strong here, coming through the halfway mark, it's them in the lead by themselves, it's for them to lose. Jar Dragon Boat Charleston catching up to them possibly, but there's not a lot of room left. Coming to the last 150 meter mark, it is Pickering sending a statement to all the other in the U24 division. This is our race. We are going to win it. Come chase us down. It is boat number three, Pickering in the lead, followed by LA County. Then is Nick the Dragon, followed by Cal Dragon Boat. And look at LA County. No, this is not your race. This is our race. It's going to be Pickering, LA County. No, 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 no. It's my race. Look at this fight. LA's going to run out of room, possibly. But look at MVP paddling out there. They're still commanding a race in the ACP division. Coming to the fa finish line, it's going to be Pickering in command. LA County running out of room in second. In third, Necker Dragons. And in fourth, it will be Cal going to the outside lane, lane five. Look at the spread. MVP paddling has now a two-boat length lead. Give it up for MP Pelling in the ACP division. This is round number two. And followed by the Dragon Boat Charleston coming to the finish line. It's going to be NBP pedaling. And then with the two boat length, we have the Dragon Boat Charleston coming to the finish line. And that was a great race without a Dragon Boat head. Has anyone seen a Dragon Boat head for boat number six? It's missing. Well, we'll find it. I think it probably got dropped off at the start of the race. And uh, we're off to the results. In first place, Pickering Dragon Boat with a time of 212.41. In lane number two, LA County coming out of the backfield with a time of 214.53. Germany Nectar Dragon holding for half the race in second, but losing ground at the later part. 215.51. Cal Dragon Boat. 222.38 in the ACP division to our moderator downstairs. Congratulations, your NBP paddling went right through to the finish on their own at 241. And Charleston with a time of 251.61. Congratulations, everyone. This call for race 194, 195. 193 needs South Breeze and NBP paddling ASAP. 193 South Breeze and NBP paddling. Race 194, 195, and 196 to Marshalling.
And now coming up, we have race 191, the U24 women and BCP women small boat. And the gates are down, the boats are off. In this race, we have three U24 crews and three BCP crews. In lane one, LA County. In lane two, Cal Dragon Boat. In lane three, Pickering Dragon Boat Club. In lane four, BCP, Dragonheart Vermont. In lane five, Pink Dragonistas. And in lane six, Hope Afloat USA. Leading the charge here is boat number three, Pickering Dragon Boat Club, putting on an impressive performance in these small boats, followed by LA County, just ahead of Cal Dragon Boat in the U24 women's division by about a half seat, just by about a dragon head. And again, we will see if Cal Dragon Boat can bring themselves up and pass LA County in the coming meters. In the BCP division, we see Dragonheart Vermont in lane four and Pink Dragonistas in lane five. Apologies, there is no lane six. Six is a scratch here. The Pink Dragonistas of Germany in lane five are leading the Dragonheart Vermont, which is in lane four by about two or three seats now. We'll see if Dragonheart Vermont can keep up to the Germans. Again, still in the lead is Pickering Dragon Boat Club in the U24 women's division, leading out of lane three, followed by LA County in lane one, and Cal Dragon Boat falling behind just a bit, behind LA County. LA County walked up a bit. We can see strong and clean technique from most of these crews, especially Pickering. Let's take a look at that. Look at their nice high rate coming into their finish here. And we can see minimal splash on the exits and entries of boat three. That's Pickering. Cal Dragon Boat still hanging on in lane two over there, paddling as hard as they can coming into their finish. LA County Dragon Boat Club right here in lane one will pull a silver in this. Second place, excuse me. And on the outside, in lane five, the Pink Dragonistas are coming into their finish. LA County with open water over Cal Dragon Boat now. Cal Dragon Boat putting everything they've got into these final few strokes. And Dragonheart Vermont is also over the line in boat four. Race 193, last call, NBP paddling. NBP paddling, last call to race 193 at Marshling. Calling 194, 95, and 96. And now the unofficial results in first place, Pickering Dragon Boat Club with 226.066. In second, LA County Dragon Boat Club with a 227.556. In third, Cal Dragon Boat with a 235.915. For BCP, we have Pink Dragonistas in first with a 233.988. And Dragonheart Vermont in second with a 237.069. Mm. As we get into the latter part of the races today, we're doing really well. Uh, we are going to go to race number. Two o two. What race number are we on right now? We are currently on race one ninety one. One ninety two. Coming up. Ninety two. Excuse me. So that means we are only nine races away. No, 10 races away. That's right. So 10 races were done. 10 now, races to go. We're going to lose Matthew here for some reason in about 4 o'clock Sarasota time. That is right. I have to leave a little bit early. But I did want to, while Cal is still on the water, if they can hear me. Hi, Cal. Hi, Cal. We wanted to congratulate their seniors. We have a whole list of their seniors um, who are graduating from the UC Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley. We have Cameron, Skyler, Clark, Cody, Sean Chen, Hyunju, Anson, Lim, Rosa, and Jasmine. Congratulations to all of these seniors for graduating and especially for sticking with the team through COVID. They have made the team a wonderful community over the past few years. And this will be the end of their CCWC uh, career for some of them, especially in the under 24s division and in the university division as well. So we had some IDBF officials playing a little joke on me yesterday. I was online reading comments and somebody named Sylvia Wong came on and started chatting with me. And I was reading her comments and I said, oh, where are you? And she goes, oh, I'm Australia at something 
I can't remember, 7 o'clock in the morning, whatever. So I'm thinking, oh, I have a Doppler gang for Sylvia in Australia. Well, this morning, <laughs> Sylvia comes up to me and she starts laughing. I'm looking at her like, what's going on? And she goes, oh, that was me. <laughs> so, yeah, some of these IDBF officials can be a little bit quirky and funny at times. If you ever get a chance, go up and talk to them. They're very nice people. They come from around the world with very different experiences. And if you just chat with them, you'll find out a lot of stories about their background, who they paddle with, who they've coached, and how and if they officiate. So when we get to share these ideas, uh, we build a better and brighter community for all of us in dragon boating. Um, we share experiences as either coaches, as either officials, or even racers. At the end of tomorrow, that is the day when we see the traditional trading of jerseys. I saw Matthew here today. He's eyeing a few jerseys out there, and he kind of came up to me and goes, Gary, I got a fire truck jersey, and I just smiled. He actually found someone on fire truck to switch with. Um, so, yeah, this is one of those things about uh, dragon boat racing that has started from many, many, many years ago. Everyone eyes each other's jerseys and they're willing to trade. Uh, I know the one of the hardest ones to ever get was Mr. Canoe. Mr. Canoe from Taiwan. It was pr like prying their shirt off their body. They never ever want to trade. Um, Canadians, <laughs> let's trade. But like Bob said yesterday, or the two days ago, one of his big mistakes was trading for a jer jersey that was extra small. <laughs> he didn't realize it. Um, in the last couple of years, I've seen people trade like two for one or three for one because some teams v r really value their jerseys. Uh, Matthew, what jerseys do you want this year? Well, because I'm racing in Premier Mixed, and today was the last day for Premier Mixed Standard Boat, uh, uh, most of us already traded our jerseys. Really? Yeah, so like I mentioned, I got a fire truck tank, um, <laughs> and then some of my kids at LA County were incredibly kind, and I'm so honored uh, that they gave me a long sleeve with the LA County um, CCWC. They gave it to you. They gave it to me, did not trade for it. They want something from you. <laughs> <laughs> They're just incredibly nice kids. I um, check your car if you've lost your tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to trade, uh, Matthew's up here. He's got uh, he's got a Buzz a shirt from Hong Kong. It's called Buzz Dragon Boating. If you want to trade for it, uh, you want to trade for your shoes. I do not, and I don't want to get rid of this Buzz Polo either. <laughs> I have to say, um, but I am trading. Yeah, a, another Catch Twenty Two long sleeve with a friend of mine on Cal. So looking forward to that later. So did you know Barb was uh, got me to try to step on your white shoes? So what is this about your white shoes that you have? You have some really clean shoes. Is this the one? These are probably the white shoes, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just keep my sneakers very, very white. Yes. <laughs> so, so Barb Michaels, I have a task to complete for you. Come either today or tomorrow. We're going to stomp on Matthew's <laughs> white shoes. <laughs> I will say one of the other things that a, a lot of us chat about, and especially in the dragon boat world, is really bad tan lines. Oh, and this is a very, this very entertaining, <laughs> funny thing. I have a lot of terrible tan lines on my feet because I've worn the same sandals to race for six years now. And yeah, it's really, really great. <laughs> you know, you could get these tanning uh, sprays that you can spray your foot. To, f to fill in the gaps. <laughs> Just to fill in the gaps. Yeah, it's really bad. After a week of racing here, you go home, you take a shower, and you look in the mirror and like, hmm. <laughs> Sorry, but I physically see Matthew too to me. It looks like he's worn a bikini on his foot and it's got like bikini line. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize for that. <laughs> for those online, if you only saw it, you would have laughed. Anyway, yeah. on the live stream, we have <laughs> traveling Can Canadian beach bums traded two jerseys already, Edmonton for South Breeze and a beautiful fire truck long sleeve. They got one more and they're eyeing up the beast boat jerseys. It sounds like Fire Truck has got a really nice jersey to trade for. Um, Matthew Salazar talking? No, it is not Matthew Salazar. My name is Matthew Ow. Matthew Salazar is racing on the LA County Dragon Boat Club's U24 boat, I believe. Michael, uh, this Matthew is better looking. <laughs> 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 I didn't just say that out loud, did I? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, whoever's got some jerseys, yeah, put it online. Also, if you're looking for a jersey out there in the internet world, put it online. People will see these comments and may contact you directly. So if you're looking for a jersey to trade from around the world, put your name, number, and uh, not number, but put your name and how to contact you. 
online and tell us what jersey you're looking for. As we look down the race course, uh, we have some boats about to come off the water. We are now 10 races away from finishing the day. So far, so good. I do see a little dark cloud. No, it's not little in Florida standard, but it looks like it's growing. It's a little dark, and we know something's coming our way shortly, but we'll hopefully get 10 more races off and have a wonderful Saturday evening. One more day of racing. That will be for the 500-meter races on Sunday. Follow Sunday, we have the Paddler's Party, I understand. That's that's right, that will be the closing party tomorrow night. So if you haven't already, go buy your closing party tickets. Um, they will be very, very exciting. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And also don't forget to purchase the IDBF 30th anniversary book. This book is a celebration of 30 years of IDBF, and the book is called The Modern Sport of Dragon Boat Racing. Uh, in the book, you will find all of this information about things like Chinese cultural traditions, the beginnings of the IDBF, and all the other Dragon Boat Federations underneath it, the development of Dragon Boat, and lots and lots of photographs. Race number 195 needs Windy City Dragons, Ottawa CSDC, and 22 Dragons to marshalling immediately. That's rates 195 and 196 to marshalling. 195, Windy City, Ottawa CSDC, and 22. As I look out my left of my window, I see one of our chief officials, Jeannie, with a fishing rod and no shoes. Matthew, what's going on over here? You know, I'm not quite sure, but she just waved, and we are very glad that she is here, one of our incredible IDBF officials here uh, at Sarasota. <laughs> She's fishing off the balcony with a fishing rod, and I think they're passing some information down, and that's what it is. We've, we've really stooped to the next level of transferring information, <laughs> and it's uh, a bucket of some sort, and there's some paper in there, and they fish it over the line to the floor below us, and I think that is just the uh, uh, scorekeeping area, I believe. But uh, that's a new one I've never seen before in the race tower. Our uh, vendors row, do not forget about Regatta Sports. With Regatta Sports, the official merchandiser for the 13th Annual Club Crew World Championships here in Sarasota, Florida. Pick up your gear, bring them home to your family. These are awesome gifts to our official a vendor here, Burnwater Paddles. Do not forget to try out their paddles. They have their big draw tomorrow at 2 p.m. Our vendors in Vendors Row, great food. Try them out. Make sure you get enough food for your body to refuel. Uh, we have some amazing races again for tomorrow. Uh, our beer, Bud Light. Go into the beer after the races. Make sure you get uh, your drinks. And let's continue with the racing. This is race number 192, and that is boat number five coming through. And boat number five, that is the Nekla Dragon. This is a great shot. This is right between the, the breakwater here where the teams come through. To your right a little bit, you'll see our marshalling area for the boats. Here comes the next boat. This is Senior A Woman, small boat, round number two. And let's take a look at who's coming through here. It's hard to see what number it is. From our tower, we can barely see what that boat is. It's boat number four. That's Edmonton, EDBRC. And if that's four, this must be three is my guess. What do you think, Matthew? I think it just might be. <laughs> we will see. Both wrong. <laughs> it's boat one. It's Chicago. It's Windy City. Windy City Dragons. Well, well, so one of the boats that we just saw go through was Edmonton Dragon Boat Racing Club, boat number four. Now, EDBRC is based out of Edmonton, Alberta, which is in Canada. Um, they medaled at CCWC 2016 in Australia and at CCWC 2018 in Zeged, Hungary. They placed in the top ten. We are very excited that they're here, and I'm sure they're very excited to be racing. So I just found out from Janine uh, what that fishing rod was all about. So in that little bucket that she's fishing down to the bottom floor is the race results that we post on the board. So we have a volunteer who picks it up and sends it to the race board to just let everyone know what the results are. 
Now coming through the attenuator wall is in fact boat three, which is 22 dragons out of Montreal. Now, 22 Dragons was founded in 2003 in Montreal, and they are very inclusive. They have teams from Junior all the way up to Senior C, as well as BCP and Paradragon teams. I don't see your friend Wendy on this boat. I don't think she's on this boat. No, she is not a Senior A woman. Oh, good call. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her earlier. She drummed the 22 Dragons boat that... Uh, that beat my team, Catch-22. Uh, she's super awesome, and she's one of the people that we interviewed a few days ago, uh, who is the chair of the IDBF Youth Commission. I give money on her to take you down. <laughs> she probably would. <laughs> All right, let's go to comments online to see what everyone's looking at here today. I've got Kelly, who's still online. Kelly, I don't think you work at all by the sounds of it. Oh, today's Saturday. So go Edmonton. I'm going to throw up. Why? Why way harder to watch than race, <laughs> Kelly? That's just a little bit too much detail. Lynn, fishing equals lowering race results to the ground level so they can be posted on the race results board. Oh, well Lynn is answering the same question. Um, hello, announcers. Yesterday, you mentioned the Ukrainian team selling merchandise. By the time we get there, they were sold out. Do you know? if they replenish stock. Uh, Todd, I don't know the answer. I will ask the question, but thank you for supporting the Ukrainian team for sure. John, go EDBRC. Uh, go Kathleen Hatch. Happy anniversary. This is the first time in 32 years that she is away from her husband, Derek. Wow. Nice touch, De John, for remembering um, Kathleen and Derek's uh, anniversary. That's a very nice touch. Nice message as well. Victoria, Windy City with love. Uh, Bob has disappeared from our chat. I wonder what Bob's doing. He's probably sleeping again. Great Racing DHVT, Vermont sister. So proud of your fight. Victoria is asking what race number we're on. It's race number 192. Kelly saying happy anniversary, Kathleen and Derek. A uh, little late, Kelly. You missed it. John got you on that one before you did. And now on the water is race 192, the Senior A Women Small Boat. Again, this is round two of the 500 meter. They will do one more round after this. Reapproaching the line is, in fact, that boat four that we've been talking so much about, Edmonton Dragon Boat Racing Club. Next to them in lane five is Necker Dragon. And in lane one is Windy City Dragons, lane two is the Wansi Dragons, and in lane three, 22 Dragons from Montreal. Marty Gray to admin. Marty Gray to race admin. We have found something of yours. Marty Gray to admin. Race 196, 197, and 198 to marshalling, please. 196, 197, and 198. 195, Ottawa, you're urgently needed. Now, there are five boats in this heat, and with some of this wind, some of this current, it is difficult to really line yourself up and get in those buckets nicely. We see lane one is re-approaching the line. That is the Windy City Dragons. Over in lane five, though, we see Necker Dragon. Now, Necker Dragon was founded in 2001 in Heilbronn, which is a city in southern Germany. They paddle on the Necker River, hence the name. 
and have sent many athletes to the German national team and have won many, many medals nationally and internationally. At the 2019 European Club Crew Championships in Seville, they were the most successful team overall. And we'll talk more about them in a few. But now off to the races is race 192, Senior A Women's Small Boat. Taking a very strong start, we have 22 Dragons in lane three, and 1C Dragons in lane two also paddling very hard here. Windy City from Chicago is not taking this lying down out of lane one. They're into their stretch in this 500 meter. They may be sitting at, I don't know, maybe 65 or 68 strokes per minute. On the outside, it looks like Necker Dragons being left behind a bit by the rest of this field. But Edmonton Dragon Boat Racing Club in lane four is not putting this down either. They're trying to catch up to 22 Dragons who are still in the lead in lane three. And out of lane one, Windy City's making a bit of a move here as well. The Wansi Dragons have lagged behind now the top three. We have 22 Edmonton and Windy City. As we're about 200 meters out, we're seeing that they're all into their settles, they're into their stretch, they're lengthening out. They're using really nice long strokes to try to glide that boat forward. A few of the steers have taken the oars out of the water, try to reduce their drag, especially in these small boats, but they have to be careful because these small boats, oh, and we see exactly what I was just talking about. You can lose control very easily. We see boat number two, that is the Wansea Dragons from Germany, are completely turned the wrong way, going towards the beach. They've all let it run. Their steer is gonna try to correct, but we'll see what the officials have to say about that and if they'll let them do Anything to make that up? Again, we see still on the field we have boats one, three, four, and five. That is the Windy City Dragons, 22 Dragons, Edmonton Racing Club, and Necker Dragon in five. As, as Matthew calls that race, I'll call the boat that's on off the course. They're just backing up right now. As they back up, they're going to try to restart themselves and back down the race course. In boat four, Edmonton Dragon Boat Racing Club is fighting off 22 Dragons, which are starting to walk on them as they come into the final stretch of this 500 meter race. They're trading off, they're trading off, and it looks like 22 is gonna take it by just a hair, followed by Edmonton and Windy City rounding this out in third. Necker Dragon coming in fourth over here. And looking back down the race course, it is boat number two. Boat number two, Wansi Dragons have backed up the boat, and as they try to reset, they're now in lane number one. Lane number one, they're going to try to switch over to lane number two and finish that race accordingly. Little disappointing, but they're still proud to finish this race under their own power. And it looks like in the middle of that race, it looks like the steer's person just got a squirrely on that steering oar. That's right. And again, in these small boats, it is so easy to lose control, and it's even more difficult to get it back, really. Once that small boat starts going a different direction and you want it to go the exact opposite, you have to put in so much work. You have to dig that oar in so deep just to try to get it to go where you want it to go. I do feel for this Helms. Uh, it is heartbreaking because everything rides on you getting that boat from point A to point B in a straight line with the least amount of resistance. So right now, she is feeling a ton of weight on her shoulders. The team itself, they've done their part, raced their race that they can, but the helms, it's hard for them. It is tough. As a steer myself, I've made a fair few mistakes, and it is, it is just really, really tough. Sometimes it's your fault, sometimes it's not. So much in Dragon Boat, we focus on the paddling, and we should. The paddlers move that boat forward, and that is incredible. But drumming and steering is also super difficult, and we love that we get to be able to talk about this. Now, the results. In first place, 22 Dragons with a 229.088. In second, Edmonton Racing Club with 229.358. In third, Windy City Dragons just behind, 229.751. Necker Dragon in fourth with a 233.511. And in fifth, the Wansi Dragons of Germany with a 340.067. We are just very glad that nobody was hurt. We're glad that they were able to finish their race, and we applaud them for their incredible performance. So we have a shout out uh, from Kim to her sister Nikki from the Dubai Diggers, and to my own from 
to her own twin, Clive. Your sister, Kim, says hi all the way from London. Kim, thank you for coming online and posting that shout out. Nikki and Clive, you've got a very, very nice sister as well. This is the next race, 193, Senior A Women, Repishage number one. That's right, we have in boat one, Tampa River Dragon Boat. In boat two, Ottawa. In lane three, Bucks, woo. In lane four, South Breeze. In lane five, Bytown. And in lane six, NBP Paddling. These are standard boats, Senior A Women, race 193. Now you're doing this race because of some team in this list, isn't it? That's right, as I've mentioned, <laughs> lane three is Bucks. <laughs> We're gonna change their team name going forward as Buck Fusion, whoop. Is that what it is that you're saying? I say woo, yeah. Oh, woo. woo. We're going to add woo to the end of their name. As we've mentioned before, too, it's very nice to see Bytown in that nice, bright neon yellow. It makes it very, very easy to pick them out in a crowd and call them in a race. Next to them, over in lane six, is NBP Paddling, Nathan Benderson Park Paddling. Of course, NBP is the very park that we are at right now. The beautiful race venue. where all six of these boats are on right now. They are backing it down a little bit. It seems they're going to re-approach the, ba the baskets <laughs> together. Now, because of some of this wind and some of this current, it is, in fact, very difficult to get them into the baskets, to get those heads into the baskets, and to keep them from falling off. That's difficult, too. Now in boat three, those of you on the live stream, we see that's Bucks County. And as they're backing up this boat, you can see the steers actually took the oar out of the water. That is a very important skill that we as steers have to learn to do, especially when you back a boat up, because otherwise that oar might actually snap or the steering arm might snap off itself. I remember I was once at a practice where I backed up a boat and it wasn't because I didn't take the oar out, but <laughs> the oar lock actually smashed into part of the dock and ripped off. It was not pretty. Did they revoke your membership? They did not. Yeah, you're lucky. Uh, race number 196 needs NBP paddling and not abreast. Race 196, NBP paddling and not abreast. I've got a comment from Head Stauber. Can you change the camera angle tomorrow and not do the back angle? Because although it makes it easier to see the host winning, we can't see the strokes. Well, we'll do our best, Head. Uh, we appreciate the comments. Uh, we'll change the angle as much as we can to show you the strokes if possible. And they're off with race 193, the Senior A Women's Standard Boat Rep 1. Coming out very strong is Ottawa Dragon Boat Club in boat two. In boat three, woo, Bucks. Again, with their classic signature explosive start, although arguably all of these teams have extremely explosive starts. Bytown in their neon in boat number five, also contending for gold here. Boat numbers four and six. South Breeze and NBP falling behind just a little bit. Oh, and Tampa's falling behind a bit, too. It looks like they are currently last in the field, but that's okay because Bucks and Bytown are taking advantage of that. They're pushing forward. The crowd has come onto the uh, beach here. They're all just going to watch the Senior A Women's Standard Boat. All the teams from the Racers Village just kind of pop their head out to see what's happening. Rory Thomas online goes, 
Go Buck Fusion. Woo, woo. And out ahead, it does look like it is Bucks, actually. Woo, uh, them woo. and Bytown are fighting for that first place here. Behind them is boat number four, South Breeze out of Southern California with a very nice, long and slow, steady stroke, especially in this 500 meter. That settle is really what matters. A finish and a start are great, but having a good body is something that not a whole ton of crews work on. And you can tell South Breeze is nice and relaxed throughout this. They have their controlled aggression. They have their organized chaos going on. Hey, Matthew. Yes. I'm not going to break your jinx here, but look at this. I think it's somebody in lane three. I think it is. I think it is, in fact, lane three, Bucks County is fighting with Bytown to come in first over the line here. Let's see who it is. Um, this is going to be... Oh, and it looks like Bucks is going to take this by about three or four seats, powering through the finish, followed by Bytown and South Breeze coming up from behind to pass Ottawa Dragon Boat Club. Just over the line is Tampa River in lane one, and in lane six, Nathan Benderson Park paddling, also an impressive performance. I see the Bucks women congratulating each other. Way to go, ladies. I am very proud of all of you. Was your dad on the team? He was not. This is the women's team. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo. Here's the results. Uh, in first place, unofficially, Bucks County Fusion, 210.62. In second place, from Canada, by town, 211.63. In third, USA South Breeze with a time of 212.43. Not that far behind with a whisker, Ottawa Dragon Boat Club, 212.86. In fifth place, Tampa River Dragon Boat Club, 215.42. And finally, the last position, it is NBP with a time of 220.08. Great job to all of these crews. Super exciting for all of these crews. Again, the three fastest out of these reps will go straight to the grand final. And now we're coming into race 194. In 194 is the Senior A Open Small Boat Round 2. And it looks like all six boats are out on the water. Very nice. We have in lane one, Necker Dragon. In lane two, the Dubai Diggers. In lane three, Dragon Aqua SE. In lane four, Wham from Seattle. In lane five, H2O Montreal. And in lane six, Bucks County Fusion. Woo! They're all coming up to the baskets now. They're going to try to get that head perfectly in the baskets so that they can line up and we can all start very evenly. I walk away from the microphone and I hear a woo! As I know that it's probably Buck Fusion on the line. It is indeed. Woo. <laughs> I love it. Now, again, with these round races, this is round two right now. Uh, after that third round, we will total those times, and that cumulative time will be used to determine medals. And they are off to the races, race 194, Senior A Open Small Boat. All of these crews, especially in these small boats, putting really all their strength they have into moving that boat from a dead stop to as fast as they physically can. Um, going into the eh, 60, 70 meter mark, they have just a long time to go here, but in boat five, H2O Montreal is out to a strong and impressive start. Lane two, the Dubai Diggers are not that far behind, and in lane one, Necker Dragon is also putting up a fight. Bucks County over in six is not taking this lying down either. That spread is quite uh, It really is. It's diverse. impressive. Yeah, you got two teams in the lead, followed by another two teams, and in a third group, another group. So you can see two and five together as one group, one and six in one, and then three, four in another group. I really love seeing the difference in technique here, too. In boat two, the Dubai Diggers, you can see they have a really interesting and nice, beautiful setup. They have what I like to call patience, kind of, at the front of their stroke. They sit there for a half second before they enter. I see a lot of Canadian teams do this, too, in particular. Unlike, for example, boat four, Wham, with the neon caps, where there isn't that much of a pause at the front or the back of the stroke. They go straight from one stroke into the other. It's all about technique. It's all about what different coaches think work different ways. But again, still out in the lead, we have boat number five, H2O Montreal from Canada. In second, it looks like we have the Dubai Diggers out of lane two. And in third place so far is Bucks County Fusion in six, although Necker Dragon in lane one may be 
outpacing them, and it looks like they just may be passing them soon. Necker Dragon passing Bucks, maybe. But the one thing that is very common in all the strokes, it has to do with the catch phase. When bearing that blade, it is very imperative you catch as far forward as you can, bearing that blade before you derotate. If you don't catch that blade at the front of the stroke, you end up pulling short or a half stroke, giving you less power. That's right, and coming into the finish now, we do see it is H2O Montreal on boat five, finishing with a very strong lead over their next boat, which is two, the Dubai Diggers, followed by Necker Dragon in lane one. For third place in this heat, and fourth will be Bucks County Fusion unofficially, followed by three and four, which is Dragon, Aqua, and Wham. Matthew, where did the woot go from? You forgot to say woo. Oh, I forgot the woo. Woo, woo, too late. <laughs> This is race number 195 coming your way, but here are the results from Matthew. Uh, in first place, H2O Montreal with a 212.978. In second, the Dubai Diggers with a 214.596. In third, Necker Dragon with a 215.431. In fourth, Bucks County Fusion woo, woo. with a 217.345. In fifth, Dragon Aqua SE from Hungary with a 221.168. And in sixth, rounding this out is Wham from Seattle with a 221.4. Nine. I'm looking down at the field at the Bucks boat. I do believe my dad is in that boat. Hi, Dad. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to see all these boats paddling together. It's also really nice to see afterward, yes, you just competed on the water. Yes, someone just beat somebody else. Yes, someone was slower than someone else. But you see high fives all around. You see jer jerseys traded openly. And you see smiles all around as well. H2O Montreal on the finish line is cooling down the drummer. Uh, benches one and two are splashing water onto her. I think they're just getting a little hot out there for sure. All right, we've got Mark Kane, U.S. DBF president, back in the booth with me. This is race number 195 coming your way from Sarasota, Florida. Senior A Open Standard Boat. Time here in Sarasota is 3.45. This race was set for... 2.48. 2.48? Am I right? Were you ahead of schedule? No. Yeah, we are. No, we're behind. We're behind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mark, you got this race? I do. In lane one, we have, this is a uh, Senior A Open Standard Boat, uh, Windy City Lane 1, Ottawa D Dragon Boat Club, and the race is underway. Ottawa is not in this race. We've got lane three, Tampa River Dragon Boat, lane four, CSDC, and lane number five, 22 Dragons. Okay, it looks like out in lane four, CSDC has a slight lead at this point. Looks like they're building their lead slightly. Lane one, Windy City is right there with them with, from this angle. So this is a very competitive race between CSDC and Windy City. And on the outside, 22 Dragons is about a bench behind, so. Take a look at the difference in the steers people here, the helms. Each one has a different stance. Bench, uh, boat number one, Windy City, really st long stretch of their legs to get control of their stance. Where you get boat three, he's kind of crouching down behind his paddlers. And then four and five being the very classic standing up. Very upright. Yeah. yeah and CSDC continues to build its lead. They now have almost a full boat on the rest of the field. As a coach, what I look for is that bow wake. Every time I see a bow wake and then it disappears, a bow wake and it disappears, I'm finding that teams are not pressuring off the exit and you find the bow wake falling off. I find teams that do really well, you constantly see a bow wake at the front of that boat. Yeah, that's, there's no glide when you're bouncing the boat up and down. That's essentially what you're doing, that you're not getting the exit power. See, uh, Windy City's coming on here at the finish. So it looks like it's going to be CSDC, Windy City, and 22 Dragons in lane five, followed by Tampa River. Nice. We'll wait for results here. Uh, welcome back, Mark. Thank how's, you. How's your day? Uh, it has been busy. I have been, in addition to paddling, I have just been in two different meetings. So <laughs> it meetings. has been an interesting day. Yeah, it's be for sure. We're only off one more day. We're uh, just motoring through for sure as a team.
Here are the results. Uh, number one, CSDC liquid assets, 159.277. Windy City, two minutes even, 0.565. 22 Dragons, 203.016. And Tampa River, 205.021. This is race number 197, Necker Dragon to the marshalling area now. 197, Necker Dragon is to go to marshalling now. We're calling race 198. And 199, 198 and 199 to marshalling now. We are going to finish today with race number 202. We are now calling race 196. We are not that far off. This is the BCP Women Standard Boat race number 196 with four boats. In lane number one, there will be coming out shortly will be the NBP paddling. Lane number two, Empire Dragon, Dragons. Lane number three, Not Abreast. And lane number four, Dragon Boat Charleston. So what we're going to do is just take a little break here. And we'll be back just very shortly. Welcome to the Bradenton area, where the easy pace of island life comes naturally in this coastal playground with endless white sand beaches, stunning natural preserves, okay. relaxing vibes I all around, so and it's a seafood so lover's so paradise. So Stay a while to explore downtown Bradenton with top-rated attractions and a friendly community set along the Bradenton Riverwalk. Come lose yourself in the sun-drenched Gulf Coast of Florida and change your reality in the Bradenton area. Learn more at BradentonGulfIslands.com modern sport of dragon boat racing. It contains the Chinese cultural traditions of the dragon boat sport, the beginnings of IDBF, the development of the sport as an international identity, the development of IDBF over 30 years. There's lots of photographs. You can find your uh, friends, team. I know there is a section that traces each world championship from the first world championship to the most current one in 2019 in Pattaya. Uh, they had a photo competition. There are some really dramatic photos in there. Uh, the World Cup Crew Championships that I just mentioned, it is a wonderful color coffee table book for a 45 bucks. Come and see it, it and buy it in the race administration uh, tent. That is the best place to get it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, your attention for an important, um, ladies and gentlemen, your attention for an important, important announcement. Out of abundance of caution, we are clearing the facility for weather. For your safety, please return to your vehicle or buses immediately. The venue is clearing for weather and all participants and spectators must return to their vehicles. If you do not have a vehicle on site, please shelter at the beer garden tent. Do not go to the community tent with the five peaks. Please do not go to the community tent as that tent is not grounded. However, the safest place is to shelter in your vehicle. Do not shelter under the finished tower or under any other structure. We are now clearing the facility. Please return to your vehicles immediately to take shelter. Notifications on scheduled changes will be made on social media and sent to the team contacts via alert media. Again, ladies and gentlemen, your attention for an important announcement. Out of abundance of caution, 
We are clearing the facility for weather. For your safety, please return to your vehicle or buses immediately. The venue is clearing for weather and all participants and spectators must return to their vehicles. If you do not have a vehicle on site, please shelter at the beer garden tent or also the tent that is near the stage. Do not go under the community tent with the five peaks as that tent is not grounded. However, the safest place is to shelter in is your vehicle. Do not shelter under the finish tower or any other structure. We are now clearing the facility. Please return to your vehicles immediately to take shelter. Notifications on scheduled changes will be made on social media and sent to Teams Contacts VI Alert Media. Just looking at the lightning tracker, there is a two big red clouds packed with lots of lightning heading our way. It is just to the right of St. Petersburg coming over Brayton Beach at this moment. And depending on the weather pattern, it may come over Sarasota. Please ensure that you do clear the community tent Please do not go under there. It is, that tent is not grounded. Please head for the beer tent or the tent that is behind or in front of the stage in the middle of Racers Village. Again, we have a lightning tracker. It is coming our direction at this moment. We ask that all teams please clear the community tent at this time.
I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand, and there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benerson Park is. This is a great facility and uh, coming from Boston, we have been to many different races before in other counties or countries, but we think this is absolutely one of a kind. And if we got another chance, we can come back for the world championship. That will be our honor and such a great weather, uh, such a great spirit and a lot of other teams. Uh, so absolutely looking forward to that. We're excited to come back to the world championships at Nathan Benderson. I mean, this is a world class facility and we're, we're going to hopefully Take, take a championship when we come back. One of the things that um, we have found to be really enjoyable about being here in Sarasota is the hospitality of the community. It just makes for a perfect setting for teams that are traveling from other locations, makes their stay more enjoyable in the community, and I can't wait for our world teams to experience that next year. First word starts with tough. And tough. <laughs> Nathan Bittison Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. The technology, the racing tower, and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive facilities that I've raced at all over the world. This race venue is a great race venue because it's so purpose built for paddle sports. It's consistent water depth, which makes for fast times. Everybody has an equal footing in every race. This venue is one of the greatest venues for really highly competitive races. I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand and there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benerson Park. Nathan Benerson Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. Personally, I've raced here before with my our regional championships and now with our national championship. The technology, the racing tower, and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive uh, facilities that I've raced at all over the world. The course is uh, uh, technically fair, uh, which you don't always get in all venues, uh, and it's just a beautiful place to be. Nathan Benderson Park is one of the best locations I've ever raced in the world. It's a great competitive location. The lanes are all the same depth, makes for great racing. Spectators at Nathan Benderson have a great view from the base of the tower. They see the finish very clearly. They always do a great job bringing in food trucks, vendors, grandstands, they really do a good job hosting events here at Nathan Benderson. What are people going to see when they come out? They're going to see a really exciting races. The 200 meter is probably the highest speed race because it's the shortest race. 500 meter is it's not an endurance test, but it's more technique. 500s, they're really good races because the finishes are really strong. You're going to see some people working really hard and really good athletes giving everything they got. In Sunday, when we run the 2000, which is an oval course, tight turns, lots of teams competing head to head with each other in the middle of those tight turns. In dragon boating, we call that 2000 NASCAR dragon boating because of the turns. And it's a really exciting race to watch. This is a absolutely world class venue. I've, I've competed and coached at just about every uh, world class. Uh, venue all over the world including in China and Europe and I have to say being in our backyard here in stateside it, this is the premier uh, location to host a world-class event. We're a Pennsylvania Dragon Boat Club we're from Philadelphia Pennsylvania. The venue here at Nathan Benderson Park is incredible it's clean it's well organized the race course is fantastic you know, everything is really really well done and we're having a great time. Uh, Sarasota is great. It's beautiful. The weather is amazing. Uh, the people are great. We're, we're exploring out the, the different restaurants and food here, but uh, we're, enjoy we're enjoying our, our stay here at Sarasota.
One of the things that um, we have found to be really enjoyable about being here in Sarasota is the hospitality of the community. It just makes for a perfect setting for teams that are traveling from other locations, makes their stay more enjoyable in the community, and I can't wait for our world teams to experience that next year. First word starts with tough and tough. <laughs> Nathan Bennison Park is a wonderful place for us to paddle and compete. The technology, the racing tower, and the timing tower is phenomenal. It's one of the most impressive facilities that I've raced at all over the world. This race venue is a great race venue because it's so purpose-built for paddle sports. It's consistent water depth, which makes for fast times. Everybody has an equal footing in every race. This venue is one of the greatest venues for really highly competitive races. I've been to Australia, to the Czech Republic, to Germany, to Thailand and there is no course that is as beautiful and as technically accurate as Nathan Benerson Park. Are you ready to have fun in the 941? Take advantage of all the local deals that Sarasota County is offering. There is so much to do that you and the family can enjoy. Whether it's feeding flamingos, admiring art, becoming a foodie at one of your favorite restaurants, or having a happy hour downtown with friends, you can never run out of things to do and at a fantastic price. Now it's your turn to have fun in the 941. Go to funinthe941.com to see all offers. Welcome to the Bradenton area, where the easy pace of island life comes naturally in this coastal playground with endless white sand beaches, stunning natural preserves, relaxing vibes all around, and it's a seafood lover's paradise. Stay a while to explore downtown Bradenton with top-rated attractions and a friendly community set along the Bradenton Riverwalk. Come lose yourself in the sun-drenched Gulf Coast of Florida and change your reality in the Bradenton area. Learn more at BradentonGulfIslands.com. This week, we have 3,000 athletes and supporters that have descended upon the world-class waters of Nathan Benderson Park after three years of no competition and finally together to host this championship. And it's all the best dragon boat clubs from throughout the world that have qualified at their respective national championships to earn a berth to this week's competition.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, just a quick update. We are about three minutes out. We have not heard another lightning strike. I'm waiting for the director here from Nathan Benderson Park, Stephen Rodriguez. He's giving us a clear in just a few moments, but it looks like we will be starting soon if we do not hear another lightning strike. So get yourselves ready, please. Please avoid the community tent. Please avoid the community tent at this time. To prepare, we were looking at race 196, BCP Women Standard Boat. That would be NBP Paddling, Empire Dragons, Not Abreast, and Dragon Boat Charleston. Race 197, U24 ACP Open Small Boat. With the following teams, please get yourselves ready. U24 Division, NECA Dragon, Cal Dragon Boat, Pickering Dragon Boat Club, LA County DBC. In the same heat of 197, ACP Open, Dragon Boat Charleston, NBP Paddling. With all teams, please assist us for the last couple of races. Please get yourselves ready and ready to race. We do have an official Notice from Nathan Benderson Park. We will resume racing now. With the following teens, please go to marshalling immediately. 196, 197, and 198. This is the U24 BCP Women Small Boat. Cal, Pickering, LA County, Pink Dragonista, Hope Afloat, and Dragonheart Vermont. With all teams remaining, Today, please get yourselves ready to marshalling. We do not want to delay the rest of this afternoon. We would like you guys to take your own responsibility to get to the marshalling now. 196, 197, and 198. Followed by that, we have 199, 200, 201, and 202. That means we are only Six races to complete today's date with all teams and all IDBF officials. Please go back to your stations immediately. USDBF officials, please get yourselves also ready in your positions and let's start the racing this afternoon. Six more races, let's have some fun.
197 to the marshalling, please. U24, AC open. With those teams, please go to marshalling immediately. Followed by 198, 198, U24, BCP, women's small boat. Followed by 199, senior A, small boat. With all teams, please come back to the boat marshal now. We will commence racing once boats are loaded. We are six races from completing today's race. Cocktails and Canoes. This is a podcast about two best friends coming together over cocktail or mocktail and talking about sport that they both love, paddling. From Outrigger to Dragon Boat to Sup, the host, Kelly and Will, to try to cover the paddling all, all over the world for paddlers of all ages and abilities. Kelly and Will are best friends and grew up paddling together in Sal Southern California. They are both committed to the paddling community and aim to bring exciting episodes to their listeners. This week, we'll be posting mini Paddler Vibe Check episodes of the CCWC by interviewing Dragon Boat Paddlers after the races. Marianne Tai from TNPC will feature soon, so check it out. You can find their podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also follow them on Instagram at Cocktails and Canoes. So again, thank you very much, Lindsay and Marianne, for posting that. We will send that message out to all teams. It is called Cocktails and Canoes. Please look for Marianne. She's out there with TNPC. And let's get the races on the road. A message to senior A women. H2O, my bruised arms extend the torch to you. I'm always up to carry it high. From Eric Chavez, go all the way. There is a shout out. Uh, oh, sorry, there is a stout thunderstorm working through that has now moved over and we're seen to be fine. We have six more races to go. And we, yes, we're back on. Thank you, Nathan Benerson Park, for trying to keep the spammers off our chat. We appreciate all your help. Bob, Sunny Chan, there's a stout thunderstorm. Yeah, I read that already. Thanks, Bob. You know what I'm missing from you, Bob? Because you're much taller than me, and if lightning were to hit the two of us, it would hit the highest object possible, which would be you. Again, let's get 197, 198, and 199 to the marshalling area now. If all teams could please help us, let's get the races going. We have six more races for the day. Bob Mina, lightning would not have any effect on me. My head is one, emoji, two, grounded, three, oh, <laughs> emoji means empty. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading literally word, every word you type, Bob, thanks. So, <laughs> Bob, yeah, as long as the lightning hits the taller object, I'm fine with it. Although emoji is a fun word too. Uh, no, you would lose in Scrabble, buddy. Bob equals one-man show. Yes, Beatcake, you're right. Bob is a one-man show, and he likes it that way. Those who don't know Bob Mina, he's a, a force in itself, a very funny character, very fast-thinking, humorous, knowledgeable, and exciting to listen to. I do look up to Bob as an announcer, and uh, he pushes me to be better each and every time. 
<laughs> I'm not here because I'm not all there. <laughs> That's Bob's comment. <laughs> Let's go not abreast. You see that? Welcome back, uh, Mark. How are you doing? We're doing, we're doing good. Uh, fortunately, the lightning stayed. It got close, but stayed look to the northwest of us. So hopefully we can get the rest of the racing in and the rest of the award ceremonies in without further ado. How close was it? Uh, the closest one I saw was about six miles. Oh, that's very close. Yeah, so to those uh, uh, racers, they were saying in the village, like, what? what thunder? We don't hear anything. But what we're looking at is the radar from um, the weather. Is it weather network? I'm not certain. We have a professional who monitors the weather on the fifth floor of the tower. I'm not certain what tool she's using, but she is responsible for monitoring the weather and ensuring the safety of the athletes. Wonderful. Yes, it's something we don't mess with for sure at the IDBF or the USDBF level. Once we have any indication within a 10-mile radius of any possible lightning strikes, we do for the safety protocol to take everyone off the water to ensure everyone is safe. So we hope you understand, even though you may not see it or hear it on the radar, it is within a 10 mile radius. We do shut everything down on the side of caution. So as we go farther ahead, we've got Bob Mina still online. I miss you guys. Can't wait to be back up there tomorrow morning. Uh, Bob, we're going to lock the door and not let you in just to let you know. <laughs> okay, Bob Mina, Mina says, Carrie, you're doing a phenomenal job. People here have no idea how much you're juggling. Then there's a response from rather anonymous. It just says, Nathan Benderson, we didn't know he juggled. <laughs> We've got a humorous group downstairs. <laughs> I love it. So my job, just to give you a kind of a background, what I'm doing up here, some people have seen it. On my cell phone, I have four chats on WhatsApp. I'm connected to marshalling. I'm connected to progressions. I'm connected to individual IDBF officials through the race site. Each one of them are sending me message to and make announcements, either through progressions, through uh, marshalling, through safety. So I'm watching these at the same time. I'm trying to help run the races and keep the people on the outside informed of what's happening. At the same time, I have a wonderful crew right next to me at all times, either Mark Kane from the USDBF president, Matthew Au, who is on our USDBF communication, and Bob Mina, who never showed up today. We're going to have to talk about this Bob That's guy. Right. <laughs> he must be a congressman, always absent. <laughs> I did, did you just bring politics into this? I couldn't resist it. It was a... <laughs> we have a local politician running against another one in the absence issue <laughs> is it in the forefront constantly. Uh, that was Mark Kane bringing up politics. I tried to avoid it all week until day five, but since you bring it up, it's out there now. We're racing number 199 and 200 right now. This is race 199, 200 to marshalling. We are now, if we're ra marshalling race 200, that means we only got two more races after that. The winds are starting to pick up. They are now going from north to south. Teams are going to have a tough time getting into the start gate. I, I just heard something come over the radio about chief officials. So let's keep an ear. Um, what does that look like over to the northwest side? It looks like a rain shaft is what we're seeing. There was lightning in that area earlier, but on my lightning app, that's not the official app, the closest strike was about a half hour ago and it was about 11 or 12 miles. Marshalling and announcer, we have an other lightning strike. Please call all boats and paddlers back to ground their tents or their vehicles, over. We do have another lightning strike. We do have another lightning strike. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention for an important, important announcement. Out of abundance of caution, we are clearing the facility for weather. For your safety, please return to your vehicles or buses immediately. 
The venue is clearing for weather, and all participants and spectators must return to their vehicles. If you do not have a vehicle on site, please shelter at the Bear Garden tent. However, the safest place is to shelter in your vehicle. Again, do not go under the community tent, as that tent is not grounded. Do not shelter under the finish tower or under any other structure. We are now clearing the facility. Please return to your vehicles immediately to take shelter. Notifications on scheduled changes will be made on social media and sent to team contacts via alert media. We do apologize. Mother Nature has put her stamp down once again. We are calling the races down because of climate weather. It looks like we have two thunder strikes. One I saw to the northwest, and now the second one was to the southeast over the water tower. That one is less than five miles away. With all teens, please clear the community tent at this time. Please stay under the beer tent. In Racers Village, please do not stay in Racers Village, as again, those tents are not grounded. With all teens, please re remove yourself from Racers Village and the community tent. This song is for everyone here in Tampa. You'll recognize it momentarily. For any young ones, this is ACDC. For those who are my age, we know who ACDC is. I just found out from NBP staff, the lead singer for ACDC lives here in Sarasota, Florida. I hope he can hear this. Lorena, how long is the delay? 
Uh, if you don't mind asking the Lord above, they'll t he'll tell you. <laughs> I have no clue how long this delay is going to be. We are trying our best to watch this storm that's over us. Uh, we're hoping that it clears off. Again, the key is that the, any lightning strike within 10 miles, we need to call the race down. After that, uh, if it's within 10 miles, we wait for the lightning. If we see it uh, or hear it, we do have to wait for a certain amount of time before we can lift the uh, call down for the races. And I think that was thunder. It was either thunder or Mark Kane, the president of the USDBF, putting a stamp down. We are done. Genchi Wu said, send these rain to Californian. <laughs> That's kind of mean. It's quite a distance, Genchi. If you look to the southwest, you'll see a rain shaft. It's caught a bunch of rain coming down to the southwest. We have two cells just to our southeast over the tower, and we're just keeping an eye on those two cells. And to our south, no, to our northwest, there is another rain shaft that's coming either around us or away from us. It's one of the two, and we are being surrounded by Mother Nature at its best. Okay, this is a song for the uh, beer tent. If you can please sing along if everyone knows the lyrics. All right, racers, let me hear it.
those who don't know the song, Eurythmics, Annie Lennox, and Dave Stewart. Here comes the rain again. It's a good sign. Here's the wind pushing from the north to the south. And that is where the two cells are hiding right now is to the southwest. And there's a lightning strike just to the south side, right by that tower. So we're seeing the wind push that cell away from us. However, we did see a lightning strike to the south side. That wind, that rain to the right there on the west side is still moving away from us, which is kind of nice. Let's hope that it keeps moving away and uh, we get a clears from the NBP staff. Uh, that looked like a double strike there on the south side. I'm actually afraid of lightning personally. I, I am not a fan of it, and I get really scared of it. My dad used to actually put me on his lap and used to take a Q-tip to my ear when there's lightning because I would cry, and I'm about to cry again. I'm seeing another strike just between the water tower and that obelisk uh, that's up there. So they're coming down pretty frequently here. We'll keep an eye on things and keep everyone up to date. For now, my theme for music is rain. This is Prince, Purple Rain.
This is a song dedicated to Michael Washington of NBP. We understand you're probably somewhere on the park right now singing to this song word for word. Michael, we thank you for being here and supporting the IDBF and the USDBF and hosting the 13th annual Club Crew World Championship. We hope you're enjoying the music and uh, nice downtime for you. Keep singing. Enjoy your day. If you look to the uh, south there, you'll see that black cell just skimming past the lake here. So we just hope that it stays to that south side. I'll play a song that will push it away in just a second. Sorry, Nathan. Can't send your team home yet. Nice try, Nathan. Nathan being the coach of L.A. County Dragon Boat Club. He sent me a personal message asking us to send his ho team home. Sorry, Nathan, you're stuck with all of us. We don't leave, you don't leave. All right, Mother Nature, this song's for you.
Yes, Michael, after your second favorite song I heard, go for it and jam on the song. <laughs> this is Michael Jackson, Beat It. Online, is it over? Not yet. We're just giving um, a little bit of time. We're waiting for instructions from the IDBF officials and the NBP Park uh, staff here uh, to determine what our next course of action will be. But stay tuned. Don't leave us yet.
for those young people, if you sound very confused with this song, this is Peter Gabriel, Red Rain. Sorry, I forgot to switch the song on that. That's the Green Acres theme song. <laughs> that wasn't Peter Gabriel. My bad. This is Peter Gabriel, Red Rain. <laughs> Please be fully aware the black cloud is right over our head at this time. Please seek shelter. Please seek shelter. Please do not be in the race, uh, racer's village and do not be under the community tent at this time. With all teens, please seek shelter right now. Okay, kamusta po sa ating lahat? Um, Pinaparemind lang po sa atin ng mga officials ng IDBF na umalis daw po tayo sa community tent at sa racer's tent kasi po mukhang malala ang thunderstorm at lightning storm na paparating. So punta po tayo sa grounded tent ngayon na rin po para po to sa ating uh, safety at kaligtasan. Uh, ulitin ko lang po, lahat ng mga racers, mga um, nanonood po ng, ng event na ito, umalis na po tayo ng community tent at racer's tent. Diretso na po tayo sa grounded tent. Maraming salamat po.
Thank you very much, Mary Beth, for the translation in Tagala. Again, to racers all around Sarasota, Florida, in NBP, please seek, seek shelter at this time. Please return to your vehicles now. Do not go under the community tent, the big tent with the five pillars. Please evacuate Racers Village at this time. With all teens, please seek shelter now. We are under a warning with the lightning right over our heads now. In Sarasota, Florida, the rain is starting now with the dark cloud reaching from the south side over the north side. We are now blanketed by a black cloud with rain. Lightning strikes are happening to the south side along the perimeter on either the west side and the east side.
even if we could race, there is no chance of you getting to that start line and holding inside the uh, gates. Uh, again, with all teams, please take precautions. Everyone at the race site, please take precautions. The wind is now picking up. Please do stay safe. If any objects go flying, please leave it alone. It is only an object. Protect yourselves at all times. To all racers, please stay safe. Please stay safe. Stay together. This is an important announcement. This is an important announcement. With the following team managers for Senior A Women Standard Boat. Again, important announcement. Senior A Standard Boat Women. Team managers for Bytown, H2O Montreal, True North, CSDC Liquid Assets, Bucks County Fusion and South Breeze. Would those team managers go to a race admin now? I repeat, important message, Senior A Women Standard Boat for race number 200. Would all managers please go to I apologize. We have been asking not all team managers to go to a race admin. Well, give me one moment. Let me get some further instructions. Team managers, I just called, do not come towards us at this time. Team managers that I called, do not come out until the weather passes overhead. Thank you.
Please wait for further instructions. Please wait for further instructions.
Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is an important message. The races have been completed for today. Round five, day five is done. What will happen is anybody in a round race, they will take the first round and the second round, combine your, your numbers or your times, and we will determine the winners for the teams that are still in round one and round two. Round three will be scrapped. All teams, you may leave at this time. Please leave safely. For those in the Senior A Women Standard Boat that was in the grand final, race number 200, this is Bytown, H2O Montreal, True North, CSDC, Bucks County Fusion, and South Breeze. The IDBF will be contact contacting you via email or text message this evening to discuss options. Again, for Senior A Women Grand Final Standard Boat for Race 200, we, the IDBF will be contacting you directly by email or by text. Please look forward to a message from the IDBF officials shortly to discuss options. That is Bytown, H2O Montreal, True North, CSDC Liquid Assets, Buck County Fusion, and South Breeze. At this time, we have completed day number five. With all teams, please leave the site safely, get home, avoid any tall objects directly to your car and your bus. For race number 200, Grand Final Senior A Standard Boat, managers look forward to a message from the IDBF officials for further options of how to deal with the Grand Final. Bytown, H2O, True North, CSDC, Bucks County Fusion, and South Breeze. To all paddlers, we wish you a safe evening, get home, and stay safe. Thank you very much, everyone.